Have you got your Windows sounds at a default level? Why is it quiet? No, it's because this. The, the reason I'm asking is my Windows sounds, I think, are default, but they feel just a bit too loud, and I've seen people complain about them before. Hmm. Okay. I was just curious if, if that's bit. unusual or not. Uh, yeah, it seems that way. It doesn't sound like a familiar ailment. Like whenever you get, like, an error where it goes, oh, oh, right, yeah. This no. is a little bit louder than I'd like it to be. Perhaps I'm too low into my... Or, I don't well, know what other effects it'll have. All you gotta do is click some buttons. What if it has unintended them. effects, like it makes you guys quieter or something? That'd be horrible. That's... that's no, that's... I guess yes. just don't... Don't <laughs> prompt any errors then. Be very... Careful. Fine. I'll try it. I'm gonna lower it right now. And if it... If people start saying, Oh, I can't hear anybody else. Then I, I guess it's your okay, fault. Okay, that'll be... I literally just said that it's your fault. Them. I agree, but I also appreciate you, you taking on that kind of way. Crazy! How look at that pivot! You thought that was real slick, didn't you? I don't know what this has to do with an animation program. Really, I'm getting confused now. It's um, it's wow. It's just yeah, that threw blade. you off, didn't uh, it? There's a, there's a new trailer for Mandalorian. Oh, is season it? Season three just came out like one minute ago. We allowed to watch that. I think we are, uh, right? Like, in terms of... Disney are pretty chill with... Well, we've watched other, uh... Wait, didn't we watch, like... We've watched, uh... Disney Star Wars trailers before on... Or, well, I mean, we could save it for, like, a... We I'm a, Well, I mean, if... If, <laughs> if, if Jay Longbottle does her on board, I don't mind uh, reacting to I, I right don't now. mind at all. Bring it. <laughs> I don't mind at all. Uh, is, is the... I'm pretty sure I may have seen this trailer. I'm pretty sure it, it was the one that was shown... Just in a convention thing, right? And now it's getting released. Uh, um, maybe I don't know. I saw it in like a, in in um, guffed quality. You could put it that way. Um, I'm trying to think of how I could maybe do this. Uh, I'm trying to think if I could just start a different recording in the middle of this, or I guess I could cut it out and render it, and then just put that as a mini. But then I'd have to. All right, because I'm interested in seeing whatever it's gonna be. Mando season three? Kidding me? Such hype! That's the best stuff Disney makes, right? Everyone loves Mando. Hey, yeah, I can just switch this over to mini temporarily. All right, chat. Let's see. What I'll do is I'll cut this out um, and put it up separately, but you guys get to have it as a part of a main podcast for now. Okay, so if everyone's in, yeah, let's. let's... And when you say it just came out, do you mean like minutes or hours ago? Like literally just a minute or two ago. Alright, let's have I a look. I just refreshed my subscription box and yeah, it was there. Uh, do you want to link it? Cause... Oh, sure, yeah. Da -da, da -da -da. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm reporting you to the category police. Oh no! No one should ever know. Okay. Lank. We interrupt your regulars, regularly scheduled. Also, yeah, I should say Rags, I'm afraid, is unavailable. Um, he's on some kind of thing. I don't know if it's like a holiday or a, he's... Do, do, whatever he's up to, he's not back until Monday. So we'll see him then. Um, Alright, here we go. Oh, boy, oh, exciting. Geez. Oh, starting off with Baby Yoda. Like <laughs> this. Why not? It's the only thing they can fucking <laughs> rely on. Um, yeah, okay. It's well, like E.T. It's like a famous painting or something. I just love that that's, that's episode <laughs> one, and they never moved on from it. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what else to do with this fucking show. It's like, it's like th throw Boba Fett in there, then give him his own show. That was great. This is the one that you saved? Oh, season two. You are as its father. A clan of two. This is the third fucking season, combined with two bonus episodes from a different show, and this is how far we've gotten. One episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
your daddy, uh, and your daddy again, and then again. You gotta look after <laughs> little the baby. Is, uh, <laughs> the show it's just is like, all the way it's like, the yes. it's just like fatherhood. The show. That's it. <laughs> well, they've got. Disney. I don't know what else to do. Well, no, Disney is really they, using those like kids, baby Leia, baby Yoda. It's yeah, just... mm -hmm. cute fact that they realized they'd fucked up when they they almost made it so the storyline didn't include Baby Yoda anymore. They were like, "Oh no," because yeah. they couldn't even do it for a season. <laughs> it wasn't even a season. They had to rectify it in another show, which because is insane. They realized they made a mistake. Because the one episode of Boba Fett that people typically say was actually good was the one where he was doing bounty hunter things, um, well, at least for half it... of it. It's at least some novelty because it's we got one episode without this pairing. It's yeah. been, we only got one episode, and then we got one episode finally without it. Um, or two, I guess, because he went back, right? Didn't well, he? There was that Wait, really awesome episode where he fought uh, the giant robots with oh, Boba yeah, Fett. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. Uh, that's, yeah, that finale. That man. actually Oof. happened. Yeah, that wasn't a fever dream. Uh, that was the... awful. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Do you uh, remember the fucking the mod parlor people on the little bikes? Yep. They made that. that. Disney made that. Uh, and they put uh, it in Boba Fett's that, show. And I'm pretty sure uh, Boba Fett won best visual effects like for <laughs> at, at the Emmys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he did. Yeah. Well, you know, why not, I guess. Uh, Alright, what else you got, show? What cameos? That's what I'm looking for. Who, who's showing up? What planets are we going to? But you have removed your helmet. <gasps> yeah, and that's the one. <laughs> Remember that's the big deal. Yeah, you're no longer Mandalorian yet. You can keep the armor, the weaponry, and the, like, all the information, yeah. and the, <laughs> the sword. Like, it was just like, so really, I could just say that I am, right? <laughs> like, it doesn't really change fucking anything. And it was also funny that there was just her, that one guy, and, and Mando. And it's just like, you know, those two say, like, you're not Mando anymore. And you could just be like, well, I, I reckon I am, so, you know, fuck exactly. you. <laughs> you two aren't much of an institution, gonna, gonna be honest with you. Unless there'll be more. And you are a Mandalorian. No more. Uh -huh. Unless he goes back to, what is it, <laughs> the, the, the sacred waters of the Mando homeworld where he can have a bath or something and it'll make him clean again? I can't remember what they said. Yeah. Got a river, I don't know. Bo-Katan. <gasps> Bo Bo I was gonna say the other Katan, but whatever, yeah, she's she's coming back. Woohoo. And she might be a bit mad at him. Your cult. Who are the Boba Fett's? <laughs> Rangers. Oh my god! <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> African Pope! <laughs> Fractured our people. Ooh, that looks interesting. Oh boy. Evil place, maybe. Oh, we're going somewhere. Where were you then? Yeah. yeah. It's the blue ones when they did all the yep. stuff in that one episode of that one season. Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? Why would why would he think that? No. No. I, I didn't. <laughs> I thought you met those people. Did you meet the, them? And I wouldn't be surprised if you just fucking make shit tons more because you guys know how popular they are. Just because people are like they're so cool. Remember yeah. how all of them got killed and then it was like, nah, they'll be fine. There's more. They changed their minds. Also, where are the I need more cameos. Why oh, would my... I watch this? Where's Luke? Wait! <laughs> you just missed the tree. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, those, those monkeys. Hey, look, it's <laughs> many salacious crumbs in the, in the tree. <laughs> Why? Like, <laughs> Guys, look, a cameo. <laughs> that looks so stupid. Guys, don't you so want to see the, the salacious crumb? <laughs> like, get excited. Come on. We might get a salacious crumb TV show. <laughs> Yay! The she's back. They're cool. Oh god, Jerry Curl lady. Queen lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. My goodness. And the Oh my god, Babu Frick. 
Oh, wow. Well, I will that's say, exciting. that's the one to get excited for, for real, you know? That's very exciting. He's... Oh my god, is he shirtless? <laughs> Look, this is... Is he shot? This is his house. He's, he's relaxing. <laughs> I'm going to get clean. really hot in, in wherever, what planet he lives in. On. Leave him alone. He's, 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 just, he's just doing his so repair gross. work. Yeah, he's, he's working hard. He's gotten sweaty. He's taking the shit off for a little bit. Babu Frick, hard worker. Alright, kid. Man, it's Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> you ready? I don't see the point. Where's Luke? Come on. Why would I watch this? Somewhere? Where's Vader? For an adventure? Yeah, where's the cameo? Where where's is Jar Jar? It? Oh my god, I saw hardly any cameos. We still got time for a cameo. Oh, no, a lightsaber sound or something. Come on. Oh. Oh, okay. No, oh, there you go. Uh, I think everyone's real excited about that. Uh. I'm still stuck on shirtless Babu Frick. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh, come on. The hype's through the roof for you now. I know. I know it. You, you, you just want to see it for that. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. It's like, oh, shouldn't they I mean, wait until Addor is at least a couple episodes in before releasing this trailer? Uh, or? I've been on D23, so there's a bunch of Disney and Marvel stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's been coming out. Oh, that makes is anything anything of note that there's we care about? There's Andor's trailer new. Uh, I think. Is it new I Andor think there's trailer? like there's another there's a new, a new Andor animated. trailer I saw, and um yeah a new animated show that like an anthology series I think. Yeah, oh, I guess sure Willow. I don't know if that's stuff. like a if that's a big deal to anybody. Willow, I like a TV show on Disney Plus because everything's got to be something on a streaming service now. Well. <laughs> I care also, about Mando. That's what I care about. Uh, the a new Lion King, like a prequel about Mufasa, like a no. a three D animation pitched as a live action like. Oh anime, fuck yeah! Woohoo! Wasn't animated. one enough? Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> It'll never yeah, stop. Lots of, no, no, we we got these intellectual properties. They're ripe for the pillaging. Yeah, they're still not even halfway through ruining everything. Well, you know? uh, it's, it's uh, again, Treasure Planet, just you wait. <laughs> like, they're catching up. They gotta run out of oh, like, yeah. Renaissance games. So they gotta start moving on to the later ones. And hell, when's Pixar's turn? When are they, when are they gonna start getting their films remade? You got a main guy from Squid Game is gonna be the main guy in Star Wars you know, Acolyte. Yeah. Yeah. No idea That's what that intriguing. is, but alright. I think yeah, no, that isn't that like, some kind of like that? isn't that some kind of drink you drink to sell your stomach acolyte? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I then. read somewhere that's the only one that actually like goes to the older story of Star Wars or something. I think um, I think that's the There's a skeleton skeleton crew, the one that John Watts is working on is in their new High Republic era, which is before the prequels. Yeah. Mm. So, it's that one too, which is like the only one where I'm like, hmm, because it's yeah, John Watts. Yeah, same. Which, how many people say that? You know, John Watts is working on something, that could be interesting. But he's <laughs> not making Fantastic Four anymore. Why is this an EFAP mini? Uh, well, th th let's close it out by saying, yes, you saw us cover Mando Season 1 in an EFAP format, and then minis for the second season, probably minis for the third season too, but not before Andor. I assume this is going to be 20... 23? Mando season yeah, 3? 2023. Uh -huh. the, uh, trailer. Yeah, so, so yeah. Year. Excitement. Uh, you know we're big fans of Mando, so we'll be there. Can't wait to see what happens to Din Djarin, my favorite character in the uh, Disney universe. Oh, it's like Pedro Pascal, because he's in The Last of Us, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure he's getting paid good money for that. I wonder, like, and that's probably, like, a lot of obligations, like, um, like, from filming, I wonder if, uh, I wonder how long, like, Mando is gonna go. Well, at least three, uh, and then maybe cameos at and other stuff. Three. Yeah. Because Ahsoka and all the others will be kicking off and they won't need Mando anymore. I wonder well, no, if we'll get any character said, from him this season. That'd be cool. That would be cool, but, um, I, I mean, I doubt it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty.
There you go. That's that. I'll, yeah, that was kind of season three. Yeah. I'll chop it out and it'll pop up on things. So back to regular EFAP now. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's all red again. You scared everybody. So, uh, today we're gathered to actually do something that's not a uh, uh, G-Hulk episode discussion, even though we need to do that as well because we're running out of like time to keep up with it, right? Uh, recently we've had the the three TV shows come at us all at once. Um, am I the only one out of the four of us who's seen... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, Frankie, as of now, you've oh, seen no, all three. <laughs> Hey, hey, uh, either of you guys, either of our guests today, have you seen House of the Dragon at all? No. Mm. I couldn't make time, but well. I'm intrigued. Yeah, because uh, it, I've said I won't be recommending or not recommending until the season is over. That's when I'll, I'll make a judgment. But, mm -hmm. you know, if it hard maintains... Hard not to draw comparisons between uh, House of the Dragon... Well, hard not to make comparisons between House of the Dragon and the Lord of the Rings. Yes. Uh, so what they're managing to achieve in the time that they have. I mean, there's so many similarities, right? Like, super high budget, high fantasy, um, high fantasy temporary, yeah. using an IP behind them that is giving them different levels of uh, prejudice from their audiences in different ways. Some can benefit, some mm -hmm. fall apart. It's, uh, you know, lots of political intrigue, two elements of it. Big old law behind them, characters making all kinds of decisions. Got dragons yeah. versus other fantasy creatures and stuff. Plenty to compare. Three hours of both are out currently. Um, as you guys know, uh, EFAP audience, we've been covered. We've covered episodes one and two for Rings of Power. We'll cover three and four once four is out together. Um, House of the Dragon, I've been covering with Gary on his channel, and up till now. Uh, we we basically thought that episode one two three uh, good don't don't want to claim don't wanna be claiming anything like great but good 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 uh, thumbs up you know happy yeah, I'd be happy to say that yeah that's, that's the only new update for you guys is that Fringy has now seen all three of them and he's likely going to continue watching the show I think I assume yes I will I will keep watching it I've been um, enjoying it a lot. Yeah, uh, Hot D, as it's being called, is earning itself <laughs> a little bit more respect than a certain other season end of, of, a, of the end of a different show uh, that, that happened at some point. Either way, the only other one to mention then would be She-Hulk, uh, of which yeah. has there were four episodes, yeah? Four, four out. Four. Yep. Yeah. We got uh, we covered episode one, so we got two, three, four to do at some point on EFAP. We'll get there. We'll figure it out. There's gonna be a day for it. Yeah. Don't worry. And I guess that's probably because it seems like now episode one is is not the format of that show. Like it's totally different. Close now, um, dude. It's hard to figure which, what the fucking format is, even after four episodes. Um, that's true. Yeah, because what whatever they're trying to bill it as, like a legal comedy, it doesn't doesn't you know? Because they still got to have their mandatory obligatory action scenes. They still got to find a way to shove them in there. So mm -hmm. yeah, messes with their. And I guess they're gonna try and tell some overarching story. I guess. And so, uh -huh. um, you know, you, you everyone knows there was a, there was a bit of drama with this with this show when it came out. Uh, all the reasonable people thought it was bad, you know, and the unreasonable people uh, thought otherwise. I'm kidding. You can like it, okay? Jeez. But also, <laughs> there were people who wanted to go further with defense as being like, okay, this is clear evidence. Everyone's just being too harsh, too, too mean, and uh, lots of lots of here's why is coming out, which was interesting because um, I think on the side of being positive about the show, they were like making the accusation like you've judged it too quickly, too harshly. When I think it's, uh, if anything, we're going to find out it's the reverse. All the people defending it are going to find out, like, oh shit, this wasn't the show I was well, hoping it would be. Is, um, I think that this is the first time Thor, because it was real, I guess you could say it started with Thor. Like, everything that we've had in Phase 4 has generally been received positively when it came out, and it took, a, like, a couple of months for our sentiment to turn. But, like, with Thor, yeah. that was the first time that the sentiment was sour when it came out. And now it's kind of continued mm -hmm. with She-Hulk. There is like, there is like not a positive reaction universally as soon as it came out, which means that there's now like friction in terms of the discussion. Yeah, and whoever enjoyed and defended She-Hulk, they're running out of patience themselves, I think, even with the newer episodes that are coming out. I've seen that uh, apparently Angry Joe has now turned on the show, which didn't take too long. <laughs> um, but well, that's... 
before the halfway mark. So I was yeah. I was gonna say if anyone would, it's only a matter of time because uh, I've been keeping up with them and holy shit, episode four was hard to watch, uh, but they all are really. Yeah, the the Daredevil yeah. episode's coming up, and I said, well, oh. I'm gonna say this in, my, in the video I'm gonna release soon, but the Daredevil episode is gonna make or break the support for this show. Like I think yeah. if they yeah, fuck them up, right. it's over. Everybody's it's over. waiting for that. Everyone's very yeah. scared. Yes, <laughs> like, please, yeah. please, please. Everywhere, leave Daredevil. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, you know because it's the one TV show uh, that everyone for the superheroes because it, it counts as Disney content, so it's even like, you know. Well, it, yeah, it's uh, they're definitely they are definitely leveraging. I don't know if they're gonna like fully acknowledge the show, but they're definitely leveraging the sh existence of the show, which is broadly considered to be the best one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like there's a reputation there, and they had yeah. to know it. They had to know because, it. Because um, like it was, yeah. it was one of the only ones before the entire Disney Plus thing happened. Well, it was the first one of the Netflix deal, and yeah. uh, and it, it's it's something that is markedly different from a. Uh, from well, that's the concern, isn't it? That the show that was made is markedly different tonally than what Disney typically makes with their Marvel stuff. There is like a mm -hmm. formula at play that is incongruence with the show, the show that people like. Um, yeah. And now he's showing up in a show that thus far has been pretty uh, weak, um, particularly yeah. in the aspect that Daredevil was uh, was stronger in. So he's gonna be um, funny now. Okay, it's time time for yeah. Daredevil to be funny. I saw the trailer for the fifth, fifth bleh, for the fifth episode, and yeah, I've seen that one he's too. going straight up against She Hulk, and I'm like, how does that work? Yeah, like he's, yeah, I, he, he looks like he's jumping around and shit comically, and I'm like, no. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if they're gonna scale him up. Um, we, have we got like, that? Can we can we watch that right now? In. Uh. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess we can, we can watch that. Well, I haven't seen that, and I'm, I'm worried already by the description. <laughs> I'm assuming is it like well, a TV spot sort of thing? It's yeah, it's like yeah, a little trailer yeah. to like okay. tease the rest of the season. But if in the episode, but because it di because it's this. Oh, I'm, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, if in the episode she refers to him as a ten or eleven or something like that, I'm I'm gonna turn it off. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it off immediately. I just oh god. Ah, uh, here it is. Okay. Sneak peek. Oh. I wonder if would I do you reckon I should have the, the copyright thing up for this or I uh, well I they they've got like music that might be copyrighted, I can imagine. It's like it seems like it's licensed music, so Okay. I can mute that part. Strength. Uh, Strength. Yeah. Strength. Oh, this is the whole Oh, I know about the the, the... the person who legally outmaneuvered you. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen the clip of this. I think some people in chat you probably have too, right? So like the the episode four mm -hmm. ends with the realization that Titania has copyrighted or trademarked uh, She Hulk. Trademark. Yeah. How convenient. <clears throat> and now She Hulk, <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> This can't work either way. <laughs> One way, Titania actually can do this, and thus has screwed over She-Hulk, making She-Hulk look like an idiot, especially because she's a lawyer. Or she can't do it, and this is all bullshit and weird and pointless. Um, I feel like the show is going to lose either way here. But they keep really, really, almost like trying to make um, uh, uh, Jennifer look like a shit lawyer, and I don't really get oh, it. Oh, sorry. The... Yeah, I mean, like, we've seen it in the last two episodes, right? She brought Wong in to admit to a crime without, like, telling yeah. him that that's what he would be doing uh, in order for her to get abomination out on parole, which he would have never been up for. Uh, and then when he, when the parole board is like, oh, Wong, you've just admitted to breaking somebody out of, like, a high-security prison, that's a crime. He just leaves. And in the next episode, he's back <laughs> yeah. in court. He just Literally in court. court. Like, he's doing even somebody. Though he's, he's now a fugitive of the law, is what he is now. But look, all right, that, you know, it's fine. We forgot. That was last episode, and now we're in a new episode. Yeah, they bring no... a surprise witness through a portal into a courtroom. Yeah, like, as portal, if that's... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> like, yeah. It's not like you have to go through security or anything. And also, there's a guy who's, like, detonating smoke bombs in a courtroom. And they're like, oh, how do you get those in? It's like, yes, lampshade more, please. 
Yeah, don't yeah, be doing that. This is really great. The comedy show, okay. as they say. And then also, at the end of that episode, under duress, getting Donnie Blaze to, like, agree to their cease and desist. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why can't you just defeat him, Wong? Just kick it... his ass, Wong? Well, Why so that's we the reality the corpse, of, of this. Is that <laughs> there's no way Wong is going to be going through... Because, like, Wong won't accept the outcome if it's not to his liking. Like, we know this, right? If, if like, they lose the case, he'll steal... Why didn't he... St why'd they let him take the sling ring? Why'd they let him yeah. take it back to America? And also, <sighs> if you establish, like, precedent in America, couldn't Donny Blaze just, like, go to Canada and then start there? And then you have to go to Canada and then prosecute it. And well, then is it worth to asking as well? And doesn't the court cover this? What does Doctor Strange think about all of this? Or is he non-existent, well, yeah, I guess? Exactly. <laughs> he doesn't exist. We don't have the budget for... Benedict Cumberbatch. So he he's exist. got pink eye in his third eye. That's, that's why he's missing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's evil at this point. Who knows? Okay, we'll have to find out in the next Doctor Strange. Yeah. Alrighty, what else happens why here? Why would you trademark your own pseudonym? Why would I? Uh, did Doctor Strange have to trademark his name? Did Thor? You chose two examples of people who used their real names. Ooh. Why did they do <laughs> this? <laughs> like, when... They basically yeah, stole really. it from just... Uh, Avengers movie. Every single joke that is slightly okay in this is either stolen or is just terrible. Well, it's not just that. It's the fact that we just had Thor Love and Thunder, which all the discourse surrounding that was Thor's not, it's not about it being his name. It's a mantle. And then they literally like legally defied it here as being his name. It's like, whoops. When they make this, like, it's like when Wong said, we're going to do things by the Book of Vashanti. What does that mean? And it's destroyed. <laughs> he never even read it. Nobody had access to it as far as he knew until it got destroyed. He's such a it's bizarre. Or did he never ask Doctor Strange about that? Like, yeah, so whatever happened to that book of a shit? Yeah. <laughs> Doctor He's Strange. Like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, this, this was crazy to hear, because I, I first saw this uh, when you tweeted out, um... And I was... I, I, I was confused in terms of just, like, why would... Why would they say this after everything that just... And it's like, yeah, because these were made at similar times, so... Yeah, I think I know why. She's probably like the bitch antagonist character who doesn't like Jen or some shit. That's oh, the maybe. Reason they did it. Mm -hmm. I'm still Jennifer Walters. She Hulk is just a thing that happened to me. You said you didn't like the name She Hulk. I don't. I do like She Hulk is just a they thing that happened to me. Why do they keep talking about how the name is stupid? They keep doing it every episode. To be fair, She Hulk is. You're no self-aware. The, yeah. Well, yeah, remember, it wasn't it episode one where she said, uh, why does everything, I have to be derivative of a man, right? That's why they hate it. They right. hate the name. Yeah, and you literally are, you dumb bitch. You they, literally no. are. <laughs> she took his blood and became, like, well, to be fair, he even, he even made clear and so did she. It's better. She has better blood. It healed him. That's better <laughs> than his blood, so, yeah. Take that. I do admit, though, there are parts of it that I enjoy. Well, I mean, there's well, there's no downsides, like, categorically. Well, there's parts of it you enjoy. Like, she used her she hulkiness to get her non-she hulkiness a date. Like, it's, it's pretty blatant at this point that she's she's as much in on the whole using she hulk for her own benefit as the world was, you know? The arc. the arc is that she'll become more comfortable with being she hulk. It was weird to there's call it. Possibly. I guess that's not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's just weird to, to call out the world for being like, people want me for She-Hulk and not for me, and then she uses that to her advantage. As in, like, catfish in a well, Yeah, like, in a, in a, in a mm -hmm. stronger story, there would be some acknowledgement of that, like, in the story. And yeah, it's hypocritical, it and, and it should make her realize something, yeah. but she seems to just, the, the show managed to make it so that she was the victim in that circumstance, which is amazing. Amazing hair, no hangover. Being able to walk home at night without being afraid. Ah. Uh. <laughs> hey, they attacked you for your she hulkiness, okay? Not for your regular. Oh, yeah. she did have a hangover in episode one, so she's lying right there. Well, <laughs> what is, wasn't it? You don't get hangovers if she maintain if she stayed in her Hulk body. If she goes to human body, it it I've never understood. But how she this doesn't works. want her Hulk body though. She doesn't. She wants to be old Jen. So, so surely, surely there has to be acknowledgement of like the the big. 
okay, so like it has to be right that the the real the realization will be you have the capacity to help people now, in in a way that's different to what you could do before, and that you should do that. We went over this in episode one. She said, "I'm going to choose to help people my way." Right, <laughs> but I mean, this is a, this is an, a Marvel superhero show, so there will be action. Scenes no, for fights, it was so. consistent. At the end of the episode, there's people in trouble in the courtroom, and she goes, "Nah," and then her friend has to convince her to save people's lives because she didn't want to destroy right. her outfit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all consistent. Oh, She's God. just a piece of shit. <laughs> like, that's... That was too much. That was a too much. Out of the writers. You put on your green suit. Put on my green suit? Yeah, jolly green yourself. I don't know what you call it. Hulking out. <laughs> okay, good. Whatever. There you go. Hulking out. I actually... I, if I if this was Batwoman, I thought they would steal... They stole that from me somehow. Because mm. that's, that's what I called that bitch. When I first saw <laughs> jolly it, green the Jolly giant. Green the go Jolly Green Gina, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Too many but they wrote this in advance. So. Weird, unexpected trouble. Wow, they even oh, Abomination's gonna come back. Huh? I guess I should have expected <laughs> yeah, that. I'm, I'm Why the are they? Clearly, so that's mad. This much action. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The action scene here was great when like oh. Wong waited until the end to use his vortex to just suck up all of the bats and didn't call anybody else for help. And I'm pretty sure it was a demon-specific vortex because none of the three other people in that room seemed to even notice it was open. So, good job, yeah. Wong. Life would be so much easier if I was just Jen. I think you're in a unique position to do some real good. Jen Walters can use the law to help people when society fails them. She Hulk can help people when the law fails them. So oh, that's just stealing Daredevil's whole thing. <laughs> well, yeah, right. So, like <laughs> it is if if they are to do this well, this should be an argument because that is Matt's perspective. That shouldn't necessarily be hers, and there should be some conflict there. Oh well, yeah, well it's but not supposed to be hers I, I, from what we've seen so far. But I, I get the impression that, um, uh, look, all right, I guess I don't care as long as he's fine. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> I just want to make this sure that he really... comes through and unscathed. Oh, God, there he is. Don't hurt him. Yeah. Are you doing it for me? BB energy. Keep your pussy away from him, please. <laughs> oh, did you get a ticket for texting? Just say you were texting 911, they can't prosecute. That isn't what this is, and that's not true. Oh, that was the worst. That was the worst. Oh, they felt like throwing that into the whole promo. All right. Yeah, so that's a, I guess that's a, a sneak peek at what's to come. So they'll probably bump into each other in, in the middle of fight and crime of some kind. Have a little yes and quick soon. fight, and he'll be like, whoa, you're a lot stronger than I expected. Well, I mean, look, he's probably not going to win that fight, I would imagine. <laughs> um, it's a little bit... Uh, it's not a fair fight, really. Um, but it, nope. I guess they're scaling him up, maybe, because Kingpin, like, survived getting blasted in the face with, like, a bunch <laughs> of arrows, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I've only yeah, ever seen the clips, decided. but it looked like Kingpin should have died, like, twice over from what I saw, but hey, it's yeah. fine. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll welcome him back in the Echo show, right? That's when we'll see him next. I think that's Ain't what we watching this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody even knows what that is. <laughs> Why would you even reference it? <laughs> Well, all right. Now it is time. The the thing that I was supposed to do. Wait, I'll 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 even set it up as being. So yeah, all that was happening. I saw that uh, Jay Long was doing one of your, your famous. Is it is it was it a knock stream? Your night of cringe, or was it a different type of thing? You were. Uh well, it was one of my like like in between like live reactions that I do once if I want to focus on one video that's really long. Yeah, well, this one this one is one of the longer ones, I think. I was, I was surprised even by its yeah. sheer length of I think it's like thirty seven minutes or something. But yeah, around about yeah, that. If it's who I'm, if it if it if it's who I think it is, then like th th I don't know why that video had to be that long <laughs> for saying absolutely nothing. <laughs> That was the thing, though. Uh, the reason why I was interested in covering it is because I saw some clips that I saw you... I was watching you cover it for, like, a, a half hour or so, and I was just like, oh my god. Like, the amount of things they're saying that are so wrong. And a uh, live update for you is that uh, a lot of people disagreed with this person about their opinion, and they, uh, they, they've they privated the video. And um, the, <laughs> the following video they put up, they're doing, like, a review of the next episode of She-Hulk, and uh, I checked it out, and at the end, 
she she decides to address the fact that the video is private. She said she was she was right and she was absolutely the video was on point. It's just that everyone got really mad and so you know gonna take it down because enough enough with the people getting mad. Uh, like all right, no. Because complete lack of self reflection. Yeah, if it was um, <laughs> a situation of her being like, okay, I fucked up, I made a bunch of mistakes in that video, and I'm taking took the video down for that reason, um, it would still be interesting to cover in terms of just you know a take someone had that was stupid. But um, no, she's 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 still happy with her takes in this video. So I was like, oh, okay then. Um, but yeah, the, the only context you require is good old She Hulk episode one, and um, this is this is the lady who was like, you know what? Too much, uh, too much hate coming toward, uh, coming toward good old She-Hulk, and she's gonna provide us some <laughs> understanding. Warning. But yeah, I was gonna say, there you go, just in case anyone needs it, you know, you got us a trigger warning, uh, people in chat. And I think she plays clips from, uh, from the, the episode in this, so I'll, I'll keep a lookout for copyright, you know how it goes, but you survived it, right, uh, on your stream? Uh, you know, apart from a headache, yeah. <laughs> oh, I meant just with copyright, but yes, I, I understand. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, well, alrighty then. Uh, since since everyone's ready, we should probably get started because we're gonna be here for a while potentially, depending on how much everyone gets triggered. Because there's trigger warnings, so I think this, you know, this is gonna happen. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> mentions of suicide abuse and terrible opinions. <laughs> We're talking about two green monsters. You don't need a trigger warning. Relax. Hey, Jeez. I'm scared by green monsters. That's why I made friends with the friendly one. But there, see him. He's all green, but he's happy and smiles. You just, you just called me a monster. Is that a, is that is that offensive? <laughs> you can have nice oh, monsters. Don't say that about Fringy. It's just interesting, is all. Well, you're okay with calling the Hulk a monster. I didn't say anything. That wasn't me. Exactly. You that. said something when it was brought up about other people, but not you wouldn't defend the Hulk? That seems mean. I'm not making any... You just yeah, call me a monster, that's all. I'm just saying. I think that you can have friendly Time monsters. Time reflection I, You absolutely can. Sully is a very friendly monster. Yeah, so what's the Mike. problem then? I'm just saying that your categorization... Is all. What's like, wrong I'm with Sully? If if you're saying you should never be considered a monster, it's something I, wrong with him. I never. That's that is not what I said. Wow. I, I'm I'm gonna tell Sully about this. I actually got gone. John Goodman is in my I'm, uh, phone Sully, book. Sully will take my side. What side? The side of you being mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I think anyone who's been online the last few days has seen the surge of hatred towards the She-Hulk show on Disney+. Plus. It has been- Let's have a look at what she's chosen. Mm. Uh, men are evil, we don't need men, we're better than men, we are stronger than men, we're mm. smarter than men, men are the problem, girl power rules, yes, 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 yes. Feminist Hulk. Show is absolute garbage, green CGI reject. Recap the show for you, overpowered Mary Sue crying and saying, oh, poor me for hours at, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is definitely very positive. But hey, uh, you know, there's plenty of people out there who've got extensive reviews and criticism beyond just, uh, you know, fuck this show, it's garbage sort of stuff. Been incredibly hard to miss, calling it feminist garbage, woke trash, a lot of seemingly very angry people, which honestly seems on brand for She Hulk, so good job. Some comments just went straight it. to personal mm -hmm. attacks, you know, which is always fun. I love personal attacks. Dumb bitch would like this crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love those type of comments. Yeah, you get everyone get gets them. those. They're uh I yeah, they're so much fun. I had I had so many funny experiences with sexist comments. Oh yeah, I one... wish I got more sexist ones. <laughs> I miss out. I I had one comment actually it was like, well, I I opened the video and I heard a chick talking and then I closed it and I was like I commented on it. I was like, why? Well, who hurt <laughs> you? And it, you know, like stuff. And so what happened? He got back to me and he commented. Oh, I'm sorry. P please be my girlfriend. Oh. And that was... <laughs> I was <laughs> like, okay. Uh, it, it's just so much fun poking fun at those people because they don't really expect you to read it. No. Uh, no, look, dude, so many comments online are made by people who never expect you to actually read their comment. It's, a, yeah. it's really interesting, like, psychologically. Like, they just want to express yeah. a, a deeper thought in private, but also publicly. It's such a such a strange thing but uh 
And, and then there's the flip side where they pour their whole heart out, like in a fucking psychotic rant. I just posted on Twitter this rant, this pro, this Roe v. Wade rant in like one of my Zootopia videos. It's like what? What? Why? <laughs> and I, 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 I just responded with like two like laughing emojis, and they were like, "What are you laughing about?" I'm like, "What the fuck? Do you think I'm laughing about? Look at what you just wrote in my <laughs> comment section." Yeah. Dear Lord, this young lady needs your truth and guidance. <laughs> Help her realize she Hulk is not of God. <laughs> uh, classic. Love seeing how people want to spend their weekend. This one is my favorite though. Like, it's so funny to me. Like, what do you want me to say to this? Oh no, all my marriage prospects, I've lost them. I'm gonna die alone and broke with no money. Why that accent though? Uh, that's like a sounds a bit like a trying to do an Australian accent. I'm not. Yeah, it's some it's quirk. It's, it's I don't know. I just don't know what she's going for. It's but like all right. Uh, well, who cares, I guess man? maybe they have that accent, you know. But you got this is where you got to take some creative license, some artistic no, it, liberty. I know? meant in reference to because the comment was like, "You'll never get a husband this way" or something, and so oh, she, it's like, "Why'd right. you choose that accent of any accent?" But. Right, like, what does that say? <laughs> Maybe she's trying to evoke, like, um, uh, like a like peasant a woman in older times, yeah, being like, oh no, I need my man. And it got to the point, though, where there were so many comments complaining about it and criticizing it that I said, maybe I should re-watch the episode. Like, maybe I missed something. Ah, that's a good attitude to have. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. I actually mm -hmm. felt the same way. I rewatched episode one before this stream today. Regrettable experience, but still, it's, you know. <laughs> Why? It's, I, just so my references are fresh, I was never going to force you guys to do that. Don't worry. I, was, I wasn't feeling that cruel. So I rewatched it. And yeah, no, after rewatching it, I am officially convinced that the reactions to the show boil down to a few things. Mm. One, expecting oh. a brand new character at the start of a nine episode series to already be fully developed, to purpose- Wrong, oh, that, that's wrong, probably, wrong. Probably, um, I guess one of, the, one, of the, one of the problems, I think, it can be a little bit difficult to watch these shows and movies without considering, I guess, the, uh, the broad storytelling formula that often gets employed. Um, or, or like, you know, like, I think I think one of the big problems in a show is when you start to go, like, what is the writer trying to do here, rather than, like, what can I speculate on in terms of what the story is going for, uh, and, like, what direction we're heading in. Um, like, is there reason to believe, after watching episode one, that there is an arc that Jen's gonna go on that will, like, address a lot of the things that happened in episode one? Or is that over? Like, that was one and done, and now we're just going back to the story that we're... Um, that they that they're trying to tell. Um, I'm inclined to believe that everything that happened in that episode is considered resolved narratively. Pretty um, much, especially if we're supposed to have be believed, totally as you've said, because I haven't got like a source for this. But you, didn't you say it was originally going to be episode eight that that was first uh, shown to us? At the very least, it wasn't going to be the pilot, which makes total sense to me. Um, I can see way more than yeah. like episode two with some footage from episode one was meant to be like the real pilot i can see that the courtroom was probably the cold open then titles then the whole plot of her getting the job that makes way more sense to me as like a way to start your law yeah. show like getting her as opposed to like having the origin story in there and of a totally different like tone and and uh, i guess structure than like every other episode we've seen mm -hmm. afterward and it would yeah, also make I sense that they, they cut the fuck down on that action scene at the end because they tried exactly to fit it in onto did. the end of another episode yeah. to squash it, and that's yeah. why it looks so stupid. But then again, a lot yeah. of it has been that way anyway. Um, so I, I'm already interested in the fact that she's like she's just defined it as though we have to have an arc in a for a character. Like that, that's one of the pitfalls well, of loads yeah, of writing right, advice yeah. type channels, or even just writing assessment channels. They'll just assume automatically they have to have an arc. Uh, because that's yeah, you can have outweighs. static characters. Um, and in fact, television shows a lot of them have static characters. Actually, yeah, it's, a lot of uh, um, quite common on television. As we've been watching House of the Dragon, if you were to bet, it would be uh, Rhaenyra is probably going to have an arc. She already kind of is. Yeah. Um, the yeah. king, less so. He's 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 learning about like different things and stuff. But I think he, before he uh, he kicks the bucket, which seems to be likely, he's uh, he's he's 
he is who he is. He's just struggling. He's mm -hmm. having lots of lots of trouble. Uh, I would say same for for Damon and Otto. These are not characters that I expect to change. I'm learning about them, and because of what their characteristics are, they are going to make choices uh, that I can already see yeah, coming, sort of thing. So yeah, just off the bat, her being like, everyone's mistaken in assuming that um, you get a fully developed character in episode one, as if that like and accounts guess, um, for the problems of She-Hulk in episode one. I think this the is thing <laughs> is, yeah, uh, well, the thing is, um, a lot of people, it's not that we don't like expect her to be uh, um, like fully, we expect her to be fully developed, but the thing is, there, we had so many female characters at this point that had that had gone the same route and started off the same way that instinctively we can already like call it out and pin, pin it pinpoint when we see it that character introduced right away because mm -hmm. you had Ray you had Captain Marvel and instinctively we already know somehow that we are what we're gonna get out of this I mm -hmm. I think I, I think you mean like well, the benefit we have is that we have another three episodes on top of whatever she's going to give us in this video, which is going to be quite yeah. enlightening uh, in terms of what she I, thinks will happen versus what has happened. I guess what I would point to in, like, episode one is, because I guess the main point of contention will be the conversation between Jen and Bruce. As far as I can tell, narratively, like, in the show, that seems to be resolved. The reason it's resolved is the conflict occurred, and then they had that conversation afterward where she kind of had that apology, like, kind of. And so, like, to me, that comes across as the writers are like, yep, we've resolved that, that's done. Um, in a better show, I would not expect that to be a resolution. I would expect more, but I don't yeah. really expect much of this show. Yeah. And I think um, that the, uh, the writers thought, they were like, right, so how do we convince the audience that Jen will be absolutely fine? It's like, well, first of all, we got to tell them that there's no other guy, which they do real quick. He's like, you don't have another guy? And it's like, no, good. And uh, then he's like, yeah, but you don't have control over when you can do it. And then the writers just go, she does. Are we yeah, good? We so good. it's resolved. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We yeah. can move um, on now. And, and all the while, like, ignoring the more pertinent questions that you would ask, like, well, we should probably, like, explore this more um reasonably because like it's not just a burden that you carry it's like a burden a potential danger to like everybody that you're surrounded by in a better show you would expect a more thorough exploration of that topic um but the fact that we barely explored it here doesn't give you a lot of confidence to believe that they will now i think that's done yeah, um, I think you're right. Um, that's that's and, what you assumed yeah. from the first episode, and I think it's fair to assume that. Uh, but now we know it's confirmed. The, <laughs> they haven't touched it for three episodes. Well, yeah, what I think the, the actual arc of the show is uh, will be Jen essentially embracing the She-Hulk like identity and persona. That's what I think it will be. That she'll embrace it because she likes it and it makes her feel better. Um, and that that's going to be the arc. And I, I don't see like how that's going to connect much at all to what we saw in episode one. No, That's yeah. She already, she already thinks she, she already thinks she's the shit. Like, yeah. And she's trying to like force people to accept her raggedy ass. And I'm just like, like even in the trailer we just saw, like, oh well, all these positives of me being She Hulk, but there were the negatives. There aren't any. You, no, no, like, no, no, no. Well, we haven't seen that. It's, it's um, it's the difference between her and Hulk, right? Hulk had a pretty clear detriment, which is that the other personality is very volatile and violent and dangerous. Um, whereas she doesn't have that, so it's, yeah, like, what is the trade-off, really? Mm -hmm. There's no conflict, really. No. Nope. Which is, you know, you can do something with this, with this, uh, I don't, like, I think She-Hulk as a premise is, um, totally fine. Um, like, as a, as a premise for a story, both the character and her attributes and, like, as a, a lore show in a superhero world. I think that you can make them work. It's just that they're not really leaning into any of the strengths of um, those two things. Well, yeah, I mean, the conflict so far, if you can call it that, would be Emil Blonsky's trial, which she nailed with without, like, in the most incompetent though, way possible. Even though she was, yeah, exactly, humbly um, incompetent. Like, it, it's unbelievable that she wouldn't have prepared Wong's statement beforehand, being that everything in the case relies on him, and he was never cleared. Like, nothing, oh, yeah, nothing can... Into a prison and yeah, you cares, gotta give yeah. the writers... You gotta give the writers a break. They can't write law things. They admit the, it. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a break. Oh, you know? Fair enough. They're retarded. Um, <laughs> what, I, 
Yeah, then uh, then the next one was what the the demon the the accidental demon summoning army through a portal. She had to go help Wong solve that, which really was unnecessary yeah. entirely. She was just thrown in because they need to have her thrown in. I like how the conclusion of that again is her under threatening somebody into agreeing to the terms of an agreement. Meanwhile, ignoring that he's going to jail for endangering the yeah, lives you, of what, like dozens of people. A talented lawyer does not need to threaten someone with murder in order to get them to sign a contract that makes them win the case, as opposed to no, using what happened in that event against void. him in the case. Yeah, it, you know, it would actually make the contract void, uh, you know, like that yeah. tends to be how it works. Yeah. Well, and, and Which why is, wouldn't uh, they use that against her? They had to be like, of you know, a reasonable intelligence yeah. to be like, yeah, she tried to kill us, um, so... Mm -hmm. She literally held a demon you know what? from another dimension. There's no way to prove oh, that it wasn't Wong that brought those demons in. You could be like, Wong did it because he wanted to frame us. Now what? Well, right, because how do you prove that he caused it, like, magically? Like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you actually... What is the causality of magic, and is that clear and understandable to a regular courtroom of normal people who are totally unfamiliar with how magic works? There are witnesses, yeah, no. so he's got him and his, uh, his mentor guy versus She-Hulk and Wong. Uh, you know, it's... I, I guess my... witnesses who watch the show. The oh, um, yeah, but he, I'm, that's what I mean about framing, right? They can be like, that's Wong, Wong did that, not him. Wong fucked with his spells. Yeah, I mean, Wong was the one who closed the portal, I didn't know how to do that. Exactly, yeah, you just... Mm -hmm. This is what I mean. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a guy with a video that's, phone. That's You're not listening. I'm saying that it's magic. We have no understanding or rules for this in the law system. So all he has to do is claim that Wong fucked with him. Rewatch the scene. Mm -hmm. You fucking hell. <laughs> like, you're just not listening at all. It's fine. I mean, we don't have any of the real back and forth. Like, none of the friction or the adversarial part of the adversarial system is, like, part of the legal aspects of this show. Where there's, like, the back and forth. Because in the episode before... When Jen took the stand, we had, like, no cross-examination. It's like, why would you... T she just gets to sort of make her yeah. statement, just accept it as true, and then that's the end of the case, when the whole point is you're meant to be fighting against one another and presenting your counter-arguments. But we don't have any of that in this show, like, really at all. There's, like, no debate on any of the topics, because there's no meaningful exploration of any of the topics. So and my god, they said that they're going to address the Accords, like, what does that mean? Expert witnesses exist? It's like, expert witnesses? You mean like Doctor Strange? Expert. Yeah. <laughs> my but my favorite expensive. thing... My favorite thing about, like, the interview where, where the writer talks about the court scenes is, like, basically, she was like, we had the greatest pitch, and then we got to the writing room, and we realized we don't know how to write an engaging court scene. And I'm like, <laughs> did you get... Did you had to get to that point to what was the pitch <laughs> what was the pitch about i don't know you had to be in the writing room what yeah. was that pitch i'm trying to think yes. like, yeah we'll, maybe we'll see the results of that eventually because like episode one i guess is the closest we got to a non-law related episode but the rest of them have been fucking head first jumping into the law mm -hmm. regrettably yeah it reminds me. This whole thing reminds me of uh, uh, the show I watch, like Nip Tuck. It's like it's a show about people and their the drama in their lives and shit. But it's about these two plastic surgeons, and they hired a plastic surgery consultant to be in, not just to like consult surgery, make it look real, and advise on like uh, you know how the dummies look and how the blood should look. But they they were also cast in the show. And they were a very vital part to how authentic the plastic surgery scenes and all that, all the jargon mm. was. And then, like, fast forward a couple years, like 20 years to this show, and it's like, oh, we don't know how to write court scenes. Do we have any, like, I don't know, court people, like, yeah, like judges that could help write these scripts? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the most blatant... That can uh, the most blatant for me, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that between the episodes, episodes back to back, we established that Wong is a fugitive, and then he's in a courtroom as a as filing a case. Like he's actually trying to get someone prosecuted. Like it's absolutely unreal. And it's like the episodes don't even know the either one existed. Because I was I was saying to Fringy when I was watching it that like surely they'll have a throwaway line, like um, even as stupid as like wasn't wasn't he a fugitive? And it's like oh they dropped the the charges or something, you know, just that. We'd be like, why would they do that? But no, you didn't even get that. They just they just carried on. They didn't care. Um, 
Sorcerer Supreme, by the way, would be an expert witness on magic, but what use is he going to be when he's supposed to be in jail now? Uh, and we, this is there's such a, like, you're trying your best to avoid it, but as soon as the American government get any kind of awareness or access to portals, you understand that completely changes the world, like, entirely. You, you know, yeah, you like can... it's something that's acknowledged in the episode is that somebody who doesn't know what they're doing could like cause some serious carnage with portals. Well, yeah, yeah um, and... there should be a heavily regulated uh, craft like around the world, at least in America. He ain't just uh, you know making fires and stuff. He's he's opening dimensions and sending drunken girls in to go and like yeah. sacrifice Which, to demons um... or something. You know, we're kind of like beyond cease and desist territory at this point. We're just, we're just, yeah, just and, straight up criminal charges. And like, Wong is waiting for the law to catch this guy. That sounds like him, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, like yeah. it's not like Wong would just go out. I mean, the perspective of Doctor Strange, which I'm sure is a similar perspective to Wong, is that it's like their responsibility to enforce, like, them, them they're the protectors of your reality, douchebag, as they, as they would yeah. say, you know? Like, I think Wong had a backup one of like contacting his lawyer for well, Dormammu. He was like, I'm Well remember how he said the, next, the to the <laughs> next to the microphone in the court. Oh, I'll send him to the to the uh mirror, mirror dimensions. dimensions like ah yes, good job admitting to uh, the intent to commit crimes in a courtroom. Well nobody in the courtroom knows what the mirror dimension is, so it's fine, because that's the thing. Oh, right. They're so, introducing the idea yeah. they're talking about magic as part of the case, whether or not something is real or fake magic. Like uh, Unbelievable. Blood. Like, yeah, how could you have a court case with this just zero precedent or understanding about any of these mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how interesting it would have been if we saw, like, an, uh, g an integration between law and magic and science and, like, how that can mesh with, like, human laws? That would have been interesting. It yeah. would have been interesting. They, they just kind of, like, they wing it. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, you have a scientist, Bruce Benner. You have um, Wong. You have uh, the lawyer, She-Hulk. So, you could have done it, but yeah. Um, the thing is, though, the, the more you take it seriously, the more it'll ripple out as an effect on the world. Like the yeah, the, Doctor Strange as a film works because, as far as we can tell, the world isn't really aware of these sorcerers. They work in the mystic arts. They they're very careful about where they operate or whatever. But as soon as the American law is supposed to deal with sorcerers, and I'm not kidding, portals? Like, think of the amount of humanitarian good you can do with portals that the sorcerers keep to themselves, mm -hmm. you know? It reminds me of Wakanda, where they got all this incredible technology, and they're like, no, it's ours. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> hey, you know, maybe it's fair enough, maybe it takes a lot of resources to run those portals, like, what, what is it, like, uh, you know, is it electric, or is it some kind of, you have to sacrifice someone to a god to get those things to work? It's like, no, just infinite energy. They can just work forever and anyone can be taught how to do it oh who makes those sling rings no idea <laughs> i don't know mattel boys are us maybe company <laughs> anyway that was us randomly rambling about how bad the show is which has gone far away from what her original point was which was just jen is developing, okay? And you gotta give her space and time. You're not supposed to like her in episode one, which is totally not how it usually works at all. Um, <laughs> the counterexamples would probably be Stephen Strange and Tony Stark being the their introductions. People always forget this. They always bring up yeah. Tony Stark. They're always like, see, he was an asshole, smug, womanizing piece of shit, and then everyone waited and they got to blah, blah, blah. It's like, watch his opening scene. He's nice to people. He is fun with people. Mm -hmm. He does make fun of them He's too. Complex. Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of elements to him. He's uh, he's not just an asshole who thinks he's better than everybody. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Yeah. And uh, it's not long before he is blown up and you see him bleeding from his chest. That makes you go, oh shit, this guy's going through a lot right now. Probably gonna put my uh, my issue with him being a little smug to the side to see how he can get through this. Um, Stephen Strange, yeah, he's he's more of an overt asshole, especially to Christine in his movie. But this is after he's lost everything that he got meaning from in his life, where his hands are destroyed and his, his uh, money and reputation as a surgeon is just just completely floundered. And then uh, yeah. he's desperately looking I for mean, anything that can fix his hand. Unlikable characters can be compelling too, it doesn't, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, it's just 
just a bit awkward to when they always bring up those as examples like yeah because they're men is why you like it. it's like no because they, they've got loads of extra things going on <laughs> that make them human character at the start of a nine episode series to already be fully developed yeah wouldn't it be crazy to like a character at the beginning of a season of a tv show the first episode it's like wouldn't that be nuts isn't that like their goal with a pilot episode to make you really like the main character like yeah there's been plenty of shows I've watched where the character may not be, may not have been a good person, but you were on board with this character because they were interesting or they had likable traits. Uh, and it, with Jen, it's just like, yeah, you're just a, you're just a mouthpiece for whatever the fuck the writer believes. I don't think, you, you don't, you're not, you don't come off like a real person. You don't even come off like an enjoyable fake person. Like, it's just. It was annoying because I was going to say, like, gosh, she's like the perfect sort of uh, example to do what not to do in your TV show's opening episodes to make a person not likable. But it's like, well, she's been dethroned by Galadriel already. So it's a bit late for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, damn it. Two, purposefully misinterpreting or interpreting scenes in a negative way that I feel is disingenuous to the full context of what was happening in the episode. Or all right, she'll have to give us references for that one, because I would just turn it back on her. For three, whether intentional or not, I feel like they're parroting this sentiment where people don't speak up when things are bothering them and they don't get the help that they need. There's also a fourth option where people just don't want to hear women talk about their life experiences. That's me! <laughs> oh no! Oh, get the fuck out of here! Fringy was telling me that just as we were watching the episode, he was like, oh, I'm so tired of listening to women talk about their experiences. That's me, that's the number one <laughs> how I feel. Like, <sighs> in any capacity ever, even in a comedy targeting women, Comedy targeting women. <laughs> targeting women? Targeting's Isn't an interesting an choice. MCU weird, show? But sure, yeah. Yeah, I, well, you'd think that the MCU would what God, that feels weird. Does, does that mean Iron Man was targeting men? No. Because I was just gonna say, like, man, I know so many women who fucking loved Iron Man, but yeah, alright, fine. <laughs> like if if we want to go this route. I mean I mean, like I would say that, yeah, this show is targeting a certain demographic of, pe of people. Well, like, you, you too. Obnox um... Obnoxious women. Obnoxious <laughs> women. Not, not women. <laughs> How dare you? This was made for you. Why don't you enjoy it? What's wrong with you two? Jeez. So that's great. But let's dive into it. A Alrighty. lot of the actual discussion points I've seen tend to center around the interpretation that Jen thinks her life is a lot harder than Bruce's. But actually... It's probably because she said it. And that might be tied to it. <laughs> <laughs> just IMO, I don't know. I think the episode has her acknowledging the exact opposite. To ah. me, it seems like she understands the weight of his trauma enough to state multiple times that she doesn't want that life. But let's break it down from the beginning of the lab. I mean, th that is stated, but it's also alongside her saying that she deals with this stuff way more than Bruce does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't, it's really... We've gone over this before. It's the one line they had. If they could get rid of one, it should have been that one. They shouldn't have had that one in there. It fucked everything up in terms of being able to defend it. It's too late. It's too obvious. Mm -hmm. Too clear. I've seen. Where are we? Do we hit a spaceship? What happened to me? I think I'm gonna die. So I turn into a Hulk now too. To me. She seems very much so not against asking men for information or for help as she- Oh, uh, stop oh, this shit! <laughs> what? <laughs> Just because you ask standard questions to further the Wait. plot, that doesn't mean she suddenly respects men. That does not- that's not what it means. A woman asking a guy to help her carry her fucking groceries while having a kill all men bumper sticker. <laughs> that does not- that doesn't- that don't- that don't match up! That don't match up! I- I'm baffled by the fact that like she she'll include like she's asking questions. Yeah, let's take one of the examples. Like what what happened? How let's say how how did your Where arm get we? healed? And then it's like oh because I used your blood because I'm better than you. That's the first thing that she comes to conclude <laughs> after getting some exposition off her cousin. There, it's just like hmm, makes you wonder. Um, but yeah, that's the she she does indeed ask him what the fuck is going on because she was knocked out. That's true. This, this means that she's willing to receive help from men, I guess. I, I feel like that's not addressing the criticism at all. Really, I don't get what what was this point, really. Like, what 
What are we trying to prove here? That Jen is willing to ask questions and therefore receive answers from a man in order to help understand the situation. <laughs> I don't know that many people really made the point in opposition to that. Um, yeah. So yeah, not sure how this is helping anything, but sure. There's a lot of questions in a very panicked way because she knows he has the information that she needs and he knows more than her. I was able to use it to completely heal my arm. Oh, because I'm better than you? <laughs> oh, I, I, I stopped it right here during my stream. Like, try to defend this shit, bitch. Yeah. Try I mean, to defend this. Defend it. It's just basically different. In a better way. And yeah, the better than you shows that she has a need to prove herself. Don't know where she got that um, from. <laughs> Maybe she is. So, so she's. <laughs> She's, she's willing to take that on. She's like, yep, that's serious. She did say that, but she's trying to prove it. Just an asshole. She said, I'm better than you. She's not trying to prove anything. She, she doesn't think she it. has to prove anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like... <sighs> Siblings, maybe it was law school. I have not been, but I have heard it's very competitive, and I, I imagine... People there need to prove themselves. So this to me just sounds like you uh, agree then with the criticism that she believes herself to be better than Bruce and it makes her unlikable. This is... You agree, it seems. You're just trying to find a reason why it can be contextualized into a reasonable... By the way, the whole idea of her being a competitive personality and so that's why she does this. It's like, we've got no context for any of that yet. So... Like why nope. even you know even if they were going to do that if they're going to provide us a lot she, she's like this with everybody which by the way imagine she would, like just constantly talked about how much better she was than everybody and that was just a trait she had it's like it's gonna make her so much more likable <laughs> but uh yeah like uh without any because this is this is almost headcanon i would say it's like trust me her history is a little person or she's got sibling rivalry or this that and the other this is why she's saying this thing it's not because she's just full of herself uh, sure, okay. It's constantly. But regardless of where the need to prove herself stems from, that's just a character trait. You can like it, you can hate it. I thought the well, whole point was everybody it, hates it, now yeah. What? <laughs> well, I thought that's what the point that she was addressing was. People didn't like this because they hate that trait in the character. Yeah. It seems like she agrees now. <laughs> I'm getting a little lost, all right. But it's a character trait. Give okay. me that that you had that kept you as Bruce. That device was a prototype. It was calibrated Great. specifically Make to me. Make me one for me. I'm just going to pause just in case. Yeah. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> like slapping her hands together like an obnoxious fucking bent. Like, <laughs> it to me. Make me one, bitch. Yes, Make me yeah. one. <laughs> she recognizes his expertise in the lab or she wouldn't be asking him to make a calibrated device for her. I don't know, who is she talking to? Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she wants the device he made for himself to make him non-hulky. So she's asking for one. She's trying to interpret this as like, ah, oh, see, she's saying that he's a he's an expert scientist slash engineer. She's like, no, she just wants something from him. Yeah, I, I said this in my stream. Like, just, be, if you go to like a Starbucks and bark orders at people, that doesn't show a, a high amount of respect for that person. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're right. You're just barking shit at him. Just gimme, gimme, gimme. Like, bitch, uh, can I, you know, can I be, uh, can I show my expertise and get this done? Like, uh, or like, are you just gonna yeah, shut the like, out? Hey, my PC is going slow. Technician, fucking fix it now, now. I need to get on with my work. And then he's like, whoa, he's like, stop being a dick. And someone goes, he's respecting you and your expertise. <laughs> he's trying to, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> That's the exact opposite. Yeah. That is clearly recognizing his skill set, his intelligence, and his strengths. No, I don't want to be a Hulk. God, I just... Clearly recognizing his uh, his expertise and stuff when she ignores him routinely in most of this episode. <laughs> I wonder if she'll show those clips. I've got my own office. Jen, I have Jen, business cards. And... There is no going back to what you were before. She doesn't want to give up her life. That is not... No, there's, it's gone. Her life as it was what? is gone. That's his point. She's she Hulk and Jen now. What is she trying to disprove, really? She's just saying she doesn't want her life gone. And yeah, we agree. Yeah, <laughs> <Nope. laughs> again, like one thing that I guess I'm, I'm wondering is one of so this is one of my problems that I have with this episode is that there is a real lack of acknowledgement from Jen about like the responsibility that yeah. she now must have. And that's not even necessarily proactively going out and saving people's lives. 
but just knowing with like absolute certain you just you have to be careful you just have to be because if you get you know like you're dangerous now there's no getting around that even if you're in control you're dangerous um but meanwhile what how long does she spend in mexico a week maybe like a week Unclear, and by then yeah. she's like comfortable with going back to the real world um like that tells us something about her priorities that it feels like she's trying to address here like oh yeah she doesn't know and she's trying to ask bruce for help it's like okay yes but doesn't take long before she wants to just go back to her normal life and like wants to just totally disregard training or like any further understanding of her predicament that tells me something that kind of contradicts the point that you're trying to make here like you can't take these in isolation you have to address it in the t which i guess she might get to um so maybe i'm jumping the gun a little bit but we'll see well it's just interesting to me that she's trying to sort of establish like see she's she's panicking because she doesn't want to lose her old life when uh Hulk is trying to explain to this lady right now that like you you've got to come to terms immediately with the realization that you're a you you've got giant green gleams going on. We're gonna have to gonna have to break it down for you. As if there's like uh but but as if the reality isn't the fact that she then gets to have her absolutely regular if not absolutely benefited life going forward. Because you know as we were talking about a little bit earlier, being She Hulk has only given her benefits, uh, lots of them. In fact. Thus far, it has only given benefits. Yeah. So, like, it's it doesn't work both before and after. Like, in the sense of before, there's a, there's a reality that Bruce is trying to help her with, and so just <laughs> refusing to uh, accept anything that's, ha that's happened sort of thing is just not helpful in terms of understanding uh, her situation. But then going forward, that's irrelevant anyway, because they decided they didn't want it to be. Uh... A crime. Not everyone can be stoic Steve Rogers sitting on the subway in a completely different century. Yeah, so nobody has a problem with her panicking a little bit. I don't. I haven't seen anybody mm -hmm. yeah, say yeah, totally. that that's a bad character thing. I, I don't know that anybody would ever totally. say that. All alone. What's that clip from? I don't know. No idea. Because I don't recognize this from First Avenger, Winter Soldier, or Civil War or anything else. Hey chat, what's this from? Anyone recognize it? Is it like a promo or something? Stoic Steve Rogers. Yeah, I, I have no idea. He's on like a train. Deleted Maybe scene. It's a deleted scene. Deleted yeah. scene? Okay. Avengers 1 deleted scene. I have not seen this. I'd be curious what it is though. Sitting on the subway in a completely different century, really good, all alone. This is a multi year journey you're about to embark on, on coming to terms with being the Hulk. You said multi year? Yeah, this is what I mean. Like, she doesn't. She's not. <laughs> she's listening, but only complaining in response. It's never like taking it in. <laughs> About fifteen you know, years, give or take. What are you gonna say? Well, you know, with Tony Stark and Doctor Strange, you know, when you, they're unlikable, right? Their sort of a wholeness comes from their like deep insecurities, and the script makes it like obvious to you, like some maybe trauma or you know like upbringing or whatever but she's just that way she's just entitled <laughs> yeah and the, and the show she is very pro that it whiny. thumbs her up but with dr strange and tony stark and those characters the script is very just very nuanced the way they introduce you to them introduce them to you right and you are always well, yeah, aware of their deep conflict and that they actually don't like themselves the way they are and you know the script builds from there but she's she's that way and it's clear that she's just deeply deeply self-entitled person and that makes her deeply unlikable to the, to people right away yeah strange and stark are both self-destructing when uh they're at the they, they yeah. do like the worst versions of similar things she's doing but the show think, is uh, like, she's great for doing this. A simple way to put it is, when you're watching Doctor Strange and he's being like a total asshole to Christine, if you think that that's like meant to be perceived as good, that is just like an incorrect reading <laughs> of, of that scene. That is bad. Like, Doctor Strange is behaving badly. Um, and a lot of his arc needs to be about uh, becoming less of a self-centered asshole, basically. I don't know that the, the reading of She-Hulk of like, Oh yeah, she's like she's just incredibly selfish. Is the uh, interpretation that the writers want you to come away with? 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I would be very surprised if that was the case. These components that are super important in the other stories that they didn't take forward with this, they were just like, nah, we don't need that because you know what, she's right actually. And they, there's the reason they have that line where she says, uh, "What I said was true, harsh but true." Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fifteen oh, years. The worst person she could have time. said it to. You could do so much in fifteen years. Now, just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yep. this. Not in doubt. Imagine someone coming to you and saying, nope, those are gone. In a blink of an eye, you do not have that future. I'm so it sounds like she's trying to like build an argument for what? Why she's... In, like, cause the, the... Her reaction... It's that the reaction makes sense to some extent. Like, once you've been told you have a life that's before you and that life has instantly changed, to some extent you're going to be hesitant to embrace that change, which is... I mean, that's definitely true, right? Like... I think that would take some time to get used to, but they're only here for, what, a week? Again. I think the weirdest like part of this week. argument is that there's only one... So if I found out I was a Hulk, right, uh, and, and it could happen at any point, the first person I want to speak to is Bruce Banner. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and, and you might be like, well, yeah, but what if what if you find out you have complete control over it, and when you turn, you get to be yourself entirely? You don't really want to hang out then, do you? It's like, I think I will. I want studies well, yeah, done. Right. I want like, tests done. Well, I mean, what is one of the more, like, iconic sort of images of Bruce? It's from the TV show of him constantly having to, like, move to different places and go to different towns, like, constantly on the run and constantly, like, sort of walking on eggshells, realizing that, like, you know, like, he's a powder keg. He's, like, at any point, something could go wrong, uh, and it could be very detrimental to those around him. That says something about who Bruce is and what his priorities are. That he's like deeply concerned about endangering other people's lives. Yeah, and you can tell um, he's upset. Jen doesn't care as much about that. Um, Which upsets It's him. not like one of the first. Yeah, of course it upsets him, right? Because that's he's a a mild mannered good person um, who like doesn't want to hurt people, and it like reflects in the way that he acts here. Like it, it just it it doesn't seem to be like a relevant factor to her. Like Bruce has to keep bringing up that um the potential dangers of being a hulk and like the dangers to other people uh and she often responds like very negatively when this gets brought up because like i think the first time she's like fine teach me how to be a hulk please like kind of you know kind of like with that tone and then the second time she just says oh yeah my life is ruined yeah it's like oh man and that's the thing okay. uh, like, you know oof. i think it's reasonable enough that there would be several uh, thoughts related to it but it's exclusively about her like every thought she has is about her um, mm -hmm. And how much it doesn't benefit her or does benefit her. Like it's it's just really annoying that there's no sense of um, what this will mean for everyone else yeah, in her life, else. and he has to keep reminding even, her of that. He has to keep reminding her of that, and she doesn't tend to respond to those with the gravity that it warrants. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that would mess me up a little bit. Triggers are anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. All right. <laughs> 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 Gross. Oh. Super proud of themselves for that one, weren't they? Only women have problems in life. Yeah, because of all the spooky men that are walking around. I don't know what they're going to do. Right then. This is a true statement. No, uh, well. <laughs> I mean. Hey. Uh, this is a true statement, right? And that's as far as it needs to go. <laughs> and it's a statement that is relatable to a lot of people watching this show. And uh. her saying it is not saying that other people don't have it worse. No, she says that later, don't worry. <laughs> she's, she's explicit about that later. She's just acknowledging that, yeah, on the day-to-day -day life, there are a lot of things out there that kind of suck. No, kind it was a little bit more specific than that. Mm. <laughs> it was the yeah. women's, and, and obviously, by exclusion, non-men existence is, uh, what was it, fear and anger. Or fear and uh, whatever. Just just the, the helplessness and fear, is it? Um, not that things anger suck. It was a nice attempt to, I don't even know how that would look in the show if, if the Hulk was like, we need to simulate uh, helplessness and fear, and then she says, "Well, things suck in general." So <laughs> it's like it was like a bit of a non sequitur kind of like response, yeah. doesn't it? 
But uh, and you know, also, it, you tried I, to clean it up. I, I give it ten points for that. It was cute as, a, as an attempt, but it's it's still terrible as a line. I'm sorry. And we're about to see Hulk nearly like sending her into this death trap instead of just using the <laughs> horn that he uses later on. Yeah, no, and for all he knew, could literally kill her because he hasn't done enough tests. Well, yet. when he was in the car crash as a human, he got hurt. I'm not sure what to make of that, other than. Yeah. Even though I thought that he wasn't meant to be, I thought he couldn't be harmed. I thought that the last time he tried to, like, it doesn't work. Um, but maybe they forgot about that. It kind of feels like if I don't transform, I'm gonna die! Also, I'm just gonna say it, being put in a glass box with, like, spinning wheels of doom coming at you, yeah, that's also traumatic. I don't, I, okay, good no God. one this, this... it otherwise. <laughs> Man, did yeah, Einstein write this? Like, this that. is top level. It's just, wow. You, that is correct, actually, being put into a buzz glass box with a bunch balls. of buzzsaws. Yeah. That so, is very scary. I would agree. And what, what's highlighted by that is, why is she here? Bruce decided to put her here. Oh, that's out of character. Yeah. That's very out of character. Mm -hmm. Bruce would never fucking do but, this. But they thought it was really funny. It enabled some jokes about yep. the scenario that were really funny. You have a plan B for that? Uh, no. Nope. Even if your cousin knows that you're gonna <laughs> yeah, be okay no. in that moment? He did not know she would be okay. That's he didn't know. That's why it's even knows. worse than he you're said, saying. Yeah. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do nothing. Man, always <laughs> putting women risks. in glass boxes with buzz saws. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. My penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's an allegory. <laughs> That's traumatic. She takes a few breaths. You know, she calms down. You're still, you're still Jen right now. Yeah. By the way, what I find interesting as well, I, I, I felt this way, but rewatching it really, really, you got this as an instance of her raging out and ripping the door off and throwing it, and e she even does like the whole rah, rah thing, and she's already done this earlier when she was going to fucking kill the the three horrifying men who said she was pretty. Um. This is more than enough information to conclude that she's not got it. She's not unable to control her emotions. Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. just just objectively speaking, you know. And and funnily enough, uh, Bruce was there in both of those scenes, uh, but he doesn't reference them when she says she's got absolute control. And I'm conscious. Like upon rewatch, that reads as surprise. You still can't control yeah. when you transform. Okay. So, how do I turn back into Jen? How did you do it? This is literally her asking Bruce for help! Because she knows he's been through it. This is her acknowledging that- <sighs> Um... Who is she talking to? I don't like, know who, who she's talking to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nobody said the reverse of this, okay? Uh, the- the... And to well, be honest with you, you're, you're selling it to be a lot better than it actually like, is, too. Yeah. She's just, like, give me the cheat codes person who knows how this all works, as opposed to Bruce, I understand that you have had a lot of experience with this. I'd like you to teach me as much as you can about it. And I'm going to listen. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, she's treating it like a, were, she's very respectful of his knowledge and experience. When in reality, she's just like, give me the cheat codes. Come on, let's go. Yeah, there, there, are, there are many ways that you can have a character approach, like, any conversation or any topic. And what you choose to do says something about who they are. Yeah. That he has more experience at this than her, and that she needs his expertise. This is literally her acknowledging what I feel like all the comments uh, so, are saying. Wait, wait, wait. She, oh, I just realized. She yeah. skipped over the part where Jen says, kind of seems like I'm done here, which, um, that was quite <laughs> bad that she said that. It was like, what, day one? First test. <laughs> kind of feels like I'm done here. And not said, and like said, like, kind of just like as though that's true as well. Like, it wasn't even a joke. It seemed like that was... That's what she thought. Why did well, she cut I, that out? I can't imagine, but, uh... You know why she did. <laughs> it's also the angle of, like, you, you've built a car and you you just want to drive it away. And then they're like, you haven't got any of the wheels on. You're like, get, yeah, get the wheels on. Go. And then she sees that as, you see? Appealing to the guy's expertise at repairing and placing <laughs> wheels. He's like, no, that's not at all what that is. She's already said she wants to get the fuck out of here over and over again. She's just looking for the cheat codes. That's all she wants. And she gets them. She's not doing. She, she literally right now is saying, Bruce, can you help me learn how to control so how this? She didn't... Was right after, this was right after she said it kind of seems like I'm done here. I yeah. just want to keep reiterating that. And uh, and the attitude. You can't, you can't not detect the attitude which yeah. is, ugh, how is so annoying it is, it, 
how she says it is as important as what she says. The you subtext. Don't, you, you don't can't really have a to. You don't really have to be a movie expert to read people, you know? Like, we do no. that all the time. Well, mm -hmm. it's just normal, we isn't it? We can detect <laughs> when people are a-holes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now is saying, Bruce, can you help me learn how to control being a Hulk? You can't be emotional. Just regular anger means death and destruction for everything and everyone around you. Now, now so this is interesting, because this scene, she takes him slightly seriously. But the, I feel like the show says she listened to him here and then later is going to explain to him why he's wrong about this. Like, uh, unfortunately, yeah, I, this yeah, is the closest we get to actually the show being okay. Like, it almost reaches some level when he d does this speech and then she accepts it. Because this is, like, the truth. Unfortunately, this is the show presenting this to knock it down. And I'm telling you, when people start seeing you as a monster, that never goes away. After hearing this, does she laugh in his face? Does she downplay well, his yeah, trauma? Yeah, right, this does is she projection. Say... She kind of laughed in his face as projection. Um, a little bit yeah. later. Yeah, and as you say, yeah, she 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 calls it projection. And I'm pretty sure um, it's, it's agreed upon. I think that the show would consider that to be the correct yeah. uh, perception of everything that Bruce is saying, that it is projection, yeah. You don't know what like, you're talking about. Whatever truth exists in the things that he's saying, the place it's stemming from is projection. Yeah. About? No. She acknowledges that he's right. He has a lot to teach her. She has a lot to learn, and she knows it. I find that fascinated mean, you know? that she's concluded <laughs> yeah, this yeah, with right. everything that happens in about two minutes from now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so she says... Fine. Teach me how to Hulk. Please. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds serious, right? Detect the attitudes. Right? Like someone... She asked. She <laughs> used the word please. She literally asks him for help because she knows he can. She also knows there's potentially a lot of physical and emotional damage in the future. She literally acknowledges that everything he says is right and that she has a lot to learn from him. Again, fascinating that, that she's saying all this. <laughs> how, did she, how did you get that she thought everything he said was right. Where'd you get that from? I don't know. She's already, like, taught out a big portion of his book about how useless it apparently is, which I always thought was baffling, by the way. It's like, why not just not read those bits? Why are you tearing it out? You gotta tear it out for symbolic purposes. Ah, I see. The training montage where she follows what he says and tries to prove that she can be a good Hulk in control of her abilities. Um... Is that a, mm. the nicest way you can put she's better than him at all of these activities? Except uh, except for him tossing a rock into the atmosphere, which I've seen people cite as true, uh, honestly truth, it's proof, sorry, that Hulk is stronger than She-Hulk. But I was like, well, he didn't, she never intended to throw it into the atmosphere, so I don't, I don't even know what, as far as the show is concerned, which is stronger out of these two. I have no idea. All I do know is that they've made Hulk less stronger than a fucking Jeep, for some reason. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, of course, him tossing a fucking rock into the atmosphere is an incredibly stupid move. Um, and it's not something Bruce would do, because Bruce doesn't get petty and jealous o over a family member getting control over their, what you could call, ailment from his perspective. It's all wrong. It's all fucked up. Men, men don't like seeing women succeed, ah, They don't, they hate it. My bad, I got it He's got a little and... dick. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a little boulder and take it easy on this person. You're not telling me if someone said that to you, you wouldn't want to grab the largest boulder you possibly can just to prove yourself. And Bruce literally no, picks one up. No, you psycho! And, uh, oh? No! I that's, that's what I mean. I, Why? So, so if she was watching the show and, and Jen literally just picked it up as, as was told and tossed it just to see how she could do it and he was, you know, and it wasn't as far as his, w would she be watching the show and being like, wow, that was, that was stupid. She should be aggressive and competitive. God, I, I hate this. I was thinking about... <laughs> I'm re you remember The Simpsons when uh when Bart and Lisa go to like a military school and then Bart yeah. uses the grenade launcher to shoot the grenades? It's like four out of five, impressive, but you missed that last one, did I? And then it's just get his car. And car and <laughs> I'm just picturing that. Like I'm thinking about where that rock is going and like what poor guy's car is going to hit Hans on. Molden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, if it was going to hit anybody, it would have been Hans Molden. Yeah, and toss it a man. It, it, it has to be a man. Yeah. Or it would have been a woman's, like, house, and then she sues the man and gets all the money. Or the <laughs> Don. It hit the Don while he was on his bike. Oh, no. <laughs> to the atmosphere. Nowhere in that scene 
says Jen is better than Bruce at being the Hulk. And I feel like they're clearly... Oh, really? That, you mean like that clip you ignored? Like when she says, I'm clearly nailing at all these things? Yeah. He fucking leaves? Yeah. That's, uh, that's <laughs> right away. We're not up to that part yet? Or and She's already we... showed the clip where she said, because I'm better, with the blood. It's like, it's already happened anyway. <laughs> and then... Oh, and remember, she's a competitive person, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's we accepted a... that, but now we're like, no, no, no. Establishing that they have. Well, I guess this, sort this of... is in line with her being competitive, right? That she would. Well, I guess both of them would. Especially Bruce throwing that boulder and turning it into a fucking asteroid, like yeah, coming this... into. Right, on somebody's car or house. Because he's petty and insecure as well, I guess. Well, you know what? We all are, apparently, and that's how we'd all act in that situation. Perfectly reasonable. Of, like, friendly, competitive spirit between them. I'm just trying to show you how no, it's I'm, done. I'm shown. I just don't personally understand the interpretation that, like, this montage makes her look better than him. Because uh, he's being really well, petty. And we're gonna, yeah, there are, the, he is incredibly insecure about his hulkness. Yeah, like, uh, it, it, if you look at the scene, so it, he gets upset because she threw the rock further than him, so he throws it he into the fucking upset. atmosphere, that was said. Yeah. Uh, she he does the balancing thing better that. than him, and he frowns. Like, she's just, like, she thumbs up at him. She's like, woohoo, I'm doing balancing. And he's like, Grr. Then she does a ground pound that's quakier than his, and so he pushes her off a cliff. <laughs> like, how are you yeah. interpreting this as, like, how, how exactly are you trying to say the show's making her look better? Like, because she has way better control over everything in this. She's better at him at the actual activities and the, re the reactions to them. He's just a petty asshole, which is really weird because he's never been petty. That's just not Bruce Banner at all. Not in the hand writers who probably didn't watch earlier stories and then That's there's the comes. there's the weird one where they both do a jump and then she just goes man man i'm, just, I'm still like perplexed by that i, I don't, don't know what they want me to think about that yes yeah. <laughs> okay because it doesn't to me. I also don't think it's like too feminist to show her strength. Okay, yeah, she's tossing a big boulder. She's knocking down a cliffside. We know Bruce can do that, but just because we don't see him do it doesn't mean the audience can be like, oh my God, they literally wrote Jen to be better than Hulk. How could they? I just, like, I just repeat what I just said, which is that he's like a little idiot asshole throughout all the scenes. Not that I've already seen him do more impressive shit than anything she does in that episode in other MCU movies, but they've depowered him. Well, the Jeep really pushes him over. Uh, like yeah, whoever it, wins, it's... like that—that's one thing, right? But what matters way more is how he responds to it all. Like I care a lot more about what we say about character than just like their raw physical traits. Yeah. When that's just not true. Yeah, she's going above and beyond here to prove herself. But Bruce doesn't have to do that. We know what Bruce can do. When you have powers yeah, like he this, tries to anyway. I was going to say, and he pushes something. her off a cliff because he's so upset that she's yeah. better than him. It's, it's, it's. I, I almost agree like, with her in the idea that yeah, that's nonsense. Why would she be better? We've seen him do way better things. He's being weird. He's not supposed to act like this. It's annoying to watch. He should be thrilled. He should be thrilled that it's so easy for her. Like yeah, she doesn't he should have be happy for her. Fifteen years of trauma. It's like putting a target on your back in the backs of all the people you care about. Oh, so, oh yeah. Cool. So we did skip over a bunch of stuff then. Yeah, she's gonna do that. We skipped over the part where she said, "I'm clearly nailing it at all these things." And how is this gonna help yeah. me as a lawyer? Which is yeah, interesting but, because which that's never the point. Subtextually, again, what are those lines telling you? I want to get the fuck out of here. I'm done. Well, and and I mean, in, oh damn! Now I'm just realizing something because when she says, "How is this gonna help me as a lawyer?" It's like, ah, see, because Bruce isn't thinking about how to help her as a lawyer. He's projecting his desire for her to be a superhero. Man, it all makes, makes him sense. him wrong, as opposed to the reality that we all thought was happening, which is, you are a crazy, green, huge, angry person. You need to calm down and think <laughs> about this and do some tests. But like, it's just yeah. dangerous. More dan yeah, it's just dangerous now. That's it. And it's a huge shame that that's uh, what we got, but oh well. Yet another way my life is ruined. Thanks, Bruce! I actually think she knows exactly how much trauma Bruce has been through, and she does not want that life for herself. No, you mean to say she does <laughs> not care. Think, you think... You think that's a, that's the point. It doesn't mean that it is. For the entire episode, She-Hulk sounds like an eye roll. Yeah, and, and the fact is, like, she, she, it's really bad if you think that she's got that running in her head at all times, how much trauma he's been through, because the way she fucking talks to him is unacceptable if she's actually got that on their mind. Ridiculous. 
And we're not going to sit here and pretend that the fact she can now turn into a green Hulk and Bruce is consistently telling her her life will never be the same isn't a lot to take in. He's literally saying she's never going to be able to- So no one is saying she doesn't have a lot to take in. Different thing. To have the job she loves. All of her loved ones are going to be in danger. And she can't go back to her old life. That's a lot to wrestle with. Yeah, okay, maybe she doesn't have childhood uh, You know, abuse. it'd be great if we saw her wrestling with it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> literally didn't have to wrestle with that at all, actually. She took like a couple days off with Bruce, uh, constantly told him that she doesn't need to take the days off, and then she went back to her life. That was it. In her life, like people have been saying the comics say Bruce does, maybe she didn't watch Tony, Natasha, Steve all leave slash die, but her life just changed in the blink of an eye. And guess what? She has to deal with that drama. One moment she's fine, soaring down the road, got an office, got business cards. The next moment, bam, blink of an eye. Car crash, superpowers, no more normal life for her. Yeah, I watched it too. What's her point? <laughs> Very, <just> like, yeah. <sighs> yeah, she's gonna have to deal with that trauma now. And clearly Bruce has put in the time and the effort to get where he mentally is now. This fully integrated self again. He seems happy and at peace with where he is at this stage of his life. Whereas Jen is still, excuse the pun, green to this whole thing. She wants to hold on to her old life as tight as she can. And she very clearly has not come to terms with the fact that it's going to be different now, regardless of if she wants it to be or not. So she- I mean, it really, <laughs> that's the funny thing though. Her Jen life is pretty much unscathed. And she started to, uh, this is what I mean about having later episodes, it's the, um, She-Hulk has given her opportunities that she didn't have when she was Jen. Now she gets to have, like, a bigger and better office, a more prestigious role, just better dates on Tinder. She can fight better, she can defend herself better, she's faster. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's kind of just yeah. awkward to think about in retrospect. Like, see, she's all very difficult because her life's been made so different and worse and, and turned upside down. It's just like... But it ends up being fucking great. In basically <laughs> every respect. And the worst thing is that she keeps whining about, like, I want to be Jen again. Well, be Jen. You have a choice. It's not like you don't. You can just choose not to be She-Hulk, not to turn in into her. Well, that's the well, weird thing. That, remember, the story created circumstances that would prevent her. Like, she got fired for saving people's lives. Which is bizarre. Uh, and then nobody would take her, which is insane. Yeah. Especially when mm -hmm. uh, the lawyer guy who hires her says that she put up a winning case against this super duper law firm. Yeah. So like she must be a good lawyer, even though obviously like the story as told doesn't doesn't quite support that. Um, so they had to kind of like contrive a story that essentially punished her for doing the right thing to like kind of bolster this perception. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's not going to stand up because like all of these benefits just keep stacking up. Yeah, because even though she lost that job, she ended up getting a higher paying one anyway. Yeah, getting, yeah. and the, the caveat being that she has to do, like, super human cases and, and be in the She-Hulk identity. Which she constantly, like, eye rolls and sighs about having to do, but nails every one of them anyway. It, it's weird, though, because it technically is on brand with her character. Like, oh, my life is actually not that bad, but I'm suffering! <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, that's on point, actually! <laughs> I'll yeah. get to show that! It's consistent! But, but bafflingly, not many people are liking her. Can you believe it? <laughs> she asks, So when do you think I can leave Let's here? just focus on each day as they come, Jim. She wants to get back to her life so badly. Yeah, after about that is not an answer that has a definitive end goal. That's true. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Hulk does not know when the exact date and time will be where she is able to leave because she has full control. That is correct. I mean, it'd be really hard mm -hmm. to figure out a date considering this is the second time that this has ever happened. Arguably unprecedented because apparently her DNA well, is slightly different than his and who knows what effects that'll have. He's a girl, maybe that changes stuff too. You know, the, the, why? This is what I mean. Bruce has done the most intelligent thing possible. Like, let's take it slow and test and do all kinds of, like, exercises. And she's just like, I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> what do I mean? This is why people don't like her. It's really fucking hard to like someone who's like this. No date, nothing for her to, like, hope for, work towards. Just sort of a non-committal, yeah, just keep working. I I mean, that's not even necessarily true. Uh, at this point, they haven't cracked when she can and cannot control turning into the Hulk. 
Uh, it's at the end of this conversation that she is cracked at and lets him know. And he's like, what? Remember, she says, I've outgrown your binder. Which, uh, again, <laughs> she's so full of herself. It's amazing. She doesn't even know what's in there. Mm. She's outgrown it. I mean, I love Bruce, but that's not an answer. I legitimately... You know, that's, uh, what answer can he give? He, he can't tell her exactly when it would happen. And she's a lawyer. I feel like she would understand this to some degree. We do have a life to get back to. I know I've been pushing you through a lot, but being a superhero is a trial by fire. Even though the number one thing she has been saying this whole time is that she doesn't want to be a superhero. I'm not going to be a superhero. I almost feel like it's like a semantic thing. I think we were talking about this when we were covering episode one. But just the whole, like, he keeps using superhero when, in actuality, what he means when he kind of explains it is that you've been given a huge amount of strength and power and with that he's doing the spider-man thing basically it's not necessarily mm -hmm. that you have to wear an outfit and have an actual name and stuff it just means that you've got the potential to help people way more than pretty much anybody most people let's just say and uh obviously you'll choose to help people as a result of that correct and as fringy's pointed out that's what the arc of this show is probably going to be by the end of it she's like you know what i will use she hulk to help people not just be a lawyer seems like daredevil's talking to her about that in episode five um, yep. and so like yeah that's that's great and everything so like Bruce would have been correct on that but only because she will eventually decide that that is something she wants to do however she will still have been correct on everything else she said in this episode um, so yeah when he says superhero he's just referring to helping people uh, in, in the specific sense of using her strength to do so and she's already started doing that anyway she has made it so clear that she did not sign up for this life and she just wants her old life back. We have to make sure of your ability to tolerate the stress and regulate your emotions, uh -oh. especially your anger. He poses this to her, right, as a goal. Regulate your emotions, especially the main trigger, anger. Her responding to him here in this scene is not her making everything about herself. It's a response to him directly about the abilities they're talking about in the conversation. Here's the thing, Bruce, I'm great at controlling my- This is one of those moments where you're like, how are you gonna do this? How are you gonna defend this? It's gonna take a lot. <laughs> Anger. Mm. I do it all the I time. I can't wait. If I don't, I will get called emotional or- Imagine being called emotional. Oof. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I get called racist and sexist weird. almost every day. Just FYI. <laughs> Difficult and might just leave. Yeah, but you're a woman, so uh it's, 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 <laughs> that's nowhere near as bad as it gets. Some people will say you're emotional. How do you hack it? Like, whoa. Literally get murdered. And I wanna say Also, yeah, you almost get murdered all the time too. That must suck. Almost get murdered. Like it's <laughs> when you don't even know know you're about to get murdered because you don't fucking know you're about to get murdered. Well, that's the thing. When you're about to turn a corner, there could be a guy around that corner. You don't know, and that's basically just murder, right <laughs> Maybe. there. Maybe. Hey, Bruce actually looks like he looked at me for half a second. I, you know, I almost died right there. <laughs> get murdered. And I want to say, Bruce actually looks like he understands. Um, that's not that's, who, who that's wrote him the same fuck as who wrote her <laughs> like, what are you, why would you even make this argument <laughs> look he understands he follows the, the, the argument look to your hero <laughs> like, agree with him which is funny yeah, considering a lot of the reactions are angry on behalf of him but, but, but he's written by yeah, them because he's not not himself though that's the whole fucking complaint is that he's not him I love that she's like, look, why are you disagreeing with him? <laughs> you should be, you should I feel mean, the way he does. Yeah, it's not like your favorite character is being written by a bunch of butter churns. I, oh my god, <laughs> like, whatever your favorite character is assassinated, don't worry, because that character w is doing that thing that you don't want them to do, therefore it's okay. That's, we, we've come across people who've made that argument on UFAB before, where they'll be like, how can you say this character wouldn't do this thing when you're seeing them do it? Like, whoa. Game of Thrones flashbacks? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely unreal. Get murdered. And I want to say, Bruce actually looks like he understands. Which is funny, considering a lot of the reactions are angry on behalf of him. But meanwhile, he actually has created an open and safe environment for her to discuss these issues. <laughs> Anyways, here's the scene that people seem to be running. <laughs> what? He doesn't fucking... <laughs> 
These are not the issues what? that he was looking to discuss, like whether she was being catcalled. <laughs> He's talking about enraged, like, and you know what? It's it's, it's funny because I just, I never understood why he never brought up the fact that the first time he saw her dealing with her being Hulk, she failed, and it was essentially catcalling. You know what I mean? Like, and she's telling him right now, like, I have complete control. All you'd have to be like is like, well, obviously you don't. The one time this actually happened to you that we've done so far, you had a blackout from anger. Because this is the thing. You might be able to argue uh, she's turned into Hulk in that training session with the buzz saws, and when they're doing their little training sessions and she's back out, but we've still got two instances of her turning into Hulk and her blacking out with, with like, rage. So surely that's enough to be like, we still need to do more tests. We still need to take more time. Last thing we need is for you to go have a blackout that's not in a forest so that you just annihilate a city or something. And, you know, it feels like he should reference that a little bit more. ...with to, like, prove that she thinks she has a harder life than Bruce. I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Yeah, and that, that's the there mistake. It is. There yeah, that was the, that was the line that destroyed then, everything. Yeah. That uh, vein popping out of her neck, she meant that shit. Yeah. Vein popping out of this her neck. This is the thing, she is fucking angry at him for even imagining otherwise. And she used the word infinitely. It's not even, like, measurable how much she's dealing with more than him. So, <laughs> this is the thing. If you'd not had this line, there are defenses you can mount. Uh, but it was over the second she said this. The writers screwed you over, I'm sorry. So all of this just feels like projecting a lot of shit onto me. Which she's not wrong. A lot of it is projecting. He... <laughs> she's not wrong. Ooh, no. I wish no. if you could just go and like about this one thing and be like, eh, and, and, you know, like actually called it out a bit. Oh, okay, right. then yeah. I'll be like, fine. Yeah, like if she'd said that line was cringe, uh, but the rest was yeah. fine. If she'd said that, that'd have been neat. Oh, well. But it's not. It's true, though. Yeah, she's, uh, it's, it's just right. He clearly is not just teaching her how to minimize damages, but also to become a superhero like she's stated she doesn't want. So she hulks out de-hulks just to prove that she has it all under control, yep. which is what their lessons were for originally. You stay here until you, you figure out how to control your hulk self. Priority. Yeah, and when she does that, by the way, in the scene, he, he says something like, you know, I, I, this is completely new ground for me, and then she just walks off. We don't even get to, like, Figure it out, deal with it, test it, understand it at all. She does it once, and she's like, well, I'm done, bye. It is to control when you turn. So Bruce succeeded in helping her. He, no, he was baffled what? by it. He had no idea what was happening. <laughs> he wasn't him. She's, this is that, that weird shit they write for a lot of female characters where their arcs for understanding their powers go from they're really strong, and now they're even stronger. <laughs> it's like, and how? <laughs> well, they figured it out. They figured it out. And you're like, okay. America Chavez, Captain Marvel, and uh, She-Hulk. All three of them have done it. Unbelievable. Her. You guys have outgrown your binder, cuz. Love you, Bruce, but I'm going home. AKA, the solution that worked for him and his life is not necessarily applicable to her. Weak. Which makes Be sense. As <laughs> not necessarily applicable to her. We didn't even get to find out. There was no, this is what I mean. All Bruce wanted to do was continue testing and keeping an eye on it. But nope. Wants to go back to lawyering. They're different people. It's worth putting loads of people's lives in danger if you want to go back to being a lawyer. That, that makes total sense. That's also another reason why people like her so much. Nowhere in this statement does she say, I've had a more traumatic life than you. Um... <laughs> uh, the... Did you just skip right on past <laughs> the fucking rant you just showed? I, <sighs> I, I, it's weird to me that she wouldn't even at least have the olive branch of being like, I see why people would have come to that conclusion because she says explicitly I deal with more than you do infinitely which uh, feels like she almost literally said I have more trauma than you it, it kind of feels that way I guess she's not literally using those words so hmm he said you need to learn to regulate your emotions but she demonstrates that she already has that skill set <laughs> Just like, she clearly has demonstrated the opposite too. That's, that's kind of why I was like sad for Bruce that he couldn't have a bit of a spine and point out that uh, she's fucked it up twice in in his company before. So not good enough to, to go. Like, it's not like there's zero instances of her losing her shit, so. 
She already does that in her daily life. And I don't see anyone commenting on the fact that this is just her equivalent of, that's my secret cap, I'm always angry. They're simply- Well, that wouldn't even make sense, would it? Because she's saying that she's got it harder than him. It's not an equal thing. Um, and that's something that he had to learn, by the way. He had his whole movie for that. He just cracked it straight away because she's already experienced this in her daily life, being catcalled. Or, sorry, I didn't want to minimize it. She also said when um, when a guy tries to tell her how to do a thing that she knows better than him at, or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then explaining. Was... And then, of course, we threw in also maybe getting murdered. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Really saying that she skipped the, like, need to learn how to regulate my emotions step that Bruce had to go through before he got to that point in the Avengers. Which I think is fair and has nothing to do with trauma. Anger at your circumstances has nothing to do with the trauma that you've experienced in your life. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> angry in circumstances has nothing to do with trauma in your I mean, it can? I don't, I don't even... This, we got that problem again of, wait, who are you talking to again? Who, who said... <laughs> Getting a little bit lost again. And I feel like we as viewers know Bruce's journey. We've seen what he's been through. He's definitely had his moments of being angry all the time. But that doesn't invalidate the fact that her life experiences have also contributed to her knowing how to control her anger. I do sometimes wish she didn't say the, I do it infinitely more than you. There we go. The, the conditioning. We've Thank almost broken you. through. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> Don't say but. Just because... <laughs> I feel like that's what people are latching onto, and if she hadn't said that sentence, I'd be really curious to know if people were actually listening to her, or if they'd find something else to complain well, about. So, that's so, the problem, they were listening to her, yeah, and what she said fundamentally changes what she meant. It's like she just said, I wish you hadn't said 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, because uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is, is 4, and just said 2 plus 2 is 4. It's like, yeah, we all do. But she didn't. She said the other thing, which was much mm -hmm. worse. Um, and it's interesting because, yeah, people did listen to her, and that's why they're upset. Because women deserve to have a space to talk about their experiences, and once more, it- You don't think that this makes women look a little bit clownish? The fact she's talking to Bruce Banner, of all people, and explaining that catcalling makes her infinitely ready compared to him to deal with anger? <laughs> you, don't, you don't think that, that that's absurd? This is what I mean, like, uh, people had a lot of trouble trying to defend this one, because it's just, it just pushes it that, that, just, just too far. Um, you need, you, you, you'd have her saying this probably to, like, the, the, the scummy lawyer character, right, who's, like, an asshole to her. But that was even another like, thing they fucked up. The, um, the lawyer guy who, like, tells her I should do the closing argument, she just tells him no, and then she does it anyway. You know, like, yeah. even that, like, sort of thing doesn't really reflect the trouble she has to deal with. That she complains about like had he been a superior and stopped her and he said like you're just you know you're, you're not you're not capable that sort of thing mm -hmm. um and then you know I maybe should... wait go ahead no no continue please i was just gonna say that if maybe he, you know you do the storyline of like he's has a fucking sickness or he's he's cold he's he's got a phone call he's got to take care of and then she's forced to, to do the closing argument and she nails it that sort of stuff you can write um but instead, she just stops him. She's like, no, I'll do it. And he's like, oh. Are you going to say something? No. Well, um, I mean, about this scene. Um, you know, the thing about it is that when you are a victim, right? When you are a woman and a victim and you, you've been through traumatic ex experiences, you will know better than to devalue anybody else's experience because you know firsthand what it feels like to be, you know, how bad it feels to be, you know, not listened to or that fear of, you know, nobody will trust me or nobody will believe me. So, like, it's just, it's a, it's crazy. Yeah, um, how and... Just especially strange when you consider he is his cousin, meaning she's going to have much more detail of what he's been through than most people, but he wouldn't even need to be a family member to know a lot about the public events of what the Hulk has been through. Um, mm -hmm. 
and you know you caught detail of like in the initial scene where he talks about how he went he was on the alien planet for x amount of time where the other guy had complete control like he's already told her about some of the most horrible things that have happened to him and you know, no offense, but like I just I can't imagine any amount of cat calling being as traumatic to me as someone taking over my body for two years. Uh, yeah. And I feel like most people would agree with that. Uh, and so it feels really odd that she would ever uh, compare herself to him in terms of uh, horrors experienced or uh, traumas controlled. It's uh, and that's I think that's at the root of why everybody fucking hates her. It's all these other elements, but that, that one moment really sent it over the edge. Exactly. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just something for the writers to remember. A lot of people like Bruce Banner. Um, I know it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, same goes, by the way, or same went for even Strange. Uh, even Sam Wilson, you know? But, and Bucky Barnes, but oh well. All of these lads getting torn right down. All their respective new things. Yep. <sighs> feels like all of the reactions saying she's so foolish to even think that that's a big issue. Just feels like it's trivializing stuff that a lot of women go through. But well, she was trivializing <laughs> what he went through. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry, but like, you just think about how he, he leveled like a city after being mind controlled and had to deal with the fallout from that. The, he went from being relatively, like, kind of, like, people like, yeah, Hulk, he's cool, to being seen as a horrible monster. Yeah, uh, with that on his mind and having to control those feelings and stuff, it just, it's, you're not going to be bringing up stuff like that. It would be like if a family member had a war story, and they went through it in detail, and then you were like, yeah, man, I, I was walking home and I, like, slipped on a puddle. Uh, landed on my butt. And, uh had to go to <laughs> sit down for a while. It was a long, like a whole day. Like, yeah, okay. You, you, there's a time and a place is kind of what I'm getting at. You probably just you'll save that story for a different vibe. But even though I kind of wish they hadn't added the, like, I do it more than you, I understand why yeah, they did. The, because it has to lead into <laughs> her saying, I think you're projecting a lot well, of it your... Doesn't, oh. <laughs> they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to, um, no. <laughs> And also, like, I just, it's, it's really, you know that that line ruins it. You know it. Yeah. But, like, mm -hmm. you feel compelled to defend it, so you have to just yeah, kind of, like, dance around it. Doesn't even want to and admit it. Because that, it, she said it to perhaps the worst person, like, in the MCU that she could have possibly said that to. Across the entire <laughs> multiverse. <laughs> Anybody else would have been better. Um, and even saying that, like, you're projecting there's nothing wrong with that him projecting onto her because like they're basically going through the similar experiences at least from his point of view right she's a hulk he's a hulk and you know there's nothing wrong with him just assuming and just you know being scared for her basically yeah like if they were because projecting implies that he's just putting his own shit on her when it, it absolutely is Un, uh, it's inapplicable right. or whatever, but it, it absolutely yeah. is applicable. Yeah. And um, even if he was absolutely wrong about everything he thinks she is going through, it wouldn't matter. It's a good precaution. Kind of how we deal with anything that's this serious in life, uh, in with these institutions, and be it medicine or military, like, uh, you know, when someone comes back from, like, a mission that's dangerous, they'll just be, you'd be like, you don't know that they've got any kind of disease or radioactive or, you know, that sort of, when... In movies, when like a soldier travels to a different dimension, then comes back, they put him in quarantine. It's like, why? You don't know that they've got some kind of horrible disease. It's like, yeah, I know, but <laughs> gotta be careful. Jeez. Own problem. Me, even though I'm a different person, because she is a different person. And by saying that, yeah, I've never been compelled by the whole "I'm a different person" argument. Therefore, you shouldn't be using any of your known understandings of how to deal with Hulk on me. Yeah, I've always thought yeah that's weird. ridiculous. Like, isn't the whole point of, like, learning from people and, like, just learning in general, having to listen to someone different from us to get a different perspective? Isn't that the whole fucking point? I mean, <sighs> yeah, I mean, if someone is... <laughs> How many more similarities do we need? You turn into a raging green <laughs> monster. Like, you're serious. You're like, yeah, but I'm a different person. You're like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just leave. <laughs> like, you don't need my help. <laughs> Which is oh, so fucking annoying, too, because this is the angle I think that they even missed out in the episode. 
This is what Bruce would have needed, and he never got to have anybody to help him. Anybody to guide him. She got, like, a full package, and she was annoyed by it. <laughs> Meanwhile, he had to figure it all out on his own, yeah, with absolutely no point of reference. Yep. She's putting her foot down once more, and just re-establishing the fact that she doesn't want the life that he has. I've seen a lot of comments saying it's cringy and unnecessary for her to talk about it, but she's literally using her experiences as evidence to say, that's my secret, Bruce. I'm always angry. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's just not what she said. <laughs> and uh, and it's Get not even true. You see, <laughs> what experiences? Well, catcalling and uh, being murdered almost, or whatever she said. They, I, I, I'm so confused by this as well, because we keep treating the moment in Avengers where he says, I'm always angry, as though it was like just something anyone can say to prove that they, they, they go through a lot, therefore they have complete control. When, like, he'd been Hulk for a while at that point. So he still didn't have complete control. Hulk no. was still an ultimate owner that he had to account for. Whenever he rages the fuck out or experiences a lot of damage, the Hulk will come out. Like, it's it's not fully controlled, I mean, even yeah, if he that, thought that, he that could is, argue so. The reality is that's always going to be like a challenge that you need to overcome when you have a character who doesn't have to deal with any of that versus a character who did. There's exactly. always going to be a perception of unfairness stemming from that. But how yeah. you handle it's the important part. Someone in chat said he was Hulk for about seven years before then. I couldn't remember the timeline exactly, but holy shit. Like, if, if anything close to anything more than five years, it means that that's how long he had to understand the Hulk. And in the meantime, he had to walk on eggshells, like, his whole life. Yeah, and then and then he gives you this, like, and even then, comfortable, yeah. cushy way of learning about all of this. And in days, she's already like, I'm bored, let me go. It's like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> I'm over it. Yeah. What I mean? Gamma radiation, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> There's also so much room here too for Bruce to like then go back, look internally, figure things out. Just because one character. Yeah, you know who needs to learn from all of this? It's Bruce. Bruce is the one that's really <laughs> fucked up and needs to understand better about the realities of the situation. I'm assuming she's going to go into their fight, by the way, which is even worse than the training, because she manages to outplay him, like, several times at things that he said way... Like, even a... You know the stupid clapping thing? Like, she beats him on that as well. <laughs> How? <laughs> ...says that she thinks this is what's happening in episode one doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to be the end-all definitive reason why she can control her Hulk form later on. It's like... It's Do you think they're ever going to address that again? Well, we're like midway through nine episodes and nothing. So, so no. Yeah, it's all been fucking goofs, gaffs, and like, oh gosh, I gotta be the Hulk again to take care of this situation. That's what it's been. It hasn't been, have we been learning more about why it is that she has such an understanding and balance and control over her Hulk persona? It's like, no. Do you really think this show's ever going to address anything serious, ever? It's a 30-minute episode in a nine-episode series. It's obviously not going to include everything in episode one. I did your dad. I just I'm amused by the fact that she thinks in the next hour and a half that there was going to be anything to, that was like yeah, just it was all goofy shit. <laughs> so I hate to break it to you. Dialectical behavior therapy. I can change back and forth, and I'm happy to now get back to my life. She literally acknowledges that Bruce helped. She says, "I did what you wanted me to do." I. That's not acknowledging he helped. Help? That's saying <laughs> did I did. Help anyway? Yeah, I ticked your fucking boxes. I can do it all now. Leave me alone. God, she's so generous with the <laughs> with like the head cannon of what's behind <laughs> all these words. I did your DBT. She listened to him. She worked together closely with him, and now yeah, now she's told him he's wrong and he needs to leave her alone so she can live her life. That's what's happening right now, and he's saying that's too dangerous. And she's ignoring him. Because she's a bit selfish. She doesn't care that it could endanger people. She wants to get on with her life for her reasons. Now, because of his help, she's realized that she actually has the resources within her. I would love to, if she was here right now, I'd be like, tell me what it is she learned from him. What was it that he did at one what point that helped her learn a thing? What was it? Because she already made fun of the whole mindfulness thing, like Jen, in Universe. She found his buzzsaw thing to be completely useless. She beat him at every test he tried to put her through. So, what did she learn from Bruce? 
And if you ask me, I'd say nothing, to the point where she even states outright that she's gone through so much more than he has, and she understands this pretty much better than he does. ...her to control her Hulk form. She just did it a little bit quicker than 15 years. <laughs> you you, <laughs> can, you can say that. A week. 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> But Bruce wants her to stay. And I get it because the poor man's alone on a beach. That's not why. That's not the reason. Oh my god. Poor man is I so lonely. I might want you to think that that's the reason why, but it shouldn't be. Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? If, if the writers were like, yeah, we wanted to write it so there's an implication that Bruce is feeling alone, like that's what the reference to Tony Stark is all about. He's trying to say he likes company at the bar or something like that. I find it hard to believe because he's got so many different people he can hang around with if he wants to. Like, so the idea that yeah. he's like, that doesn't really match up. And then, of course, I've got plenty of references to assume he just wants to make sure she doesn't run amok by accident and end up in a position where she hates herself for not having taken more time to control. That's the, that's the re, I thought that was like the underlying element of all of it, which is why it makes so much sense that he doesn't want her to go. But then he just sort of gives up on it, if you remember. He's like, he he, does, like he'll like fight which, uh... her. And then he'll just be like, okay, fine, I respect it. Like, well, oh. he'll fight her <laughs> when she starts the fight, yeah. Right, of course. Uh, twice. Which I'm sure will be acknowledged and addressed. <laughs> I'm not you, yeah. and I'm not going to become you. I don't need to join some secret government contractor squad and have my entire life taken away from me. Clear oh. She's just bullying. Sorry. It, it, it is... <laughs> So, like, the Avengers actually wasn't a government squad while Hulk was in it. It was private. So, she's just wrong. Yep. Uh, she worked more also so for the government than the he government. did. She's the district attorney, so she works for the government. That's what I'm saying. She she more so <laughs> takes orders from the government also, than he does. What is her observation of, these guys saved your life, like, many times over. It's a very yeah. disparaging way to refer to a team of heroes who saved the, who saved the literal universe. Like, half of it. So this Maybe is... even you. At, at the very least, somebody that you care about. Bruce was single-handedly, li single-handedly, literally and figuratively responsible for restoring half of life in the universe. And when you have it so dismissive about the Avengers and organization, it's just there's implications that follow from that. It's like, wait, do you think the Avengers are bad? Do you think they're bad? Interesting perspective to hold. Yeah, I don't know. It just like, seems like there's something to address Bruce there, Otto. Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer. I don't need to join some secret government contractor squad and have my entire They're also life. not secret, they're very public. I was gonna say, not, what is she even <laughs> implying there? Taken away from me. Clearly this is- and Yeah, and saying her life was t taken away from it, uh, that's, what, that's where it really started to become a problem for me, because I was like, wait, you believe that about him? Then why have you been talking to him like this? Like, why are you such a- asshole to someone you think whose life was destroyed by all of this. This is what she's mm. been afraid of this whole time. She wants to live her life on her own terms. That's not a crime. I, I said, what? <laughs> no one said well, it was. Who are you talking to? The reality <laughs> is that she does have certain obligations now. She's powerful. I mean, hell, she did the speech, right? I wonder how relevant that'll be actually thematically in the way that it should be. Like, if you got power... You got some responsibilities that uh, come with that power, like not reluctantly say, like not actually refusing to save people's lives until your friend tells you to. And then the first thing you say is, man, my suit. I'm going to ruin my suit. My life wasn't uh. taken away. Really? And Bruce, I love you, buddy. We can see you've worked through it in therapy. We can see that you're content and at peace with yourself now. But come on, you know it. We know it. She knows it. You've been through sure, a lot of trauma. No but there's no getting around it at this point. So, there's no escaping that. Like, you have to deal with this. Like, you don't get to choose not to deal with it. You just can't. It's, it's also not, not her place to tell him how he conceptualizes his experiences at this point. She should yeah, know this. Uh, you can't tell a person. Well, when he says to me, to back to it, my life wasn't taken away, the obvious implication is that this is what he chose. And he, he like, he takes pride in the fact that he's chosen to help uh, people. That's really good that he's yeah, gotten to that. To place. tell him, he's, he's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. You this is this is was this was done to you. It's just like you're not helping. You 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 just Why gonna, everyone, <laughs> like you're just an asshole. You know, both Thor and She Hulk have like shit on mindfulness. It's really odd. Yeah, remember how they're like, oh, that's really stupid. And here, 
Like he's just he's just talking a lot of pretty standard like mindfulness, which of course makes sense. Like that would be probably the first thing that you would focus on if you were Hulk. Just keep making fun of it. Why are they making fun of his efforts to try and like improve his life? That's <laughs> right. I mean, it's just um, know. it's bold enough of the bold enough of the show to imply that he's deluded when he says uh, my life wasn't ruined. But I, I take particular issue with this analysis being like Bruce is wrong. His life was completely ruined, and it wasn't his choice Even at all to do any of this. The whole point of like Web. I mean, I'm not happy with what like Bruce's arc. We should have had a lot more stories yeah. with him. We missed mm -hmm. a lot of great potential. Skipping Professor Hulk, mm -hmm. Smart Hulk, whatever they want to call it. Real. That was. Man, that was like the biggest development he'd had, like, since well, Avengers, and they skipped it. Without um, uh, removing any of the installments we have, we can still ask the question of, do you think he regrets snapping and damaging himself significantly to save five billion lives or however many? Like, I highly doubt. Well, obviously, there's half the universe is a hell of a lot more than that. Yeah, point being, she's, you know, it's like, your life was ruined, you, you, you wouldn't have wanted any of this, when he's probably sitting there thinking about how it's so nice he's gotten his arm healed after the choice well, he made to save everyone's lives. Wouldn't it be interesting if we got that his perspective is, well, there was a meaning to it, like, it wasn't meaningless me becoming Hulk, it wasn't, because if it wasn't, I mean, it was kind of because they turned Thor into a loser, but like... At the very least, he could he could perceive his life as having purpose and Hulk having a purpose in that it allowed him to save the universe. I mean, he said it in the film that he thought it was his life was leading up to this, um, or like yeah, he was and, made for this. Yeah, exactly that. And and I think, funnily enough, that actually follows at least a little bit on from because a lot of people are like, I wasn't he forced into the Avengers? And it's like, well, if you watch the film, it seems to me that he still technically volunteers. Like, well, he, he could have. Back, right? Yeah, he, not only that, but he could have hulked out with, with Natasha and just fucking jumped out of the village and jumped away. Like, they wouldn't have yeah. been able to catch him. There was no stopping him. He chose to help. He didn't want to help as Hulk, but no. he, he definitely wanted to help. Because, like, that is who Bruce is. He's he's a good man, and fundamentally. Then he, and then he did want to help as Hulk when he when he hulks out in the city. And then you have him, he's, he's a part of the team for Age of Ultron. And then he uh, leaves, after all the things that happened in that film... Then you end up in Ragnarok, and when, once he's back, he's still doing hero work. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's, it's, uh, I don't like the implication that, like, well, you've only really done any of this because you were forced to. It's like, not true. He could have... We, we've seen what Bruce... Bruce could have done a lot of things that he, he didn't do. He could have done a lot of different things in his life, but he chose to do this. It's going to be worth something, yeah. and it is worth something. But it's... I don't know. I, it's It's... It's... It is particularly frustrating that the MCU's strength, like the strength of the premises leveraging stories that existed before to enhance your stories now, and they just like persistently neglect to do that. All they care about is using the characters, but using them as they see fit. Like Michael Waldron wanting to have Wanda be the villain in his story because that was what he wanted, rather than meaningfully leveraging the history of that character to do something great with them. And it's the same here. It's like, did you guys even watch... I would be genuinely surprised if, like, any of the people who made this show would even watch The Incredible Hulk. Even though Emil Blonsky yeah. is in it. I doubt they've seen that. I would that. be surprised. You know it. We know it. She knows it. You've been through a lot of trauma. And even though you've accepted your situation now, you can't deny that there's been a lot of struggle to get to this point. So you yeah, didn't... Also, that wasn't even what point she was... That's not... Uh, what... No, the point... You're responding to him saying his life wasn't... Uh... Yeah, his life wasn't taken away. Taken away. That's it. Yeah. Wind up alone. Because, like she said, she didn't want to be an Avenger, basically, and she says it later, right? Like her friend in the bar in episode two says, "You could be an Avenger," and then she just shits on oh, them relentlessly. God. Remember, like it's for billionaires and narcissists. It's like the billionaire narcissist like saved the universe. So like, I mean, it's, many, it's... he saved Earth multiple times. Ultron was definitely a fuck up, but he saved the universe. It it just you you like, sit there absolutely. and you think to yourself like. Do these writers actually wonder why she's so repulsive? Do they actually wonder why? Like, do, do, they, they just sit there having her make fun of all the people we like. And then, and then they're like, why won't you like her? Like, you like them. <laughs> you can't deny that there's been well, a lot of struggle. Well, isn't it funny and self-aware? No. Also, yeah, mm. that, that's what I was trying to say. Her saying, like, in response to my life wasn't taken away, she said, you, have, you can't deny you've had a lot of trauma. It's like... Okay, so those two things aren't mutually exclusive, so I don't even know why you brought them up. 
this point. So you didn't wind up alone? Hiding away on some remote beach with no friends, no relationships, never seeing your family and def- I fucking hate this little rant that she has, but it's also not even true. Uh, she- Because he- We already- We know because of the other fucking movies that he's hanging out with other people. He talks to other people. Yeah. He built this bar with Tony. Tony helped him build this entire facility. His yeah, friend Tony. And they're only here for this, right? Because he was on a road trip with her, quote-unquote. Why would he be on a road trip with someone when he doesn't spend any time with family? In, dude, in, in Endgame, he's sitting in a fucking, like, Baskin Robbins or something. Like, a little, like, like cafe, just eating, yeah. like, scrambled eggs. She's full of shit. This line doesn't even make sense with everything else we've seen, but it's also just it's an really asshole true. thing to oh. say to him. Well, and yelling at, at him as well while saying it. It's like, what what is your problem? Exactly. Like, what is what, what's the deal? Definitely not dealing with a decade's worth of trauma? Why would you want that for me, Bruce? And I fucking hate how she reframes yeah. it all the way back into by trying to keep me here, you are putting trauma on me. As opposed to <laughs> I'm trying to fucking help you. Yeah. So I mean like oh they they very they did a really great job in creating a villain. <laughs> like, close really enough did. to one. She knows that he's had a hard life. She doesn't want yeah, her life to yet, be that hard. And yeah, look at the way she's treating him. Yeah, what she should have said there is she knows he's had a hard life. She doesn't care. She wants to leave. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I got she that. She wants to leave. She has a career that is more important to her than the preservation of life. <laughs> this is the thing, man. <laughs> Fundamentally, <laughs> right. Even if you throw all of that out, seems like with everything that just got unloaded, it's worth chatting with him for another 10 minutes before leaving. Especially with everything you just yeah. said, you know? Well, especially considering, but no, instead she's going to run him down with uh, his Jeez, car, yeah. his car, um, and then punch him in the face. Yeah, which, that's the perfectly reasonable thing to do instead of saying, hey, um, what I just said to you was actually pretty fucking personal and harsh, and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, she only did that after she destroyed his bar that was made by yes, his late and, friend. And when she apologizes, she says, however, what I said was true. Right, yeah. It's I like, you didn't need to say that, my, but thanks. My only mistake was being harsh. I was otherwise very accurate. Exactly. This is episode one. It continues. Yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> I think this part in particular is so clear that she's acknowledging that he's been through a lot more than her. To me, this re- No! Acknowledging she's... it just so you can throw it in someone's um, face I don't even not acknowledge it. Exactly. She's basically using that against him. Yeah, yeah. To just yeah. get out of the situation. She's How had it. That... Uh, I would say she's had her cake and it, uh, at it too. She's practically said, I don't want to live the life you've lived, which is constant trauma, while earlier having said, I've dealt with infinitely more than you. Best of both worlds. <laughs> exactly. Which kind of describes the entire character as well. She she gets all of the benefits of Hulk with none of the trade-offs. Yeah, I'm better than you for having dealt with more, but I also don't want you to ruin me by making me deal with what you've dealt with. She says both yeah, of these things. Not even what he's trying to do. What... Like, what is traumatic about learning how to control your powers? The trauma came from, like, the shitty aspects of being Hulk. All he's trying to do is teach her how to control her powers to protect herself and the people she cares about. It doesn't even make any sense. His trauma stemmed from, like, being a rage monster that killed people. And losing his life. Like, actually losing his life. Having to go on the run forever. She doesn't have to do that. And she- and all it takes is what? Like, another month, maybe? Of just staying there and learning more about her powers. Yeah, and it would have—I oh, would have done wonders for her characterization if uh, if she had hulked out here, and then he like like yeah. she recognizes that he recognizes that, and they take some time to work. And you know what? We could even not show it, and we show it later, maybe because we go back to the present and we're showing more shit for you know normal life, and then and then we come back in a past episode again to see how did she crack it? How did she get over that that hill? What did she learn? Maybe from Bruce, but also from his cell. But nope, nope, she just had it all. She had it all, man. She had it when all she, and she didn't blow it. <laughs> when, she, when she says that, like, she's not fully developed yet, right? But the thing is, the script is not treating her, her as undeveloped character. She's like, this, uh, the script puts her in the context where, yeah, she's right. And she's, yeah. she knows, she's aware. And Hulk is aware, and it's just, it's just so obvious. And now that we have the rest of the episodes, it's so clear that, yeah, she's just the way she is, and there's not going to be any development. 
nope. development. Yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I think that there's even an angle of subversion that they're going for, because even through the POV of Hulk being like, wait, you've nailed all of this already? Like, yep. Yep, 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 like, as uh -oh. Craig would say. Yeah, and you just get a little bit like, I didn't think that... And it's like, yeah, I know you didn't think that, because this story isn't about that. This story is about me realizing that, yeah, I can't just keep She-Hulk in my pocket. I might have to pull it out uh, more than I wanted to, because different things in life demand it. And you know what? She ain't that bad. That's what that's what Jen will learn, that She-Hulk is kind of neat. And you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Reads that she knows what he's been through. She knows that it is devastating, hard stuff. And that she specifically doesn't want that life for herself. She seems quite content and eager to go back to the life of catcalling and mansplaining to avoid the trauma <laughs> that Bruce has accumulated. She, so then why she, she described that as life? infinitely more traumatic than anything he's experienced. <laughs> what do you mean? You can't just keep ignoring that line because it is the line that, that is the problem. Like that line ruins it. Yeah, she can't get away with this. <laughs> she can't pretend like it's not there. Yes, he would say. Yes. She is literally in agreement with all of you saying her life is not as hard as Bruce's. You can say that, but uh... she said something else, love. So I'm going to take her word for it instead of yours. Like, God, this is some cope. I'm just saying, you know. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I'm in her head. I know what she's thinking. You're like, all righty. <laughs> That's the point. That's why she keeps saying she doesn't want to be a superhero. She has a life that she is used to, she is content with, and that is relatively so, non-traumatic so this is for probably, her. This is something that needs to be, because it seems to be like something that ends up confusing the discussion. When Bruce says, you're like a superhero now, he doesn't mean you got the cape and you got the costume and you go out at night and like, what he means is that you now have the capacity to help people in a way that is pretty much unparalleled by like a regular person. That's what he's saying. And that is undeniable and inescapable. That yeah. is just I, the case. Yeah. I um, think that's just and so, oh, yeah, writers, no writers not knowing how to, you know, use another word for superhero. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. Cause they should have used a different word. Yeah. Um, Cause it just seems to be like a source of con persistent confusion compared to everything that Bruce has been through as an Avenger, and even before he was an Avenger, as a Hulk. Why wouldn't you listen Oh, to why, somebody... did, why did we skip, why did yeah, we skip so... the part where she punched in the face? <laughs> she, yeah, she skipped on her, her running over <laughs> him and truck. punching him. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Been through all this before! This is literally every comment section. Because we're different people! Yeah, that doesn't fucking answer shit. And this is literally the answer. No! Why did you That's not how that part? works. Why, why'd you skip it? Why'd you My skip God, the part like, punch in the face? Here's some chemotherapy I mean... for your cancer, and it's like, I'm a different human, <laughs> why would you give me chemotherapy? <laughs> like, like it, it's like, it's, I, I think... By her metric, the civil rights movement should have never even happen. Because we're all just different people. <laughs> Why the fuck would we listen to each other? And like, it's like, that was pointless, right? <laughs> God, like, the one person you should listen to is probably Bruce fucking Banner, just saying. As if this is news to him, by the way, that they're different people. Like, oh yes, that's gonna change yeah. my mind on exactly how we should be trying to deal with it. All he wants to do is test her. He's even pulled parts of the booklet yeah. out that, he, that he's agreed with you are now superfluous because you don't need them. All you, this is what I mean. They were, they, were, they were steps away from just having it be normal where, yeah, she just doesn't nail everything. He does a couple of tests, puts her under loads of stress, and we just see that she's gradually getting better and better at being able to control it fully. And he even does surprise ones on her like the horn or whatever else, and she actually manages to maintain her gen form. And then he's like, holy shit. I, honestly, I think you might... I think you might be ready to, you know, take on just normal life or something like that. Yeah, classic little arc, but no, we we couldn't do that. She had to tell him that his fucking little system is crap. She's beat it all and needs to go away. This sums it up. They're different people with different life experiences, different life backstories, and different ways of tackling their role in the world. And I still maintain that she did listen to him. <laughs> the fact. 
<laughs> and then a punch to the face was very. You could tell her ears were open. <laughs> she I was gonna say, like, jaw. you gotta be several levels, layers of desperate to be like, she's listening into cut with punch to the face. <laughs> she's listening into cut with Jeep grabbing him into a down. wall. Uh, yeah. Also, I guess we haven't. Yeah, the fact that Bruce got run down with a car when he single handedly stopped like a Chitauri whale eel thing. Yeah. With, like, a punch. Man, what happened to you, buddy? Been defanged. He's been... The Hulk is no longer... Even though I think when they need to, he'll pull out a great feat of strength course, in a future course, yeah. thing. Yeah. The fact that she now knows what her triggers are, how to control them, and, like, is uh, able... Not necessarily. This is the thing. She didn't really test this stuff. She did it once for each of them, and then she was like, well, I'm good. It's like, no, 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 wait. Like, that, uh, just before she leaves in the Jeep, that was the first time she had shown... Uh, Bruce, that she can turn She-Hulk on and off at will. They didn't test it any further than that. No, uh, well, except, yeah, that's right, actually, yeah. Because he, even he says, like, this is brand new territory, and then she's like, oh well, bye mm -hmm. then. Well, they must have been there for, like, two days tops. Which does like, not rule out that uh, stress and anger would still set it off, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure that is well, something that sets it off still. Well, no, well, what what is it um we still don't know like if if the 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 absence of an alternate personality what if that's just like a weird fluke yeah it's not long enough it just isn't well so this is the thing that bruce should have said to her it's like i understand that you're very confident right now and you feel like you've nailed it but i watched you nearly kill three guys because they said you were pretty okay you do not have this under control and I could see her being very upset about that, but you need to prove that you managed to be able to survive a situation like that without killing people, alright? That's gonna be step one. Maybe even step zero. I don't know. Let's get that one out of the way. Uh, when she got ambushed in the alley in episode three, that didn't automatically trigger a transformation. She had to, like, consciously that's, do it. That's the level and, of like, control she has. Like, what? That if she gets grabbed from behind by some guy, that, like, that isn't startling enough to... Nope. Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Even to the... That just seems like an error. To well, me. do you remember, Frankie? She forgets she's She Hulk. She's like, oh no, and then she goes, oh wait, I can just. And then it's like, ha 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 ha. Funny. Able <laughs> <laughs> to turn into She Hulk at whim whenever she wants to is proof that she and Bruce succeeded. Hey, no, I'm literally it's, the only no, other person. We, we, what? No, not... what I mean, they no, didn't. You skipped over the rest of the fight. <laughs> just skipped over it. Yeah. <laughs> she she actually skipping over their entire battle. Yes, mm. sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, that understands what you're going through. I don't know. Call me anytime. Thank you. She is appreciative of his help. No, she's only doing this After once he's... After whooping his ass. Yeah. Once... After beating his ass. <laughs> once he says you're allowed to leave, that's when she's like, oh, thank you so much. This was all so great. Yeah, great, 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 great. Can I go now? It's the thing Here that we are. all do. When we're in a place we don't want to be in, the second there's a door open, we're like, oh, this was wonderful. I enjoyed being here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Thanks for everything. Uh, With a hug. They're fine. What oh my god. god. They what? just be, like, look, my, look, my husband beat the fuck out of me, but he hugged me afterwards. We're fine. We're fine. I... <laughs> Don't call the police up, please. Yeah, that's, that's some fine. fucking crazy right shit. They're fine. That's what happened. They hugged. Where is, where, where is the... <laughs> Yeah, th this is the part, because I've got the episode up. Uh, yeah, she even yeah, she even calls his uh, his mindfulness bullshit before punching him in the face, too. That's, uh... Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Boom. They're fine. Don't worry about it. They fucking crash through <laughs> this whole place, destroy his bar. Look, everybody, look how man. fine they are. Like, it's just so stupid. <laughs> yep. And oh, also, yeah. she skipped over the heart, but very true things as well. Yeah. They're fine. <laughs> Their relationship is fine. And I'm sorry that I said a bunch of harsh, but very true things. Oh, there you go. AKA, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, but your life has been traumatic as heck. That's not what he did. <laughs> <laughs> what? This, <laughs> this head cannon is, uh. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and I would like to go back to my less dramatic one as a lawyer. 
But why does she say she suffered infinitely more than him? It doesn't seem to line up. That that one line's really getting stuck in your analysis. It's just this little twig in all your gears that jams it. Thanks. And you're forgetting the rest of her line. The full context is... Basically, I was right and Bruce was wrong. And I never have to be a Hulk. AKA, again, she just doesn't want to be a superhero. She thinks she can live her life without acknowledging the fact that she now has Hulk abilities that are clearly going to change her life. Bruce yeah, and that's the only thing that she's going to be wrong on. Everything else she was correct. Yes, that, that's what she'll be wrong on. Exactly. And the saddest part of all of this really. is that she is wrong, quote unquote, but only once her friend compels her to save lives. Mm. Disappointing. Bruce told her yeah. it would impact her life. She was saying, you're wrong, it won't, I've got this under control. This is also situational irony, as in the next scene, we clearly see her uh, having to go. turn into She-Hulk and save the day. See? It's so bad. It's so small and so quick. But if friend's like, come on, do your thing, save the day. And then she's like, oh, uh, right now? Right uh, now? Do I have to? It's like, you know, that, that would be pertinent, I would ooh, say. Not cool. Especially for a lawyer who, like, understands a lot of this situation better than many average people, average well, citizens. Was, well, she seems to be presented as, like, a good conscience, you know, like, diligent lawyer who has a moral compass that is well-developed. Yeah. Um, and yet, look at how she hesitates to help. <laughs> yeah, like, she, she's good at playing a victim, not saving them. Mm -hmm, she can play then, one, she can't save them. Hey, it's perfect for her, though, because she has to sacrifice literally fucking nothing at this point to do this. Well, so. except she does lose her job, even though... Could you imagine, hey, I, the elected... Because DAs are elected in America, right? Like, oh, hey, I fired the woman who, like, saved an entire courtroom, like a whole jury. Yeah, I was going to say... I, I oh, would stand by the whole... Are going to be fantastic, buddy. Like, holy shit. Like she definitely sacrificed nothing other than maybe her outfit because that was never supposed to be a reasonable outcome from what she does. Like, losing the job was insane. But it was only because we that had to get her insane. into a different plot line, so... Well, because she it was declared a mistrial while she wasn't present at the case that she was involved in. Like, what the hell is that? It was declared she a mistrial. know. I thought that the idea was she that... This was declared a mistrial, and they blame the fact that she did a she hulky stuff as opposed well, to what, Titania what I'm is, um, bursting through. What I'm saying is that she, like, she w she had to be told. She wasn't even there. Right. She didn't know. Like, yeah. Huh. In front of everybody? Come on. Civic duty. In front Everything of that she was saying. Oh, in boy. front of everybody. Like, am I going to look ugly in front of these people? Am I going to look just, like, oh, like no. I don't want to look bad. Yeah. He's so likable. So likable. <laughs> That's it. So likable. It's when people are in imminent danger. Like right in front of your eyes. Uh... I don't want this to happen. I've got this under control. Yeah, it's happening. We know. We, the audience, know that it's going to happen. There's nine episodes. There's no way she could just, you know, hide the fact that she's the Hulk. But it's a comedy, they're putting in situational irony, and we know she's gonna grow as a character and have to accept that part of herself. Uh, it's also you, kind of funny you, got, you got lost on that last bit, grow as a character. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rely on that happening. Irony, and we know she's gonna grow as a character and have to accept that part of herself. It's also kind of funny because cocksure and unlikable right, but... is a <laughs> two words that I would maybe describe the beginning of a certain fan favorite character that I'm not going to name. You talking about Stark? If... That's what I assumed she was Tony talking about. Stark. Like I, again, I think I... people forget uh, just how fucking likable he is in the opening of Iron Man. They don't make him just an asshole. Yeah. That's not. That's like a myth at this point. It's um something that has felt like sorely missing. You know how like it's simple things like like in a in a story where there's like collateral damage where like civilians get hurt and you just get the reaction shot of the hero like upset about that. It's like one of those small things that just says something about a character that is feels like it's really absent a lot nowadays. Like the one or two seconds of direct acknowledgement of like what's happening. Um and, and like we definitely don't have that in this scene at all. Right? Like we don't we don't really care that like other people are in danger. It's kind of like just a thing that's that's in the way of our action scene of two people fighting each other, regardless of the people who are around. And wasn't there like in, in um because in Iron Man, wasn't like Tony like in part kind of in his own way trying to be like involved in the situation of helping the soldiers 
Or am I misremembering? Uh, what do you mean when you say involved? Like, um... Oh, damn, I can't remember, like... Was it... Well, I mean, I guess the simple fact that he was, like, upset when they were getting harmed. You know, that helps. Yeah. Like, he wasn't, you know... Like, it was It was clearly... He wasn't indifferent to what was happening around him. Yeah, like, know? what we're I supposed think... to believe is he was making those weapons and then passing them off to governments or who, highest bidders without really thinking about it much more than that. Yeah. You know, like, it was always going to be uh, against his values the second he saw what damage was being done with them, basically. Yeah, yeah uh, and that's, that's, and then, and then the arc is about, you know, I guess in part realizing he has to be a lot more proactive, shutting down the weapons manufacturing, um, creating the Iron Man suit, going, um, going over, uh, to help the civilians. Yeah, I mean, what, how they introduced Tony in that movie, I think is one of the best, like, introductory sort of sequences ever. Because there's just yeah. so much humanity in it. There's just so much humanity. As a movie watcher, you're just like taken aback by this sort of billionaire person who has this very human moment when he realizes what his actions exactly like conclude in. And it's just such a such a blast to watch that movie and see him go through all that. And, you know, just comparing that to this is just it's it's not even close. It's not even oh, yeah. in the same I mean, universe. Iron Man was practically a masterclass of like setting a character at this point, especially compared to Phase Four. Because I was just thinking about yeah, yeah. they give you the expositional intro of the he's getting his award or whatever, so they give you like a rundown of his history as though it would be written in a Wikipedia, and then you get like the the stuff with the Jericho missile, so like it, which just makes him look like a god. Everyone loves that image, and then of course uh, you have all these like the weapons that have been shipped there, but you've also got his own. He's, he's got like a martini case that's like frozen or, or icing them basically that he, can't, he doesn't go anywhere without like a source of alcohol and drinks and stuff um he has like banter with i think obadiah and uh Rhodey. and then um and then he sits in the in the truck with uh the the soldiers and he has banter with them and they're all trying to get photos with him and stuff because he's super famous and charismatic this is what i mean like people remembering him as he was an asshole it's like I don't. I don't think you remember the film very well. Like it, it's a little bit more complicated than he was an asshole. Yeah, there's yeah. dimensions of asshole, you know. Yeah, um... he is ultimately going to do the right thing when he realizes the damage that he was causing indirectly. And you get uh, him getting locked up with Yinsen is like a person who uh, can personify quite a bit a lot of the criticisms of Tony Stark. Like, uh... yeah, yeah helps as well and then of course it all crystallizes with Jensen dying and almost making like a contract mm -hmm. with Tony that ends with Endgame pretty much yeah <laughs> such a great character they did the same mm -hmm. thing with Erskine and um and Cap same yeah. thing except I think they fucked that up by the end of Cap's arc <laughs> like... uh well yeah when he abandoned his responsibility it's just gonna age well it's aged poorly already look at how many world ending threats that Cap could have helped with yep like, yeah, maybe he wouldn't have done much good with Wanda, but, like, he knew Wanda. He was friends with Wanda. Maybe he was the person who could have, uh, like, calmed her down. I'm sure he could have helped in some capacity. Well, I guess maybe he wouldn't have been able to help in Shang-Chi. Like, he wouldn't have been aware of any of that. But, hey, any future stuff stemming from that part of the world, he could help. He definitely could have helped in Captain America. Uh, not Captain America, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, definitely could have helped with that. But and no. to see people straight up calling it feminist propaganda is so funny to me. You propaganda. mean it's a show made saying, by... Does, I think she's doing it on purpose. <laughs> I, yeah, sure, but like, is that... Does any accent say propaganda? Is that like something... What, is that like a posh British way of saying propaganda? Don't think anyone in Britain surprises it like that, but hey, maybe I'm yeah, wrong. Doesn't, doesn't sound right. Oh, by women funny, funny. featuring some things that some women might find relatable. Also, can we break this? Man, what a what a great achievement! Some women might find it relatable. <laughs> like... <laughs> a very small, a very small entitled subset. Of <laughs> hey, we gotta make content for everybody, okay? Down first, there actually was character growth, considering the fact that she went from not being able to control her Hulk form, or when she turned, That's to being able to control. Growth. 
That's not, yeah, that's not character character growth at all. There was nothing in that that had anything to do with the character. It was, do you remember, I don't know if you guys remember, because I I watched it just before the stream. She, when she hulks out in the, um, in the, in the, in the machine with the buzzsaws, and he's like, oh, wow, you're you're Jen? I think she says, like, oh, first time I blacked out, but this time I'm I'm fine. Huh. And it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then, and then, and then we see her in the little scene before she leaves where she just goes... Up into Hulk, back down into Jen, done, done, done. What does this have to do with character? There was nothing. Mm. When she, it's just like Captain Marvel. It's just like America Chavez. They just get given an additional power after enough time has passed, and it's usually a pretty small amount of time. Turns at whim, thanks to Bruce's help and guidance. I would love for you to tell me what it was about Bruce's guidance that did it. Yeah, she just <laughs> she she got it. She nailed it like straight away. She dismisses the binder. She outgrows the binder. Okay? She outgrows the binder the, like the first time she even has to deal I'm with I'm not it. even convinced she read a word in that fucking thing. Oh, no. Probably not. And a training montage. And even if there wasn't growth, it's episode one of a nine episode... You can't have both these arguments. Pick one. <laughs> both of them are shit, but you think. can't have both. Yeah. <laughs> There's not supposed to be growth in episode one, but also there is growth, so shut up. (laughs) Series. I'm sure it would happen at some point. I also disagree with the fact that every dude in the show was written as a jerk or a simpleton. Um... (laughs) They are. Well... (laughs) Who even... Who are our characters for episode one would be Hulk uh, and annoying asshole lawyer man? Right, who... Yeah, I guess Pug, right? Later on. Well, we were only going from episode one, though, right? Oh, right, so she wouldn't have known who Pug was yet. Yeah, so, so we, we've yeah. just got those two. I'm trying to think if there's anybody and else. The guys that she nearly killed, right? The guys that she nearly... Oh, yeah, the the rapey guys. The evil, 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 <laughs> pretty calling her Well, uh, she, she, she's going she's gonna to get to that. She's going to detail. She's going to do, like, a, a, a bad guy and a good guy ratio. Oh, so that's no. coming. Okay, well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> let's see what she has to say. Bruce's entire existence disproves that. He was not... But Bruce was an idiot throughout a lot of this. He tried to kill her, um... And he's uh, yeah. out of character almost entirely. Um, yeah. So, Eddie and Stuart. Yeah, he's... I don't know what about... Like, what makes you think he's the one that we'd be like, ah, oh, yes, he's an admirable character in this. He does a great job. When she herself has admitted that he tried to kill her. Not written like that at all. Actually, I think he was written as a really emotionally intelligent, emotionally... In- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't. I don't know even emotionally, inte- emotionally intelligent, even after he... Kicked her, he knocked her ass off a cliff. (laughs) That's emotional (laughs) intelligence right there. Tried to kill her with buzz sores. What are you talking about? In tune guy who has done a lot of internal work and healing. (laughs) Oh my god. To find peace within him. His journey. (laughs) Oh shit. Yeah. I personally think this episode wrote him as brilliant. Both. Uh, What? what? (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. What? No, I got nothing for that. Brilliant. Okay. In terms of physical intelligence and emotional. Physical intelligence. Oh my. Physical. What does that mean? It. Like like muscle intelligence. (laughs) Like. (laughs) Like he knew to knock that bitch off a cliff because she was a bitch. I don't. Yeah. That's that was that was I guess that was physically intelligent. Yeah, it looks like chat a baffle too. That's not weird, right? I don't. I think that's the first time in my life I've ever heard someone say physical intelligence. I don't think I've ever heard that before. What does it mean to be physically intelligent? What does that mean? Like, I think she just wanted to exercise? provide the opposite of emotional intelligence. Must be physical intelligence. When I thought the uh, like the other emotional intelligence is just like the intelligence IQ. Like I thought that those were the two. Yeah, I'm. I'm lost on that one. I'll allow it, I guess. Intelligent. And I'm genuinely getting more and more convinced that some of the people complaining didn't even watch the episode. So she's conscious and in control of her Hulk form, oh, really? but she's ready to murder three guys for talking to her? Let's break that scene down. Oh, golly. All right, well, the claim <laughs> I would make is they were a little, just a, they, were, they were a little pushy and they said she was pretty. They absolutely did not earn being yelled at or punched, okay? But like... I'm sorry if you're if you're a lady hanging out in a bar late at night, uh, and and you're like fucking terrified by the fact that some guys will try and uh, chat you up in some way, shape, or form. 
I, I mean, I, they, they're probably going to feel confused. They're going to be like, oh, you, you, you probably came to the bar to not uh, interact with anybody, I guess. That's okay, fine, my mistake. She sees them coming out of the door. She steps down from the platform and turns her back to avoid them. That is not a woman looking for a fight or for violence. <laughs> what? what? I'm sorry, yes! what? Um, Wait, that's the big... They haven't approached her yet. Why the fuck? We're not talking about, like, we don't. We know she's not out looking for someone to kill. We know that, all right? We I was going to say, no, not even this the commenter was... was arguing that she wants to attack. The, that's her goal tonight or something. <laughs> the, the, the I'm coming out for blood tonight. Yeah, like, who the fuck was <laughs> arguing that she, oh, well. <laughs> she just wants to kill people? What? No, no. <laughs> I'm aware a necklace of severed dicks is with mother. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Predator. Huh? Huh? There we go. <laughs> She gives the most non-committal answer ever. What's up? How you doing? Fine, thank you. And looks away again. Very disengaged. What's your name? Congratulations. I love the creepy guy. <laughs> What's your yeah. name? <laughs> Dead eyes. This is a serial killer eyes. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> to this, actor, this is a bit of a non sequitur, but uh, you might like this more. Or apparently, <laughs> well, maybe you won't like this part. EA is working on an Iron Man game. Oh, well, we'll see. see. Um, I think there's also uh, Amy Henning's new studio is working on a Captain America and Black Panther like action adventure set in World War Two. Yeah, I saw the trailer for that. that. That's all we. That's all we know though. Like, um, yeah, and I guess no updates on like Spider Man Two or Wolverine either. Hmm. And I guess I, I guess Avengers, the Square Enix Avengers game, that's just uh, over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe they Sorry. learned lessons from that. Who knows? Well, they didn't because they sold Crystal <laughs> they Dynamics to Montreal to uh, a different company. Yeah, but hey, maybe that means Deus Ex will return once more, and wouldn't that be nice? And I guess it would be nice. Too. Very disengaged. What's your name? Congratulations to this actor because honestly, the stare he gives—that is scary. That is bone chilling. I Oh, uh, bone chilling. We used to. Uh, what's that in house meme right there? Bone chilling. <laughs> it goes back a long. That's like a hundred episodes ago. Um, but yeah, she had to be careful there. She almost just said that actor looks ugly. <laughs> like, you, gotta, you can't do that. Innately, <laughs> Innately skeletorish. Like, you can't say that. I think my. Uh, she gives the. I think my boyfriend's here. Which is, in case you didn't know, just about the number one signal for, please do not talk to me. <laughs> I don't want to be in this conversation right now, and I think you'll respect it. Is she trying to build up to how it was reasonable for her to try and kill them? Because I don't think she's <laughs> yes. going to get there. Like... <laughs> Another man more than you'll respect. You don't even know that they heard her say that. She says it like under her breath. I remember the scene. She's like, oh, oh I think my boyfriend's over there. You know, And the three of them are at different distances, you know? And they're three guys who are looking to... Hang out with a lady. So, you know, uh, I just I just don't think we've earned the murder yet. To me, clearly saying no and walking away. At this point, they follow her into the parking lot. Whoa. He took like three steps forward. Exactly. Like, it's right there in this front is, of the front fucking door. This is what we call <laughs> murderer like vibes. Like, <laughs> just... <laughs> we've all seen it before. Her breathing rate picks up. She is nervous. Her breathing rate picks up? What are you, what are you suggesting? <laughs> like, oh, they should have picked that up. They should, they should have known murder was on the way when they saw that. Nervous. To me, this does not even read as a woman who's angry. This reads that as a woman who is scared. That is definitely an angry scared. face. Um, That's an angry face. Well, look at that. I put it, I put it, I put well, it right... In chat, like, look, that's an angry face right there. We're about to get the. Uh, assuming and she then shows she it, she loses it. She. Yeah. Hey, chat. Oh. Do you think that's an angry or scared face? No, she was talking about her face beforehand. No, I know, but like this is though. this is reflective of her emotional state, is it not? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks pretty angry to me. I don't know. I'm just saying. Looks out and then immediately gets tackled to the ground by Bruce. Thank fuck, he saved their lives. So you can rest assured, the men got home safely. Oh, and she said that condescendingly, like we shouldn't care about them. But because they said you're pretty and walked toward her, that they deserve death. 
Yeah, I mean, it would be kind of awkward to start a superhero show where the female protagonist brutally murders and dismembers <laughs> several men. But, you know, it's whatever. Like, this attitude, though, like, oh, don't worry, I'm sure they're fine. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. A little scared, <laughs> but safe. You don't know that. What if they have um, in-depth trauma now? What if they'll never speak to a woman again because they're so terrified of what can happen? We don't, we don't care about them, though, right? Right, we, we don't. Okay, just clarify. Maybe in the future they'll reconsider following women down into dark parking lots. Dark parking dark lots? It's right in front of the bar, <laughs> asshole! <laughs> you know she wanted to say alley, but she couldn't. <laughs> She's like, I guess I'll say parking lot. Fuck. <laughs> dark parking lots, my ass. But everything in her body language and her speech was a woman trying to avoid a situation with them. And Bruce specifically... Yeah, and, and you're right. And it was their mistake to have said she's pretty. They shouldn't have done that. It's costing them their lives. I agree with this analysis. It's very, very good. Specifically says that fear is a trigger. To me, this scene doesn't even read necessarily like anger was the trigger. Like she got mad at them. Mm. To me, this 100% reads as like she was truly afraid. And so when she angrily yelled at them, that was her fear. <laughs> okay. And by the way, that just highlights how much she still had to control then, and sort out. Al Bruce. Also, she's like, also sh she's making the implication that because, like, afraid people don't kill people, like, yeah. a, a, like a scared person isn't gonna like have a, a knee jerk response, uh, uh, in violence like that. Which girl? yeah, again, is <laughs> reason enough to s fucking chill out about this and figure it out instead of just running off and being like, nah, I got full control. It's like, so what if someone cat calls you? Are you gonna kill them? And her Hulk form was like, hey, I'm here to protect you. That's what it reads like to me. Not that it matters which trigger it was, because the point still stands. <laughs> what? Not that it matters. <laughs> Wait, did you catch that? She, like, she's implying that, like, the Hulk version of her was purposely protecting her from the evil men. I thought they were the same. I thought there was no difference between them. But oh well, throw that out too trying to disengage and not have an interaction with them. She was not, as you seem to think, thinking, oh yeah, I have these new powers. I'm gonna murder men. Why is everyone you don't like British? <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's going God. on? Like, <laughs> I'm going to murder men. It's like the character isn't British, you aren't. How do you know this commenter is? Uh, like, why'd you assume that? It's so weird. No, that's literally not what happened. <laughs> Do not think you watched the episode. I did. If people are villainizing her for this scene, that is a mad stretch. Especially considering the fact that she didn't yet know the triggers for the Hulk form because she doesn't find that out till another scene later on in the episode. It wouldn't matter if she knew what the triggers were, they would still be applicable after knowing. And they don't even sort that out, really. They just sort of... She's like, nah, I got it. Don't worry about it. Gone. She got back. And she hadn't gone through the training montage yet, to the point where she could then learn that she could... The training mo training montage? Where she just dominates first try at everything? Is that really a training montage or more of a display montage where she's just awesome? <laughs> training montage. Control the Hulk. And like this, do you want her to break the fourth wall every time she's complaining and then just be like, Hey, not all men though. Well, so you're responding to the point that all of the main male characters that take up screen time are either dumb or, like, horrible. And now her counter is, well, do you want it to be that they highlight that not all men are horrible? It's like, okay, so are you agreeing with your initial point then? It's like, that's, that's all that was stated. Nobody's asking for a fourth wall break where she explains that not all every man are bad people or anything. It's just that it would be nice to have uh, male characters that aren't retarded, that's all. And then Wink... Actually, now that I've said that, that is really funny. Quick pause. When I filmed this, episode two hadn't aired yet, but now it has, and I'm still seeing comments saying the show depicts all men poorly. So let's break this character roster down real Ooh, fast. Here we On go. the left, oh we have God. we don't seem that great of guys. Gonna put the dudes from the bar here and her ex coworker, whose last name is apparently Bukowski. That's hilarious. On the right side, we're gonna put literally every other normal dude, including Bruce, her dad, no. her cousin Ched. Pug. No. 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 <laughs> so, so, we've been over Bruce. Uh, her dad, her family members are all sort of portrayed as kind of being like 
unaware of how everything works and uh, dismissive of her life. I think the dad is probably the one that comes the closest to seeming like he actually cares about her. Um, yeah. But I think I would give it for that. But the funny thing is, this, the, these comments... Um, like, if you could find... And then, yeah, the last guy is more of a, a doofy-like person as well. But um, you remember him from Scary Movie? The deep cut mm -hmm. reference. Doofy? Do you remember Doofy? Doofy. That is... That was Doofy? No, no, I'm saying he's like that. <laughs> like oh, a, shit! <laughs> I'm not saying he is Damn. Doofy. Doofy's probably pretty old by now. I mean, I mean, fruit basket guy. He's like creepy. Like the first, the first thing he says to him when he like he meets She Hulk and her friend is like, "Like, well, uh, here's the best bathroom for pooping." I thought that he was says weird. It yeah. Very creepily. He said it very creepily, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, uh, I don't fuck with you. <laughs> um, you you come off weird. The the chat guy, if that's his name, the the, the show is definitely making fun of him. Uh, mm -hmm. So like, what have we split here? Is it Morally good versus morally bad? Is that what we're doing? Because, um, well... Because the criticism was the, it... they're either immoral or they're stupid, right? And, and like, I'm pretty sure all six mm -hmm. of these guys still qualify for one of those two. Yeah, definitely Hulk and uh, the dude with the fucking hair. The dad is probably the one that comes out the, the, the best out of this six. Yeah. But going from just episode one, you got nothing. The two prison guards. The two guys who named prison guards. <laughs> no, what the, heck? the prison guards. Those are they're what? basically extras. Yeah, they're not oh even characters. <laughs> wow, we're we're, uh, we're digging. <laughs> we're just scraping the barrel. Her She Hulk on the news, and probably her two bosses. Even though one. No way. Wrong? No, no fucking way. Um... One of them fires her for saving lives, and the other one hires her just to use her for the way she looks, which is not something we consider like a great move. And then there's that line where he says, can you send Colin, uh, is it to Minnesota or Massachusetts? And he says, because he doesn't like the cold. Like, he, he, they literally they portray just... he's just an asshole. That's, that's, that's who, I was disappointed yeah. with that. Her boss is just a bad person. It's, he's a cartoon villain person. He's going to get his comeuppance by the end of the season, I'm sure of it. One fired her. Still seem decent. Hell, even Blonsky seems fine so far. To me, no. more guys than not have... Fucking hell, she's... Did, no! She's at the point like of a, saying Emil Blonsky a is a good man. <laughs> He's running... He's a good guy! <laughs> Holy shit. What the heck? Hey, Abomination's kind of a Harlan? cool guy. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's a good man. He, he, he shot a dog, but, like, he's fine. <laughs> My god. I'm impressed have been written like decent people. And judging just by the comments on my commentary video for episode one alone, I know there are guys who enjoyed this episode. They didn't feel called out by the fact that she- What What in the world? Did, who cares? The arguments are what we care about, right? Not how many men liked it. What does that have to do with anything? I just don't see prioritizing the entire thing. Prioritizing a male's opinion, like it's supposed to be the opinion. Oh, yeah. handmaiden over here. <laughs> she mentioned that cat callers, stalkers, mansplainers exist. Quite possibly because they. Okay, I'll I'll accept cat calling. That's fine. Mansplaining's not a thing. That's ex explaining, <laughs> and anyone can do it condescendingly. Yeah. Mansplaining's not a thing. That's you made that up. <laughs> and the thing is, I hate in the first episode she makes this big thing out of like. People at work, like, mansplain things to me. And then every time we see, almost every time we see at a workplace or something, she's either twerking or just, you know, just breaking rules and stuff. She's just... There There are so many moments where she's as is so incompetent. Yeah. They're just like, of course people are going to treat you terribly. I, can, I can't help but think of that scene, you know, in the Megan the Stallion scene and the guy who walks down and just stares. Of course he's gonna think that you're an unprofessional, incompetent person. Yeah, and if he was to try and explain why, that would be mad. I'll have that. Remember when one of the male characters refers to a woman as it? This? That was embarrassing. Because that's what yeah. sexism is. <laughs> what kind of dialogue is that? Embarrassing. That's a real thing that happens, Fring. You'd know if you had any male friends who are sexism. They always do that with women. I'm gonna go and hang out with its over there. All of those. 
Like, impossible for them to portray <laughs> very real subtle sexism. They have to have him be, like, an absolute caricature. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's one step away from being, like, um, a sexist in, like, a cartoon show, like Rick and Morty, or even Family Guy, where you just have them go, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go and, uh, you know, blah blah blah, because women well, are you remember, objects. You remember the, uh, you re it was a joke in Community, you remember when, uh, when Jeff was trying to get better at Meow Meow Beans, and he was hanging out with a bunch of jocks, he's like, girls are objects! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they all just <laughs> cheer, yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking parody version. Like, you're not supposed to do that for real. They know that they're not one. To say, like, Marvel is supposed to be for everyone, aka you don't think that men would watch this episode just because she mentions that there are some annoying Again, Who is she that... talking to? Nah, uh, one yeah, of the comments, you... I guess? I don't know. Like, what, like people like... who said that the show is not made for men. Is that, like, the... I mean, I... Yeah, like, I guess I'm not... Is that something that people have said, like that that um, like the show not being, Kate? I don't. I don't. Why are we? Why is this even like a topic of discussion? Why can't we just talk about I mean, the merits of the story as its own thing? A great fucking question, Frank. Yeah, like we regardless could. of who the target audience was. Well, as, yeah, as she pointed that... out, some men like it. So fuck you. So, the whole target <laughs> audience I wouldn't. I wouldn't describe. Like I wouldn't necessary. describe them as men, honestly. <laughs> not Maybe really. they're aliens. Maybe they really you. like the joke. Who knows? Maybe they really oh, yeah. like the jokes in the show. See, when a car writes out, like, I love the comedy of the show, you just be like, come on. Come on now. <laughs> can, you, can you relay to me one joke in the same way that one could relay to many one? Uh, jokes? The scene where they scene. twerked? That was really good joke. Well, I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, all right. The scene where the, the drunk lady called him Wongers. Oh, gosh, that was so good. The fifth time right, she did that, I was laughing so hard. Right. Yeah. That exist. Kind of a weird take, in my opinion. Also, are you aware that we just spent the last 10 years watching a trio of super powered white men lead? Oh. oh, yeah, just a trio, just like three dudes, basically. <laughs> You what you saw Avengers yesterday, bitch. And they Black Widow debuted for this entire Black, franchise. Black Widow debuted before Thor and Captain America in the MCU. Now to be fair, she debuted as like a real character after them, but you know. I don't even know what to begin with. The 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 ones you're talking like those three white males would have had a, a chance in hell at even supporting the ones that are coming now, if not for the fact that they had to work really hard to earn those fucking roles. Well, like, I mean, yeah, because at this point now, like, the, the MCU coasts by on name recognition. Like, all of the stuff they make now seems to make more money than a lot of the films in Phase 1 did. So, like, even Captain America, who by then was, like, pretty well-known, I would say. Not as well-known as, like, Spider-Man or Batman, but relatively well-known. That was still kind of an uphill battle for those characters. Superhero films kind of had to earn a, a legitimacy um, that they weren't afforded because of the uh. genre that they were. A shot in Endgame of the three of them walking towards Thanos. It's like, why aren't why isn't Hulk there? It's like because we recognize on a meta level that those are the three that built the MCU. The three. Yeah. And every other uh, hero, every other hero is a result of them. Like they wouldn't in the MCU, they wouldn't have had the Ant Man, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange. They all like spawned off of the the pillars that those guys erected because they were. What um? <sighs> I mean. Again, what what is the point? Does she think that there's like a general? I, I maybe there is like a resistance to female superheroes, which would be bizarre. Like it's just like a base thing. Can you even say um, that? But though, I mean, there have been like female. You know, well, Woman. exactly. Like the problem is um that you look at the MCU. It's like there were female heroes like persistently. It did take a while before there was like a solo female-led superhero film, to be sure. But yeah, Wonder Woman came out in 2017, so that was five years ago. And that's ignoring, I guess, if you want to count it, Batwoman and, uh, not Batwoman, uh, Catwoman and, uh, and, uh, Elektra, <laughs> if you want to count those. And I'm just going to call it, um, I think it was a misread, I think it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> if they had done a Black Widow movie in Phase 2, I think it would have made the money back. Especially uh, if you put I think Hawkeye so in too. It. If you put Hawkeye in so. it and it's a, a like, prequel well, present I mean, film. Exactly, like... The people who are responsible for the lack of female superheroes in the MCU are the people you're currently praising for the female exactly. characters now in the MCU. Yep. They, they did had it. no confidence in putting a woman as the main. And yeah, then like, Wonder Woman came out and they got fucking humiliated. Marvel were like, what the fuck? That works? And then yeah. DC were like, lol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, um... Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... And, and now, what what is it? It's like, it's... 
kind of like these heroes now get inserted in into like a really lame phase of the MCU and are not being leveraged. Like their their full potential is not being seized. But yeah, just the, this disdain toward the the three white males. It's about time we have something. It's just like you're fine. The phase four has filled you up with with all kinds of other things. Okay, you'll be you'll be fine. <laughs> let's let's all hate the fact that we've had four enough like, white men. It's it's like all right, and she was a green woman. She was the first green woman. She paved the way. <laughs> she wa she walked so that She Hulk could run. Gamora she, did. Except she she had Gamora character flaws Gamora so that She Hulk didn't have to. That's right. She died so that She Hulk could live, and exactly. then she was brought back anyway. And hopefully, James Gunn doesn't mess it up. The MCU and the rest of us just had to see ourselves represented through them, anyways. But why? Uh, it's yeah, almost just, like I, I, you should be able to see yourself in characters I'm not, that I'm are well written when you're really dead. I'm not blind. I mean, I, well, <laughs> when they make this point about like all the white people in Lord of the Rings or whatever, and I'm, I'm just like, oh yeah, man, I, I associate it so hard with Gandalf because I too am a fucking thousand year old magic casting dude. Like, what? Are you, what? If it's just because he's white, does, like that's not how that works. It's the characters. God damn it. We relate to the people because we're all people. We're all people. I mean, uh, yeah, it's Gandalf the White, not Gandalf the Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Lord of the Rings is problematic. He became more powerful when he was white. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't be out of this. Terrible. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This this is just the ongoing discussion that for some reason keeps getting brought up that like, you know, this poor lady here, she couldn't relate to the, the trio of white men leading the MCU, so finally we have women. It's like, what are you talking about? Funny thing is, I really liked Black Widow up until her movie. I liked Black Widow. I mean, I still like her all the way up until Endgame. I like Gamora. I like Nebula. I like Scarlet Witch up what until her okay? movie. Yeah, I like Scarlet Witch for a while there. She was, she was on a good trajectory. And what I'm saying, like... Black Widow gets a huge focus, and so does Wanda in in their respective things, be a TV show, or movie, and both of those things are like the worst outing for both of them. It's really, it is so sad to think that Black Widow they like nailed the landing, and then post hoc they kicked out like <laughs> her legs, they kicked her in the back of the knee, <laughs> crumpled her to her to her knees, and yeah, one pistol shot back of the head done. Mm. I think we've covered the first point of this comment, but it's actually the third paragraph I want to talk about okay. because in the most respectful way possible. I Wait, let's have a look at what it says. He states that women exist in a state of fear and rage. That's actually more true of men. Women tend to access their emotions more readily than men. They cry, they share their feelings, they shriek with glee. Men are taught from childhood to suppress their emotions, to be stoic. To be emotional is unmanly. Acceptable male emotions are violence and rage as a display of strength. One of the most common difficulties men have in relationships is their partners is that their partners complain that men don't express their feelings and thoughts. Men are fearful that such honest expression will negate their image they've been taught to protect, being a pillar of strength. Women have a healthier emotional life because they access their feelings and have experiences experience integrating them into their daily existence in a more balanced way. Women may feel rage and fear, but they don't have a monopoly on it. Holy shit. That's a pretty that interesting really comment. Deep. I I like it. Mm -hmm. I agree with it. She's gonna I've hate it. I've thought about this. <laughs> So much, and I completely agree with it. Actually, um, as a woman, I do. Well, uh, it, it's a it's a really interesting commentary on our society because it's men are seen as weaker if they're more emotional, yeah, or and more it's vulnerable. Very terrible. Yes, yeah, the whole. I, I it's completely the... agree with this point. Well, I'm curious how she's going to react to it. <laughs> let's let's see point of this comment, but it's actually the third paragraph I want to talk about, because in the most respectful way possible, I think you're missing her point. And she didn't say women have a monopoly on rage and fear. She said those are the baseline of any woman's existence. That's... Uh, yeah, by implying that it's not the baseline of existence for a man. Meaning like, women have a monopoly on it. Yeah, like, th there's no getting around that. If you specify one group of people have X traits, you were implying that the other group doesn't have them. Because then you would say those are the baseline of a human being existing. That's what you would say. There's no getting around that. That's what she said. 
So I mean, she's. I think there's a couple of things wrong with this video, but one of the big things is that one line getting in her way at every turn. Like it just keeps. It, well, it's I was gonna say one well, line is, is a couple of them. I guess it's two, right? Yeah, it's that one and the infinitely more than you do, which yeah. that was the big mistake. Just like you, it, this is this is kind of what Eve all about. We we want we want to accept that there are references in there that you cannot omit. Um. If it means like you, you want to have your perception on the analysis, even if it's um, in line with what the creator intended. Unfortunately, there are references that get in the way, and it's like, well, then that analysis is incomplete, isn't it? Can't just can't just say like, oh well, it's just ignore that bit. Especially when she's acknowledged that that's the main thing everyone's focusing on. It's like, yeah. What good is your story if you have to ignore like significant portions of your uh, of of the subject in order to defend it? Yeah. Maybe what she said didn't resonate with you, but it resonated with me, and I'm sure it resonated with a bunch of other people as well. So, like, if you don't want to hear any personal answers... That wasn't a counter-argument. <laughs> also, I, th I think this is one yeah. of the problems that's encumbering the discussion around She-Hulk, is it's like we're having two parallel discussions. There's one discussion about the, the story itself, like, who is saying this to who in the story, in the context of the narrative, and then there's, like, the meta-conversation, like, what are these statements to be uh, read as taken out of the story as like statements about the world um you can't really conflate these two discussions you kind of have to have one or the other um i'm personally more interested in just talking about it in the context of the show yeah true anecdotes you know skip ahead but i personally have a lot of stories to back up what jen was talking about and i'm positive that you have a lot of stories mm -hmm. to back up what she's talking about in regards to the baseline existence of women being fear and helplessness and yeah. The implication being that men less so. Like, so what you're what it sounds like you're building up to is that you have stories where you've been made to feel helpless or fearful, which is like, man, I think everybody uh, once you reach a certain age has plenty of stories of that themselves. Like, like everybody yeah. does. And of course, in the MCU, Bruce certainly has those. The helplessness of this alternate persona coming out at provocation and two, losing two years of his life. Yeah, two years where he was a helpless prisoner in his own body uh, yeah. you're not going to be able to yeah, out, outdo you know that that's pretty scary and you might be quite angry about that when you like when, yeah if we're gonna fact, bruce was pretty uh, upset about it when hulk was trying to not hulk when thor was trying to make him hulk again yeah and and well, if you really want to try and rank traumas like i don't think any normal human experience is going to come it's, it's going to be difficult when i say normal i mean you know the stuff she was saying happens to her in everyday scenarios i'm not talking about like some crazy person kidnaps you and does all kinds of horrible things. I just mean, two years being trapped inside your own body. I doubt Jennifer's gone through anything quite like that. That's a, uh, that's got to be a deeply terrifying experience. Yeah. Especially as we saw, right? Bruce was very concerned that if he transformed again, that would be the end of him. That would be the end of his identity as Bruce. Yeah. And he did it anyway to save, uh, to save lives, because that's what heroes do. Also, dude, when... If if we were to include the context of the comics where he was abused as a kid, like yeah, I good mean, God, Hulk is the manifestation of that. Um, like it's a, a direct consequence of that trauma. Yeah, let's uh, we'll give the benefit of the doubt that they're not. That's not his history of this show, and that she's not aware of it. Because holy fuck, mm. there are other people who can share their stories in the comments too, because it's not some like crazy thing that she pulled out of nowhere. Well, she was but, but she made it a competition that was yeah. like that's one of the parts that really screwed it up because i'm sure everybody would agree it's like yeah mutual difficult experiences are worth sharing it's not a competition about who's suffered more than somebody else but she made it that she said that she deals with it infinitely more than he does like that she's better at it she didn't have to say that like it's, it's almost, she didn't have to say that it's indicative of of her the fact that all of this was about dealing with hulk stuff and then she took that really personally like, how dare you? I deal with plenty of stresses in my daily female he life. Wasn't, he wasn't even... There was absolutely no desire on Bruce's part to try and undermine her life experiences at all. No, of course. He was, he was just trying to, like, exclusively explain talking about Hulk. Makes sense to you. Yeah, exactly. Her experiences. And she's written by women who are also sharing their experiences. Uh-oh. Let's not talk about the writers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> That's not gonna help you out. And they're all valid experiences to talk about. What does that even... What is an invalid experience to talk about? I mean, wouldn't we... Yeah, I'm... 
kind of confusing. But I, I guess something that's worth touching on is that, like, part of your job as a writer is, like, if there's a theme that's really important to you or a subject you want to broach, like, your talent, your craft, is about finding a way to take something that's personal to you and convey it in a way that is, like, comprehensible uh, to a lot of people, logical in and of itself, like, within the story that you're telling, and to some extent, it, it, uh, like, in a sense, concealed, like, that whatever themes that you're conveying are um, couched within the context of the story that you're creating rather than being perceived as, like, an essay or some statement that you're making. Like, that's what cra that's what it is. It's through characters. Why are we ignoring that part of the craft? Like, how well did they actually convey what they wanted to uh, convey thematically? Yeah. That reminds me of that. They dropped like, Cat Calling and that was it. Well, they sought to express it and they expressed it and that's good enough. Um, it's like TLJ, yeah. isn't it? It's like, it doesn't matter. He they did it and it's he like yeah but they didn't do it well exactly well, and it's like no, no they did do it well you just didn't understand well. it and it's like fucking half the world didn't understand it you might have a problem ignore there dialogue. as long as you ignore significant lines of dialogue yeah. then it's okay it works the fact that you feel compelled to ignore that line of dialogue says something about kind of i guess what you realize for sure which is that yeah you can screw it up you can screw up conveying a message that's important to you personally yeah even if you don't want to hear them. Just on this channel, I've been called a stupid bitch. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why? <laughs> Did, like, what do you want us to do? Like, we'll run out our laundry lists. Believe me, mine's longer than yours. And it's incessant. I've gotten death threats for saying I didn't like how the earlier Iron Man films wrote women. At one point, some... Um... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did you not like Pepper Potts? I mean, she was... You know? <laughs> like, what's wrong with her? Someone told me that they wanted to rip my throat out if I. <sighs> Dude, I, um, I can't remember. What, I think I showed it on EFAB. There was a tweet that went out about me saying, um, "Is there any way we can just get rid of Mola?" It was just that. <laughs> I was just like, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> just like get rid of the channel, or one of them? One of them said like disappear. Like I wouldn't want to kill him. Just, just make him stop. And, uh, yeah, this is the thing, all the time, every day, uh, doesn't take much. A lot of people can feel justified in saying this stuff if they think you're having a very big detrimental effect on the world. That's the internet, like, plus anonymity. As I said, people just, like, write stuff without ever acknowledging that, you know, you might see it. They, they might address it to you. I've had comments when they, it, they were, like, addressed to me. But when they realized that I actually saw it and reacted to it, they deleted them or something. You know, they always mm. sort of go back. Uh, they never actually mean it, those type of stuff, even if it's a death threat or whatever. It's just people being mean on the internet, and there is a huge difference. Yeah, and, and, and if, if... It's, it's shitty. It's absolutely shitty yeah, behavior. Yeah, I want to make sure that no that's doubt. said. No, yeah, uh, it's course. universal is the, is the thing. It happens it happens to a lot of people, men and women alike. Yes. I mean, you know, they just use your gender uh as an ex like as a well, it's whatever they can latch onto, right? Like tool. whatever. Right. If there's no is gender issue, them. then they will find something else to criticize about you. It's, it has to do with them being, you know, terrible people and not with them being misogynistic or whatever. So yeah, I uh, wouldn't want to reduce the effects that Reading Nose has on this lady yeah, right here. Of it's just that uh, it's it's par for the course for the internet. It's a thing that happens, and uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what this has to do with like She Hulk. Not really, no. And and if someone if she was to argue to me, well, I I, I resonated with She Hulk because she, that's what I feel she's referencing with the you know everyday sort of stuff. And I'd just be like, yeah, everyone goes through that. And unfortunately, she implied women are the ones that have to deal with it. Uh, which is really, well, really narrow. Well, and she said to Bruce, Bruce, uh, Bruce Banner, one of the, probably like one of the most punished characters in fiction, um, that, that like, that hers was worse. Um, she didn't need to make it a competition or a contest or a comparison. And why would she do that to somebody that she cares about as well? I didn't get rid of my Me. vocal fry. The last time I made a video like this, I literally ended up on one of those like really weird red pill live stream channels where they like play your video to a live stream audience and like pause 
<laughs> Listen, EVAP is red, but we're not red pill. At least, uh, 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 maybe maybe we are. Who knows? We read people on me- red pill on media, but uh, yeah, that's that's amusing though. <laughs> Switch it over to the blue one or the green one. Um, oh yeah, green yeah. for uh, for She Hulk. Which one's that's Minis? But it's Mini, and She Hulk isn't Mini. She's bigger. Yeah, so we could we could be so green. So it doesn't but, work yeah, really. We can't really. You would just need to switch the whole Breaking color the palette to make it green. So EFAP regular is green and EFAP mini is red. It would be confusing for a while. It would be difficult to readjust to, but I think we can make that work. She doesn't actually think that we're a red pill podcast, does she? Because that would be hilarious. Well, th- we haven't covered her before, right? This is no, but... Uh... Oh, right. Yeah, like afterward. I wouldn't... I, I don't know. I just said... Uh... What... What podcast is she referring to then? What what is there is there a media covering video podcast that's red pill that went over her She Hulk video? I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm she's talking idea. about you, Lauren. <laughs> You're the red pill podcast. <laughs> Every few seconds to sort of like deconstruct and talk about how terrible your point is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a terrible person though. In case you thought that that was gonna be like a additional thing. All chill. Everyone's made a bad video in their time, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Sort of. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> like, well, wow, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's up for debate, really. Mm. All of Except... them are perfect, if we're being honest with myself. <laughs> to sort of, like, deconstruct and talk about how terrible your point is, except you haven't actually made your point yet because they paused in the middle of your sentence. Well, we went through the whole video. Well, we will go through the whole video, so you don't need to worry about that. But I feel like we've caught a lot of what your points are, understood them. I will say, I I think one of, uh, something I find particularly frustrating in like conversations is let me finish. So just a, a little fun tip. If you disagree with like a premise that somebody lays out that is foundational to the argument they're presenting, you should be able to stop that to clarify it and make sure that you're on common ground. And if the response is, let me finish, it's like, well, if you disagree with the premise fundamentally, whatever point you're saying, I can't accept. We have to, like, yeah, we're agree wasting on time the premise. Because I'm just going to... So, for instance, if we say, as long as we all agree that the Earth is made out of jelly, uh, and it's like, then we can... It's like, whoa, 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 wait, let me finish! If we can all agree done yet. that the world is made out of jelly, <laughs> then we can all agree that, in a sense, the world is made out of jam in, in American vernacular. So, it's like... And well, actually, that might be a bad example, because if we do all agree that the Earth is made of jelly, <laughs> then maybe that is a... Yeah, you wouldn't uh-oh. say if then, because, uh, yeah. Um, well, no, you wouldn't say if we agree. You would say the world is made out of jelly, therefore. Um, and, and to offer yeah. a, a slight olive branch, uh, the other side of that is, if you said um, the world is made out of jelly, and, and then Fring goes, hey, no, 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 it's not, and they go, let me finish, and he'd be like, okay, carry on, they go and I was known as a liar, then it would make sense to conclude that I was lying about that being my perspective. You know, like, it's something that recontextualizes it a little bit, and you go, oh, okay. That's happened on EFAP mm-hmm. before, and if it does happen in this video at any point, then we'll be like, oh, my bad. Got the wrong uh, idea on what your point was there. I retract, and you can carry on. No harm, no foul. We've done it before. Mm-hmm. It's totally okay. The idea that this is a thing that can happen, where we misunderstand a point because we pause halfway through it, does not mean the entire format is worthless. I don't know why well, you would you conclude can that. Well, you can understand a point when you listen to it in full. That's always possible. Yeah, and you can you can do all kinds of things, and uh, I don't know. I just not the format, it's the execution. And hey, you know what? You're welcome to come on and talk about your points, point of view, if you'd like to. I have a feeling you're not going to want to, and that's okay too. <laughs> All the while, their live stream comments are showing up on screen where their audience members are saying things like, why would anyone listen to this ugly buck tooth bitch? Oh my god, chat, <laughs> chat, I'm looking at it, don't you dare, don't you dare, I will ban you. <laughs> oh she broke goodness. the fourth wall. Chat getting, uh... Like She-Hulk, art imitates life, or I guess life imitates art in this case. <laughs> and I'd like... To drop her into a third world country and have her get shot up. Well, what the f- what? The people Jesus. saying She's this- fucking bullshitting about some of this. <laughs> you gotta wonder halfway through thinking about these sorts of things, you're like, do you think maybe they say this stuff because they want you to, you know, solo about and be yeah. like, this person's bothering me, and then they'll be like, I bothered her, I did it, I said a thing to bother her. <laughs> Give them exactly what they want. 
What are you supposed to do with that information? Ignore it. It's not, useless. Not good ignore this it, song. Absolutely ignore it, yeah. So, hi. I was going to say, I, I do it all the time. All of us do. Hi, if you're watching from one of those channels, Hello. Um, you do not actually have my permission to use this content in your video. So that's a meme, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. <laughs> that's hopefully a meme. That's such a moment of just like, well, uh... <laughs> I'm afraid you put awkward. this on a website known as YouTube, in which there's public availability <laughs> and visibility for your perspective. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, we're already too late on that front. I guess she's gonna sue us. It's okay. She's gonna... I call up She-Hulk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now we're fucked. <laughs> Literally... Uh oh, Mole go to jail now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Had someone come within two inches of my face to say, hey, I think you're pretty. Can you take your mask down so I can see your smile? And when I take a step back as a response, because he's in my personal bubble and it is the middle of cold. Yeah, that's a weird fucking dude. I don't know what else to come to conclude that about that. That is very Weird back, fucking yeah. dude. He tells me that I'm a bitch. I should be grateful that someone thinks I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> dude if if i were there and i saw that happen i'd be like what the fuck man like <laughs> calm, calm down, dude. Yeah. i can think of experiences like that that i've had but you know it was just it's such a like a weird thing and you just you just go and laugh about it most of the i mean unless it's it's actually dangerous situation yeah, if, which you know happens if but you're dealing with a psycho the then, time, yeah, it just sucks most of the time, those people are just, you know, they want attention, and if you don't give them that attention, they're gonna, you know, go for it. They're gonna insult you because they're insulted themselves, and, you know, you just go back and laugh about it most of the time, if you're not actually dealing with a psycho. You know, one of them smile hunters that are just... You should just around. know how to handle <laughs> those situations, otherwise, you know... Yeah, I mean, but, but, uh, I'm assuming, are we tying this back into liking She-Hulk? I think like I... about how the, the statement by Jen spoke to her because of its relatability in terms of dealing, like, these shitty interactions with people. And I would just be like, yeah, I wish you were in a good show that made the point better. Well, and again, it's like, she, again, she said, she said to Bruce that she's better at controlling her emotions because she does it infinitely more than him. Like, there's no getting around that statement. She said it to the worst possible character, like, that she could have said it to, and she didn't need to. And that's, like, a lot of where the discussion, well, that's where I think the discussion should be focused in the context of the story. As long as we get into all this, it's, it's just, um, yeah. And then I still don't say anything, so he calls me a bitch again and leaves. And I just have to pretend I'm not shaking. I was literally just waiting outside a public bathroom for my sister to come out. We were on a walk. Like, you should be able to exist and go on walks with- I mean, this is the thing. There are shitty people out there. Uh, yep. yeah. Absolutely. Without, mm -hmm. like, the threat of someone coming up to you, calling you a bitch, because you didn't- Dude, we should be able to live in a world where nobody kills each other. That would be nice, too. Like, I- But we not. People are free to do a lot of really weird and annoying and then downright horrifying things. Give them the proper attention that they wanted from you? Just a little odd. Freshman year of high school, my best friend got off a stop later than she was assigned and walked a longer distance home just so she didn't have to walk past a motel where grown adult men would sit on plastic chairs and yell comments about her body. Freshman year of high school. So she was 14, 15 years old. Eventually she got in trouble for getting off at the wrong stop. <laughs> and she just never took the bus again. In college, one of my roommates- Anyway, she Hulk. Yeah, I mean, terrible people exist. Sexist people exist. All those people exist. But what does this have to do with she Hulk? <laughs> It, it's just like sympathy grabbing. Like, oh, you gotta like my show. I was sexually harassed. Like, I mean, because the thing, no. You'd be like, so if we had a guy explain several horrible things that's happened to him, that he felt that She Hulk like insults his experiences. Does that then counterbalance? Like, what what are we doing? This isn't about the show anymore. This is just about how you well, feel. I think, I think she would say that he would have incorrectly read... Because, I mean, that's what she said about that comment, right? And it's like, right, so what we're doing right now is kind of, like, ancillary. Well, we're just, like, focusing on the, on the show and, and, like, the characters and what they said to each other. 
I think you're right that she would say there's an incorrect reading, but the fact is, like, who out of the two sides of this argument are having to omit lines? Yeah, the, 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 the omission of the lines is, um... Like, I think that's just a recognition that, like, you know that there was a mistake in the show, that that line was a mistake, and that it, it, it fundamentally changes what she said away from what you're describing it as into something different and less defensible. And that's, that's like, I, I guess I'm, I don't know why you would go to such, like, extents to defend it. Like, you could still, I mean, hell, you could still feel compelled to, like, defend, I guess, the subject matter and the point that they were probably trying to make. Like, if, if it's a, you know, like, whatever point you agree or disagree with, without having to go to, like, these lengths to defend it. Yeah. Rip. It Ripped. doesn't have to be, like, treated as flawless. Even if you like it, it doesn't have to be treated as flawless. TV? off of her wall while they were in the middle of an argument. Why? Who knows? Make a point? Was just that angry? I, who knows? Sorry, what was that story? Argument. Know. Why? Who knows? Sorry. <laughs> she just never took the bus again. In college, one of my roommate's boyfriends literally ripped the TV off of her wall while they were in the middle of an argument. Why? Who knows? Huh? Yeah, so the reason I wanted to check that is uh, I had a guy friend whose girlfriend went nuts on him, took his TV. Uh, it wasn't on the wall. It was just on a stand on a cabinet thing, and she threw it at him. He uh, he dodged it, though. Jesus. Yeah. Um, um, I only I heard wish... it. I didn't see it. I wish anything similar to these types of experiences were depicted in the show itself for her to defend it to this level. Mm. But the only thing it came close to, like, oh... Those guys called her pretty, and she almost killed them. A, uh, we've talked about it so many times. Like, why didn't you have one of them grab her wrist and pull her? Yeah. Um, it's it's I enough. I mean, it could have been like it could have been something else as well. Like, she could have been startled by something, just like something that was around. I don't know. Like, I mean, she just got out of a car crash, right? So, like, it wouldn't be unbelievable. That, like, even a loud dog barking at her that she didn't see, like, could have freaked her out a bit, startled her. Or yeah, like you you amp up the um just how like um dangerous these these people are these guys. You know, before she turned into She Hulk, I was just expecting something you know them to say something more or something else to happen for her to you know lash out. Yeah. But no, they just took a two step, and that's it. Which um unfortunately is just like the dawn where this man. There's like, how about and a smile, which is like, okay, it's annoying um, for a lot of women. And then he, she says, how about a handshake instead? I fucking hate that scene so much, because you can tell the guy is like, <laughs> oh, handshake? Yeah, sure. And then and she then, like electrocutes yeah, like him. Like assault and then stealing his motorcycle. And a lot of people defended it. They're like, yep, that's the way it should be. And it's like, no, again, you need to have her say like, I'm not interested. And then he grabs her by the wrist and pulls her back and says, oh, come on, yes, you are. Which is enough to then have her slap him, slash punch him even. But yeah. nope, you just have them go, you're pretty. Which is like, fucking hell. Well, it's 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 kind of like a, a problem with a lot of uh, Disney stuff is that they don't want people to get too uncomfortable with anything. Um, they can never, like, present anything as too raw or, like, too um distressing because it still needs to be like, um, content that is easily consumed and enjoyed, and, like, pushing anything too far would make people uncomfortable, so they won't do that. And so then you have a scene like that, um, at the beginning of this episode, or, uh, or, like, that Captain Marvel bit. Make a point? Was just that angry? I, who knows? At one point, during a completely different fight, she knocked on my door and asked me to come into the kitchen to mediate their argument. I was like, do you want me to bring my pepper spray out? She's like, no, I just want you to stand in front of the knives so he doesn't grab them while we're talking. Jesus Christ. It's got lots um, of serious problems to deal with there. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring the pepper spray in my pocket, though, because Natasha Romanoff did not raise an idiot. Okay. These are all Ugh, just random cringe. examples off the top of my head. <laughs> and, like, the stuff that I just detailed isn't even the worst of it. There's <laughs> so many people going through so much worse. But that's why I think people it's People are denying that this is, like, a thing that happens, though, in real life. Yeah, this isn't going she could have said all these stories in favor of literally any content ever and bound it to it in some way, shape, or form with some character going through something. This doesn't change that She-Hulk is shit. I'm sorry. 
gender be like rage and fear are the baseline of any woman existing if not the baseline of existence they're at least emotions right, but she didn't hey, say that, that exactly you keep try. you're like her lawyer you, you keep trying to make the <laughs> lines sound better that's not what they are if they were that they would be better but they're not that they are there imagine she did say like i go through fear and um and sort of helpless feelings a lot in life don't you and then hulk would be like well, yes, but, you know, I'm trying to create a sense here that's a little bit unusual, not like a baseline sort of thing. But even that may trigger it, so we've got to be careful. Like, we well, spawn an actual... Just appeal to, you know, like, appeal to... There's a lot of things that are outside of your control, so you need to focus on that which is in your control. And what needs to be in your control is transforming. Like, you need to be in control, 100%. Because the external world is not going to, like, respond to accommodate you. Like, you... It's unfair as it is like it's you you have to be able to respond to like situations you need to be prepared to help people you need to like that's what it could have been and you could even that um, could have been interesting as a, as a thing to explore you could even have these elements thrown in with a level of self-awareness like in the middle of exploring what makes you angry he's casually sort of says like you really should smile more and she like gets angry at him and he goes that's that's see this is what i'm talking about people are gonna say that and you need to actually be able to deal with it beyond getting big and green and fucking killing them yep and uh they there you uh, go it's addressed and brought up as a thing well especially when she expressed that she doesn't want to like deal with this persona at all it's like so yeah. now the focus of our training is you need to have it under control at all times if that's what you want to do that's the thing you, you really could have had like the hulk and jen training thing being like i mean if we were being particularly bold that could have been a whole season's worth of television but um you know even a couple episodes could have been worthwhile yeah. alongside everything else you could be having a good time with your friends and you're still like oh my god is that guy following me down the street like you're still aware that there could be danger these little moments they all build up to how women carry themselves in public they build up to the constant situational awareness you have to have they build up to know, you know there's an irony here um i was uh i've walked down uh places that are super dark narrow and places i haven't even been before in towns i'm in because of a party whatever and i get legit like Fuck, I hope I don't get mugged or something. This is, like, super dangerous territory. But, like, I guess, like, the way that this is being described is, like, yes, but you wouldn't understand it, uh, the experience as a woman or whatever. You'd be like, yeah, but don't you think that that then accidentally, I'd imagine, uh, is, like, expunging all of the other sex's experiences that relate to these sorts of situations? Say, like, don't you legitimize other people's experiences? Exactly. Like, And so all we seem to be agreeing on, from sometimes her perspective and definitely ours, the show shouldn't have made it about one side. It should have done both. But it didn't. That was its fuck up. Knowing every single item that you have in your bag at any moment's notice. Because who knows, you might need to use that Hydro Flask in your bag in self-defense. Builds up to that mental calculation you're making, you know? Every time you're walking, you're like, where's the next building? Calculating the distance between, like, where you are and the next building. And, like, would you be able to make that distance if someone came to try to grab you from the back? Would you make it? Getting in your car? Immediately locking the door. Changing out of the skirt, even though it's a really cute outfit, because you know your class isn't going to end until 8pm and at that point you're walking home in the dark. You don't want to be walking home in a skirt in the dark. Girls have literally been killed uh, for saying no to wanting to go out with someone. And you think that doesn't no, affect the way that we interact in public? We constantly... I don't, I don't know where you... You just, you just ran Again, off. Again, who are you talking to? Yeah, I don't know who you're talking to anymore. <laughs> yeah know that we could be in danger no matter what we say so we're constantly editing what we say which is frustrating she's gonna have a fucking mind blown if she comes across a woman who just doesn't agree with her on this mm -hmm. she's gonna be like what do you mean don't you have the exact same experience as me M miss bring up the reference of i'm a different person therefore i have different experience it's like oh <laughs> it's just, all right and it's a valid uh, experience to Jeez, talk about, even if video. parts of the audience don't want to hear it. Which is why I've been- not about the audience not wanting to hear, it's, it's the audience is critical of what they heard. Getting slightly frustrated at comments like these. I'd honestly much rather endure catcalling and mansplaining than experience any of the pain and suffering that Hulk has had to endure. Agreed. Yeah. The show is so dumb, once they disrespect Hulk and Bruce, her talking about women's issues is worse than what Bruce has gone through. Yes, okay, explain to me why these comments are wrong. 
especially comments like this one. So you say you want Bruce to shush her because she hasn't tried to kill herself. Well, first of all, <laughs> that is so out of character for Bruce to do, it's not even funny. Yeah, he's already out of fucking character. I was about to say, this ain't even fucking Bruce, so whatever, but... Uh, yeah, all of, obviously, she needs to remember that all of these are fueled by the fact that Jen was the one that compared them. If she hadn't done that, I doubt there would be anywhere near as many comments like this. Original wound. 1983. All right. Yeah. Also, this was out of character too. Uh, this is part of why I fucking hate Iron Man Three, by the way. Black. Yeah, um, yeah, Shane while, Black is her yeah. While while Iron Man is trying to explain his trauma, Bruce doesn't give a fuck and falls asleep. Funny, uh, funny. Even though, yeah, isn't that funny? I'll complain about this in a video one day, guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> At fourteen years old, I still have a nanny. That was weird. I mean, this man didn't even interrupt Natasha while she was talking. They sterilize you. To tell her, hey. I mean, you can't. Why the fuck would he interrupt? A conversation like that. Jesus Christ. He, she was explaining how she's barren. Like, why the hell would he. What? <laughs> what the f. How. Why would you compare yep. these scenarios? <laughs> like. I, I mean, yeah, you got hollowed out like a jack, jack o' lantern, but, like, I gotta get my clothes on. Like, you know. You talk too much, Nat, Nat, you talk too much. Christ, I can't believe she's bringing this up as like, see, Bruce doesn't interrupt people when they say things. Like, what the f <laughs> Hey, just so you know, you're not a monster. You still think you're the only monster on the team? I, I don't even know what, what to say. What are, you, what are you saying with this? The, what? The, the, it's in character for Bruce to not interrupt people. And the fact that he created the space for Jen, so she has a safe space to express her frustrations, knowing that he will listen to her, that says a lot about Bruce, and it also says yeah, a lot. Yeah, but is what 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 are we? What is the point that you're trying to make? That like Bruce would allow her to speak her mind? Like yeah, yeah, he would. So... He would just have things to say himself. Like though, if he disagrees with her, so the train of thought here goes. The commenter says, "I wish Bruce had." pointed out how wrong she is about everything she said and how he's gone through a lot more than here. Right. Her point is, we've seen that Bruce doesn't fucking stand up for himself or talk over someone when they're sharing their experiences and he's created this environment for her to express her feelings, which doesn't actually counter the commenter's initial thought, which is that he should have countered this. He's listening to her, of course, he'll let her speak, but he shouldn't be allowing her to get away with this shit, because it just shows a blatant misunderstanding of the experiences that are involved with controlling being the Hulk. In fact, you might even go as far as saying the Hulk's like, oh, you think I was talking about catcalling and stuff? Like, dealing with that? I, I'm talking about, like, you know, parts of your life that are the most stressful, and that those will almost guaranteed trigger you into becoming something that could hurt people. Sure, they could be launched by smaller uh, moments in your life that are causing stress and stuff, but... You know, like, anything, but he, he's sort of just, like, as she even put it, there's an even expression on his face at one point where he's kind of agreeing with her. Completely nonsense, out of character. He wouldn't feel that way, and he shouldn't feel that way, it doesn't even make sense. ...about their relationship, clearly. As people in chat are pointing out, you know, maybe a bee would land on her hand, She'd be able to control herself. <laughs> open the bottle, I don't know. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, imagine if there was a spider, like, in the courtroom or something, you know, just, like, a little old, I don't know what crazy, like, spiders there are in America, and then that freaked That's... her out, she transformed. We can't even joke about that. Spider. True. Like, so, this is what, yeah. Yeah. uh, remember she said, like, the, the experience she was having with those guys is clearly fear that triggered it, and it's like, well, if you believe that, then she needs to do a lot of training. We need to see well, if, we if, saw... if a spider can trigger it. Well, I mean, as we saw, right, a, a, a mega horn or like an air horn blown into her ear will trigger a transformation. Meanwhile, in Avengers, Bruce got zapped with like a little electrical prod and it didn't do anything. Yeah. So like, there's 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 uh, specters, or maybe not. Like, there's degrees of control. And uh, so in two days, it's not long enough to figure them out. No. <laughs> and look, this could just be me, but there's something that feels really off about comments like these. Honestly, she just seems ignorant, especially that scene where she's venting on how hard her life is. I just wanted Hulk to push his finger. Oh. Well, I kind of, yeah, I agree with the whole she seems ignorant of his uh, experiences, but that doesn't make sense. She can't be? Well, she seems to be, she seems, the way that she talks to him, it's, it's as though she's unaware of his experiences, but like their family... 
Maybe she doesn't know all well, the details, uh, but she would know more than the average person could know about Hulk's uh, Bruce's if you look, life. Let's look at our references in total, right? All of the bigger traumatic events he's been through are actually pretty public record. Like, they're not even stuff you need yeah, to like, know by uh, being his family member. Yeah, yeah, yeah then you've got... She's a lawyer, so she's probably pretty familiar with these events having happened and what they meant for law as well. Family like, member. I don't see why... Yeah. You know, why wouldn't she be fully aware of the um, the accords and how they relate to her cousin's superhero duties, like, when she's a lawyer? That and would feel really weird if she didn't. Maybe, maybe she does know that he attempted suicide. Maybe that's something that uh, she's yeah. aware of. And that it was, it was a direct consequence of him being Hulk that prompted him to do that. And then... Like, she, she even talked about the fact that she knows about all the trauma that he's gone through. I was going to say, so that's the final must... reference, is that she admits to knowing about all of it. So... Why yeah. we have no reason to assume that she wouldn't know about any of this, which just makes her an asshole. Just completely see, the, zero regard for for Bruce's perspective. That's and actually his experience. Indicative of not only the character of this commenter, but the character of pretty much everyone analyzing this. We all would first go with ignorant because it's better than asshole. It's better than assuming that she's a bad person. Yeah. Yeah. They just feel very similar to sentiments that I think end up causing more harm than good. To yeah, what about the harm done to Bruce? <laughs> you know, him defending himself might harm Jen, so we can't do that. God, so self-centered. See people specifically say they want her to stop talking. It's not about not sharing your pain. She's welcome to do so. She compared herself to him. She made his pain seem small. That's really fucking retarded. Because she hasn't tried to commit suicide? That just reads as off to me. To me, the mentality in some of these- Again, I have to remind her who did the comparing first. Yeah. It wasn't Bruce. These comments really perpetuates this culture where people don't talk about their experiences. Don't you know, she's turned this into everyone wants her to not talk about her trauma. <laughs> That's not what everyone's saying. <laughs> get help for things that are affecting their daily life and don't even make efforts to try to find a community that will support them all because they're constantly comparing their struggles to what everyone else around them is going through but, but the thing is a jen did that jen did that not bruce yep. there is always going to be someone who has it worse than you and b different people carry different weight differently what a great point you should tell jen that <laughs> <laughs> Something that might be really easy for you to deal with. You're saying there was always someone worse off than you, just imagining the most worst off person <laughs> in the world categorically. Like, what does that even look like? That's what I mean. It's fucking unreal. I can't believe she's giving all this advice as if to this commenter, as opposed to the commenter doing this in response to what Jen said. It's, we just have to happily ignore it, I guess. Well, it, it's, it's the problem of you can't have the conversation about the show in a vacuum. Or at least you're trying not to. You have to tie it into the broader discussion, socio-politically and, and everything culturally. And it just makes it a lot harder to engage with the, like, the material itself. And the material is that Jen, somebody who knows a lot about Bruce and what he's gone through, when he was trying to help her get control of abilities that could be dangerous to the people she cares about and people that she doesn't even know, that she came back at him with that response of like comparing their level of trauma and their ability to deal with it. Could be incredibly hard to carry for someone else. And even if it's a mundane issue, you still deserve a space to talk about it. Nobody said anything other than this. I don't even know who you talked uh, to once again. Who has <laughs> ever said that she was not given space or like she shouldn't have been given space? I just don't understand. <laughs> Really do not have to carry your burdens alone. To me, this mentality truly just keeps people from getting the help. But I mean, Jen have. wanted to essentially because she left. She didn't want to hang out with Bruce anymore. She didn't want to work through it anymore. She used that as a means of leaving. Oh, true, so, like, yeah. that's not directly comparable to this scene. It feels like you're talking about a totally different scene, like a scene that doesn't exist in the show might need just because i mean the whole the whole thing with with jen is that she is essentially denying that this is something she has to deal with now when the whole point that bruce is going for is trying to get her to be open and aware of it and deal with it with him and yet the argument and she is 
Jed is being open and honest, and the commenters are trying to stop her, those foul creatures. <laughs> what does it mean to try and stop a fictional character from, like, expressing it's, their genuine perspective? Yeah, but it's, like, it's even weirder than that, I think, because, like, the commenters aren't talking about that. They're talking about responding to what she said, not stopping her from saying it. Well, I guess except for that guy who said that Bruce should have stopped her. Well, so they're still responding to what she would have started up with, right? Like, uh, in the sense of, like, cutting her off when she's made a statement of some kind that's either offensive or just fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is totally... like, does he have to sit there and just, uh, and just take it all in and, and not express any disagreement? If we flipped them, and it was a guy who was starting to imply that he experiences more trouble than this woman could ever understand, I think she the creator of this video would be in favor of that woman standing up for herself and interrupting him expressing his experiences by her saying about her experiences. You know, like it goes both ways. I don't I don't think there's a problem in them both expressing themselves how they feel about all these different events. Just because he's interrupted does not mean she'll never be able to say it ever again. The worst does not mean you don't also deserve a space to talk about what you're going through and your experiences. And I think this is a fair point, right? Obviously, not everyone wants to watch Western women, but this is my thought, right? If you know you don't like to watch Western women, why- Don't say that they should have expected this from She-Hulk. There's no fucking way. <laughs> like, the, this is just, oh, you should have known. I watch a show about a woman living in the West talking about her life experiences. You don't have to watch everything Marvel puts out. I'm probably never going to watch- I can say the same thing to you. I've seen your fucking channel. <laughs> I mean, yeah. She like watches a... everything. She watches and likes everything they put out. Hey, it's made for her, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Even the trilogy of white men. That was kind of made for it. <laughs> You can relate to them because of the white part, not the men part, but hey. Okay, so what if I'm just a Hulk fan and I just watched it for Hulk, right? That was your mistake. I can do that, right? You should have known better. <laughs> should have asked a friend. <laughs> they should have got it with the hazmat suit first and then told you whether or not it was dangerous. The Punisher. If you know there is a pretty big chance you're not going to like it, just don't... A pretty big... Wait, so... I should just avoid stuff that I think I won't like. As opposed to hoping... Like, I don't even... Dude, I'd be avoiding fucking most things. <laughs> like, that's why would... Well, I, mean, I mean, it would be an example. Were you expecting to enjoy House of the Dragon? I thought you were going to say were Stranger Things. Uh, both of those oh, would be well, things I, I wouldn't have watched if I went by her logic. I, I mean, surely we would still want to be in a world where we encourage people to give stuff a fair shake. Absolutely. Just check it out anyway. Mm -hmm. Dude, I gave like, She-Hulk a fair shake. Like, oh, you, you probably wouldn't like it, so don't watch it. It's like, oh, okay. I'm not going to give it a shot, but okay. Someone said if Mola did that, he wouldn't have this channel. I didn't expect to dislike TLJ. I thought I was going to love it. <laughs> uh, I thought. Yeah, so that, I. I think I've maintained <laughs> so the trailer for TLJ. is still pretty banger, but uh, the film... Yeah. Mm. Oh, I still get chills, though. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty cool Yo. back when... <laughs> also, I will be right Acting back. You guys really entertain yourselves. Oh, oh boy, why are you making me do this? I'm playing Splatoon. I can't concentrate <laughs> and play Splatoon at the same time. It's impossible. Maybe it's not. We'll give it a try. <laughs> oh shit. Well, <laughs> I'm struggling. Uh oh. Oh no, I'm too focused. I'm in a. I'm in help a him game out. Give him a, give him a subject. Control. I'm just gonna go to P. I'll be I, right well, back. I guess I can talk about the game, but I don't know how many people give a shit about Splatoon. Splatoon. Isn't that that game where kids cream each other? No. <laughs> you, 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 you're playing a game. I I saw like you just you just playing a game where you you shoot a bunch of paint onto. Like uh, into like areas, and then you that gives you control over the map. And if you cover the most of the map with that, then you win. And then there's other game modes like tower control, where you just gotta stay on top of like the tower and make sure that it gets to the um to the other side of the map. And then Rainmaker, where you got like a gun that's super powerful, and you gotta like just use it to try and get to the other side of the map. Lots of uh trying to just get to the other side of the map actually in the game. Oh. But otherwise, yeah, I don't have much commentary. 
It only just came out, so I'm still figuring out what I think about it overall. <laughs> Have either of you watched House of the Dragon, or no? I am... Um... Uh, I'm... Yeah, do it. Wait, uh, I've never been. I've never been thing. really. I've never been really into uh, Game, of Game of Thrones. Yeah, so I didn't yeah. really see. So I didn't really like. I I felt like I needed to watch that first before I watched the prequel show. Well, so I've only watched like six or seven episodes of uh, Game of Thrones. So I went into House of the Dragon fairly unfamiliar with. Uh, it's set well before the show. Uh, mm -hmm. like the main show. So I'm not even sure how much it matters, like how much you're aware of the show, actually. Um, yeah, I, I figured that that might be... I guess uh, what's interesting right now is that it's kind of impossible to, like, talk about House of the Dragon without comparing it to Rings of Power because, yeah, they're both high fantasy, uh, like, big-budget television yeah. shows based on, uh, like, an intellectual property that everybody really cares about. And what's really, I guess, awkward to compare with Rings of Power to House of the Dragon is in three episodes, House of the Dragon has set up several major players. It's got like, it's it's stacking up essentially uh, like a really um, perilous situation where all of these characters with their different objectives and priorities are going to clash. And meanwhile, like by the end of episode three of Rings of Power feels like we barely achieved anything at all. Like, I don't even know if there was really any passion or, like, an idea behind that story. I, um... Like, I, I'm legitimately, like... It, it seems to me, like, they had access to Lord of the Rings. They wanted a, a Lord of the Rings show for their, like, network and for their streaming service. Yeah. But... As for a story that they wanted to tell uh, in that universe... It seems like there wasn't that much inspiration. It feels that way. Like they didn't really know what they wanted to do with it. Except but they had it and they spent a lot of money on it and they needed to make that investment for the sake of the streaming service. I'm wondering seems why didn't indicative. they yeah. uh, didn't capitalize off of like Peter Jackson and didn't just so, make it a prequel or something. I don't know. From what I understand, uh, they don't have access to a lot of Lord of the Rings. Oh. They only have access to certain parts of it that precludes them from a lot of uh, a lot of material in Lord of the Rings. Because I think it's mm. set like a thousand years before the uh, like the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Um, and yeah. so there's like a lot of things that they have to kind of like maneuver around. Though, as well, I think uh, Peter Jackson said that he was like willing to be involved and they just never got back to him. Wow. Oh, nice. that, that's, that's your mistake. Wow. Well, it's, um, I guess they want to make their own thing, which is, uh, oh, apparently it's a lot earlier than that. Oh, um, God. yeah, I guess, uh, I, I wonder if it's a show that will be able to persist purely on name recognition, because I've said it a few times. I just, I don't know what it is that, like, people would latch onto in that show that they would really enjoy. I find it to be so dull. Yes. Like, it's, um... It's a really empty show. It doesn't have many characters that are well developed. I kind of liked um I kind of liked the uh the guy that got introduced in episode 3 in that uh on the island. The what was his I don't remember his name. He um, was like the first character where I'm like, "Oh, mm -hmm. Elendil, you know, kind of uh, Elendil, I think is. Yeah. Um Yeah, but otherwise it's like, yeah. yeah. It will be interesting to see, but I mean, we've from what we've heard, it's doing just fine. Amazon said it's got great numbers. I'm sure everyone loves it. Uh, I mean, they are in direct competition, though, because House of the Dragon shot up like several million viewers, right? Episode mm -hmm. three got like six million more viewers than uh, two and one. I'm so interested to see that. I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard it's good, but it's not as good. So I'm just wondering... How it compares to. I suppose three Thrones. episodes is not going to be able to be as good as yeah. like the best of Game but of Thrones, like, but maybe in the future. Yeah. Well, well who knows, right? There's potential there. Whereas, uh, I, yeah, I guess I don't see the trajectory of uh, Rings of Power. I don't know. I don't know where it's going. Alrighty then. We've got another six minutes of this video. Let's see what climactic finish there is. Ruin your day by watching it. 
that is such an easy solution. And in the meantime, you've got to just accept that you're not always going to be the target audience for every piece of media that comes out. For um, would it be fair then to say that if, uh, you know when they say like, uh, Wrinkle in Time wasn't made for you, like, um, Brie Larson said, uh, are we to conclude that like, Captain America Winter Soldier, for example, is made for white men, and thus we shouldn't, like, when, when anyone who doesn't fit that description says they're not enjoying it for that reason, we should tell them to go look at other stuff? Is, is that, is that where we're at? Because I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think she would say that. I think the problem is that, like, I, I shouldn't, I, I don't think you should blame the audience, but like, it's the writer's job to make sure that their demographic and the ones that they are aiming for coincide. And I don't think, I think this series really misses that, you know, it misses who MCU fans actually are and what they actually watch these types of shows for, right? They want action, they want, you know, significant, like, you know, character arcs and stuff and this type of humor and i don't know like twitter written narrative is just it's not something that they will go for and i don't think you should blame the audience for it for example i don't actually feel like i'm the target audience for everything in this episode i personally really did not like the Steve Rogers sex life joke. Do you see that ass? Like, that ass did not deserve to die virgin. <laughs> that is literally bordering, not even bordering, that, that is what people tell people who are on the asexual or aromantic spectrum. Oh my god, I thought she was gonna go the direction of saying it was objectifying him. Uh, I thought so too. Yeah, no, I, did, I didn't expect you that. You can't objectify a, a hetero white man. <laughs> you can't do that. Only if you're aromantic or whatever the fuck she just said. I just, I, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of people approve of that joke, um, but she does not. I thought it was also interesting that she said a lot of the stuff in this episode was not, I'm not the target audience of, and then goes on to make what she feels to be a, a righteous sort of like indignation argument, which I, I think she just categorizes this stuff different than I would. So for example, if, if I watch TLJ and say Luke's out of character, and then she says, yeah, well, it's just not made for you, person who enjoys people who are in character. Like, I'd just be like, what? Like, I don't, that's, um, in the same vein, like, she doesn't appreciate humor in, in, a, in a place to try and make light of, like, something that she considers to be unethical or something. Like, oh, I guess it's not made for me. It's like, well, no, that just sounds like a, a criticism that you can have for your own, you know, ethical systems and stuff. That's just normal. We all do this with everything. We don't just, like, anytime something comes up and we're critical of it, we don't conclude, ah, it wasn't made for me. That's weird. If you don't have this certain relationship, yeah, you're a waste. Also, just the fact that that, that is what Foggy decided was so important. Calling up the Russo brothers and saying, hey, hey, my favorite guys. Um, Natasha, one of the only women Avengers we've had for years. How about we put a little bouquet of flowers together, send them down the river next to Tony's during the funeral. Two seconds, little scene, just something, just something, you know, sweet. But see, taking issue with this, wouldn't mean it's not made for you. It would, it's a general, I think it's fair to be critical of the fact that Natasha wasn't given the same send off that Tony was considering they made essentially the same sacrifice. Um, I think that is a bit of a problem in Endgame. It's meta reasons why Tony's given the big send off. It's almost like uh, this is the guy that allowed everyone else to get where they are in the MCU. Um, but in universe, he died so that they could save the world. So did she, almost in exactly the same way, like for a, Know, related to the stones, so you can make that criticism. It doesn't mean that it's not you're not the target audience. Like that's such a weird conclusion to come to after making that criticism. You know, that is a bit strange. Tony was their leader. I don't think that Cap or well anybody in the Avengers would think we can't give Natasha a similar level of appreciation and funeral because she wasn't as high a rank as him. Like that, they would never do that. For, for me, because I think that would be important. No, <laughs> that, that is not important. Making sure the audience knows Steve Rogers did not die a virgin. He knew how to fall. You're British again. Why is everybody <laughs> British? <laughs> I've never it's quirky. Just like British. It's the quirk. <laughs> Okie dokie. Do. Yeah, that's, that's important. It really shows you where the priorities lie. What timeline am I- 
oh my god, I could talk your head off all day about how that's true. Their priorities are all fucked all over the MCU at this point. Oh yeah. This is what I mean. It's like sometimes I wonder. It's like you could you can join our dark side. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's comfier here. It's more consistent. <laughs> you should you should check it out. My living in. That's the question. So yeah, even if it's like a Feige approved joke. To me, Steve Rogers worth more than if he's had sex or not. I'm also getting slightly more put off by Marvel's insistence that sex is the end-all be-all of relationships. This feeling has been there for a while. It really picked up some steam when Eternals came out and I read that- Oh yeah, I've heard about this. The Some line from the creator, right, where she was like, we need to show that their relationship means more than thinking by having them have sex. Like. You know, there are a lot of ways of doing that. You don't have to have it. Okay, fine. Interview that um, <laughs> Chloe gave about why she wanted to include the sex scene, where she specifically said that she wanted to, like, humanize that aspect of the relationship, as if the emotional and intellectual part of the relationship isn't the human part to me. That's the human part to me, man. Somehow it just got worse because I went to find a screenshot of Feige approving the joke, and I found this article which states that Jen is obsessed with Captain America's virginity because it's the human side well, yeah, of him. Well, yeah, because there's the uh, there's the part with the phone screensaver. Yeah, she's got his ass mm -hmm. on her phone. The, 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 you're, you're breaking the conditioning. Jen is a pretty shitty person. She's very superficial. She's self-centered. She's an asshole. Well, yeah, but in episode four, remember how when she was doing the little fourth wall break while she had to leave her date to, like, she keeps talking about how attractive he is? It's not important, but it is. It's like, and then she just keeps talking about how attractive he is. Like, it's like, what are, what are we doing? This is hilarious. Like, thinking of Captain Naked is what she, like, considers the human, real, and thing to relate to about him. Like, that's Jed. The, the thing like... that she would relate to is <laughs> that, as opposed to him being a hero who made a lot of sacrifices for the world... They wrote that. That's what the way they want it. Okay, that's who she is. Okay, it's about his cock. That's, uh, you guys wrote this. We didn't. The real side. This man literally jumped on a grenade in boot camp as a sacrifice to protect. That's a weird one to pick out of. That's not even public knowledge. Like, <laughs> I would probably go with all of the other things that he did at the end of all of his movies as the big things that, you know, but okay, fair enough. Everyone else, yeah, and we are running with the fact that his sex life is his human side of him. Anyways, back to the video while I erase this article from my brain. And I recognize that my opinions are not shared by everyone in the Marvel fandom. No, but you make some good points. <laughs> and I don't then see these points and go, ah, well, you're not the target audience. That's a really weird thing to say. That is why the internet's new favorite end credit scene has probably become one of my least favorites. But I didn't like it. I thought it was shit. But whatever. Just because I don't like that scene doesn't mean I'm gonna start sending hate comments to everyone who liked it. I'm gonna say, okay, they thought it was funny. It must have been for them, not for me. That's fine. It's that who easy. Likes that scene? Um, I've seen some people like it. <laughs> I don't know why. Why? I don't know. Bringy, did you like oh. it? Can you explain it? What, the post credit scene of episode one? Yeah. Can't say I did. No. Oh. Anyone this chat? wasn't very funny. It's funny because virgins. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm gonna go around throwing personal insults right and left. Welcome to the internet. You don't have to explain why it happens. It just does. Like, you can. You can go on for lengths of time for all the motivations, all the people say all the mean things, but I mean, wouldn't waste your time. Just because someone has a different brain than me and likes different things and thinks differently, that would be ridiculous. What if they said to her, I was hoping to be convinced by your video that I was, like, narrow-minded on it, and then I got offended by several things you said about men. Or something. What would she? How would she deal with that? Do you think she would just be like, "Yeah, but you misunderstood what I said then." I thought it was just a difference of opinion, though. Well, that's the thing, right? She's saying like, "We all got different brains. Just let let be what is." And you just be like, "Yeah, but what if someone's coming to you because they want to get their mind changed?" Isn't that what the point of this video is to to persuade? Like, you know, we disagree yeah, figure, fundamentally, right? I guess, with her. But I'm still willing to hear out her arguments. They weren't very good, but. Is it bad that I was willing to hear them? Should I have avoided them? Because, man, it just seems like we're fostering polarization at that point.
this. Like at some stage of the game, you've got to just respect that people relate to and like different pieces of media differently. True, but when you give us references that are wrong, we want to then ask you why you've given us incorrect references and what does it mean to you when you realize that there's other ones. Like, we, it's like an obvious thing. And we could be wrong, you could be wrong, little discussion happens, maybe someone on either end learns, grows, who knows. Fun times can be ahead, instead of assuming it always goes bad. And this is kind of an aside, but if you have a very distinctive last name, here's just some friendly advice. Maybe don't oh, use that account to comment things like you don't think women can drive, because someone could very easily <laughs> Google search your name. Uh, uh, so what? this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Okay. Yes. This is so um, random. So that's uh, that's on that's your choice, and that's a weird thing to do. And find out that you comment things like fap, fap, fap. fap. <laughs> Why are you looking like, into this person? <laughs> bored interest. That is so. <laughs> what is like, happening? What? Why would you do that? Like tracking someone down. Or over, nice like, a rap. Joke. Oh God. <laughs> on forum <laughs> posts. Like the person who participates in digital cat calling thinks and- D uh, A digi digital oh. cat calling? I didn't even catch that oh. the first time. <laughs> digital cat calling now. And when she when she exposed his uh, his sexist post, notice how she clutched her hands like a fucking villain. <laughs> <laughs> she was so getting off of the fact that she was cyber stalking this motherfucker. You thought you could say mean things to me, yeah? Well, I googled your name, and now I've found that you said fap, fap, fap. <laughs> what the hell are we doing? And then she's like, it would be God. bad enough if it was digitally catcalled. This is a joke. An episode <sighs> where a woman calls out catcallers is woke garbage. Also, of course, like, I'm sure, I'm sure you would be able to drive perfectly if a spaceship landed in front of you. Like, I'm positive. You would handle it so well. We all know it. We all know it. Can you imagine All she though, had like... to do was stop. Yeah. She, I mean, <laughs> this, everyone made this joke. Fast. They they didn't do a good job of giving her good reason to do what she did. Uh, so everyone made fun of it for it. I'm sorry. Like if people watched the Happy Hogan ogling Natasha scene in Iron Man 2 and were just like, ugh. This is why men can't drive, can't take their eyes off a woman. That was supposed to look, be stupid. We're supposed to be like, uh, uh, we're supposed to be like, happy, watch the fucking road. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, oh, happy's happy. horny, that's the joke. He's, he's, his horniness is getting in the way of him being able to drive. That is, that is what people conclude from this scene, yes. Watch the road. I got it, I got it. No, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what everybody's conclusion was, but okay. Again, it would be ridiculous. Also, it's just so funny to me because it's like, do these people think that Feige did not approve this episode? He made a point. What does that have to do with okay, anything? Okay, first he approves. First he approves the bad shit you don't like. Now he approves this shit. But like, it's fine. He approved this, but not the other shit that you didn't like. I thought I she was like trying it. to make the argument that like. <laughs> Do you not think, like, he's approved this, so you should like it, or something, because he's approved the other stuff in the MCU, and it's, she's already gone over how he can approve shit that she doesn't like and does like, so... Why would that- I'm confused. What's Point going on? to say that he approved the Virgin Steve joke, he definitely approved the rest of this episode, too. Like, he definitely okay. approved Jen talking about her experiences to Bruce. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I, I don't care what Kevin approved. What do you mean? So, I, was actually I don't know. Thinking about about it the other day, like what is Kevin Feige thinking about right now? Because, I mean, he has been nurturing this since two thousand seven, right? Like he has been through all of this, and now we get to She Hulk. So, what is going on inside his head? Like, what is going on inside his head when he sees that twerking scene, or like, you know, going from the beginning from Iron Man to here? Does he not care, or does he just simply not actually watch any of these? I have no clue. I don't know what his involvement is. Yeah, this is why saying that he approved it or didn't approve it means nothing to me. I don't, that tells me nothing about how good yeah. the thing will be. What some of y'all want to do with that information, but hopefully it's not continue to send hate comments to people. Why would that change anything about anything? I don't even <laughs> just like, okay, fine. Kevin Feige approved of it. And here's the thing, right? 
I am sure there are a lot of people out there who are commenting this who are like decently upset that Bruce's backstory has not been explored and that Bruce's trauma hasn't been given much weight. And I think that's fair, but it just seems like a lot of the reactions and the comments that I've been seeing have been a lot more about people jumping on the bandwagon and getting incredibly excited to show women that they truly do not <laughs> want to hear them talk so, yeah, about their experience. So yeah, you're right, like, but like, fuck you. So yeah, she said like, as much as there may be a chance people are upset that his trauma is being reduced, I really think it's more so about shutting women up. Like that's what men want, or that's what the the audience. It's just like uh, you, al you 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 almost had it, but like, I don't think you wanted to have it. You want to, you prefer that it just be about that. When I think we all know for a fact that like, I'm pretty sure uh, Black Widow in Winter Soldier, it's like has like 100% approval. He's not like considered an annoying part of it that ever wants her to shut up and go away. Maybe it's about execution, rather than the presence of a woman speaking. Because uh, I, th I think our civilization has gotten over that at this point. They're okay with women talking now. I know I am. <laughs> you guys uh, you guys are all guys, right? Otherwise, have I been bricked? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Test yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they really want to tell you how mundane and foolish it is to talk about catcallers. And the in um, in that context, yeah. I think you, I even yeah. think she might agree if we were to ask her that question. Like, in the context of what makes people hulk out, what kind of things you need to control, bringing up catcalling is kind of it's just strange. It's like, what do you? I and I wish Bruce was just like, no, I don't mean stuff like that. I, I mean things that are a little bit more difficult than that insistence on calling it a man-hating scene or a man-hating show just feels off to me too because never once did she say all men suck no but she said all women suffer yeah. more than men like because they deal with something as a baseline on a daily basis right it's there's the implication thing um i don't think she, yeah they haven't had any all men must die or anything like that in the show up to this point so that's um that's a thumbs up i guess good job yeah, thank god they didn't they didn't <laughs> want to genocide all men in a marvel property <laughs> Gold star to them. Bruce is literally straight. standing there as proof that all men don't suck. Okay, we all know Andrew Garfield exists. That's a joke. Don't put celebrities on pedestals. But also, Andrew Garfield, you know? She's basically just talking about direct experiences in her life, and just because there are worse hardships in the world does not mean you can't talk about what you're going through. And just because a piece of media is not relatable to everyone, doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. And that about some- Wait, I want to say this shouldn't exist? Like, it should be stopped entirely, removed from culture? <laughs> that was the first I heard of that one. It up. Hopefully now that the first episode has aired, um, the people who hate it will stop watching it and stop clicking in to tell us how much they dislike it and us. That would be great. I'm, I'm really hoping for that. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sitting here as I rant about this. Yet again, we've got another In Defense of video, but... Another yeah. one! <laughs> thanks oh, for no. watching, guys. <laughs> See ya. Well. Damn. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah, she, uh... She didn't get the best of responses to that video. Several people disagreed. Oh. When you know what? They shouldn't have watched it at all. They should have known at that point that <laughs> they disagreed and thus there's no point in seeing it. Um, <laughs> pretty bad, not gonna lie. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to put it. The uh, one of the weaker ones we've seen, I think. But, um, hey, keep at it. Keep making videos. Just, uh, you know. It, it almost seemed like she was on her way to being critical of She-Hulk, but she sort of sees it as... <laughs> If ever I'm critical of it, I'm just not the target audience for the particular thing, which is just bizarre. Very strange. Yeah, um, she falls into that category of React channel that's just like mindless praise of everything. There's, there's no like real, com there's no commentary. It's just like, oh my god, that just happened, and it just cuts <laughs> away to the next thing, and then like, like this may, I mean, this may sound a little. Uh, well, I'm being hyperbolic, but like having the nerve to be a React channel and then make a review of something and then try to defend something when you know you don't have the capacity to be <laughs> to be objective or analytical. It's like, stop. Oh, I think <laughs> I know what you mean. You like, 
like it's beneficial oh go ahead to sort of are you saying like she's one of those channels that it's like it you try and play up the fun you're having because it's, it's part of like the yeah back and forth and so to then review it when you know that part of your channel to benefit from being positive about the thing no matter what yeah yeah she's filling a, a like she she's She's marketing towards a certain um, demographic of people on YouTube. They just want to watch the movie through her, and they don't want to hear any lip from anyone. They don't want to hear a... They can't project themselves on her if she has a unique opinion about the film. She's just like, like oh, yeah, like you want to feel like you're watching a movie with someone, like a, with like a buddy or something. Like, because she's, oh, I'm happy about the movie and she's happy too. And it feels like I'm actually here with somebody. It's very sad, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's true. And, but, and then, like, she wants to turn around and like, oh, in defense of this. And we all saw how that worked out because you can, like, uh, unless you're going to break away from this gimmick, like, don't, don't make a video like this ever again. <laughs> hey, you know, it. it if she was to express her honest feelings, go right ahead. Uh, I would just... Uh, I, would, I would tell her to foster that side of her that was critical for a few seconds there. That was the, the more interesting part, I think. Like, reducing Bruce's trauma, that's, that's what they did. Focus on it, think about it. Maybe they didn't write that episode very well. Maybe. Wouldn't want to push you into thinking that too much. Something to think about. But yeah, um, that's that. That's the video covered in just four hours and twenty minutes. Not bad, everybody. Um, also, mm -hmm. what's the uh, what's the Batgirl trailer? I thought Batgirl wasn't happening. Uh, yeah, I thought it was real, and then I looked at it. It was like, okay, this is fake. It's a really good fake, oh, but it's okay. a fake. I think I think people on Twitter got duped. <laughs> and then there's the um, the, the, well, the, there's been more announcements, right? Or is there not? Yeah, a bunch of Marvel stuff like Thunderbolts and, and whatnot. So we yeah, there's that movie. Apparently the team is very different from the comic book team and Taskmaster is gonna be in it. But mm. I don't know. Right. I don't know which one. So I think it's got Yelena, it's got um Bucky, uh uh, uh John Walker, um Taskmaster. Red Guardian was it? Uh David mm -hmm. Harbour's guy and um ghost from ant-man and the wasp that's a team it's okay. very different from the comics from what i understand so oh, they're gonna be um i don't know if the... people are happy about that or not they're gonna be announcing the and, cast yeah, for... the guy who made one division is yeah he's directing fantastic four so yeah get excited have they announced the cast for that yet no they didn't well that's what everyone was expecting well i guess they're disappointed then presumably Everyone's well, we favorite want ghost is like is. guarantee half yeah. of chat don't know who ghost is. Don't even remember or know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um and uh like I think Secret Invasion I got a trailer. Ooh. We watch that. You see what I'm that is? Yeah. Alright. Uh I'm gonna Google it or YouTube it. Hopefully it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. Secret in that's the one with uh, the scrolls and good old yeah. Nick Fury, right? It's Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury. Yeah. And we're not going to get dinged for this, right? Leave us alone. I, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, light yeah. beams. So, that's, a, that's never been done before. Technically speaking. <laughs> What you need to see before seeing this is Captain Marvel, right? I think this comes out before... Oh, well, I guess you need to see Captain Marvel, maybe. Um, but I think this comes the out The after before... credits of No uh, Far From Home, that's about it. Right, I guess. Who this? That looked really cheap. Yeah. You've been avoiding Earth, but I have called for your help plenty of other times, and you've been pretty content to let those calls go straight to voicemail. I remember her. Hill. She's... Maria Hill. Sometimes she pops up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... Oh, that cat scratch is this there. Is different. Oh, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> 
How much do you know about your security detail? What do you mean, how much do I know about him? There's a scroll in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Everybody's wearing hats now. Fury? <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't know you. What in the fuck? The ca cast is crazy on this. Oh, yeah. Olivia Coleman's in it, right? Glo yeah. Yeah. Glowing in foreskin. <laughs> Careful now. Oh, no. Uh oh. I'm seeing a double here. Four crusties. Four crusties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was kind of a good effect. That was good. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us. This is just the beginning. This is my war alone. Dude, people will go nuts over this because they'll be like, finally, something serious in the MCU instead of the goof. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be the shit anyway. Yeah. Samuel Jackson happen. walking down alleyways. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm the last person standing between them and what they really want. Reparis. And what is that? Take me to your motherfuckers. <laughs> it's a spooky invasion. Original series. Stream. Yeah, don't worry, folks. Got plenty really? more TV shows on the like way. They have, uh, they have the templates, right? So, like, when their show is a bit more serious or their movie, blomp sounds, and, like, when <laughs> it's more happy, it's like, oh, yeah, just go for a little bit more upbeat music. And then when it's in the middle, you just go for, like, the middle road music. That's like they've got it, like man. three templates for their for their trailers that they use. Yeah, I don't know. I, f I feel bad for anybody who knows what the comic version or whatever this is is because it's not going to be sure that. The comic is is like got a lot of characters in it that just aren't in the MCU, so it's well, going to be yeah. different. Get excited, everybody! Like, yeah. Nope. So much <laughs> content. <laughs> yeah. We got TV shows going to be. Coming out of your ears. Loki season two, uh, just... guys. That's on the way. <laughs> God. You loved season uh, one. Come on. Come on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Little um, mermaid trailer. Uh, that, I don't know if we can um, get away with it. Are we allowed to see that or is that going to fuck us up? I don't know. I, I feel like we've taken risks yeah. already. You, you know what? Either way, we should probably get on with it. There's them. nothing in that trailer, really. It's just a bunch of. Oh, ocean, and Ooh. then like yeah. this, literally this close up of of her, and that's it. Her singing, basically. How wonderful! Yeah, very. For everybody, can't very... wait. So original. Woohoo! So, uh, what I will say is that we, we're gonna we're getting into super chats now, and I will offer that uh, Jay Longbone and Nutsa, you've both been fantastic. Would you like to uh, bow out at this moment? That's a preference. Mm. I'll stay a little stay. longer. Oh, alrighty then. I shall, I shall soldier on. Let's see, let's see what we got here. Looks at the number of women on this episode. Two? Yeah. Can you believe it? Rocking. The EFAB first, probably not actually. We had an episode where three women came on, so there's no record setting just yet. There's why hello there. Hello. Lord Longbong of Mutington Abbey, is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yeah, I think so. What's, what's, what's the word on, on Long Kong, King Kong, Peter Jackson Kong, uh, Lauren? Is it any good? Do you remember? What's, what's the memory on that? Oh, Jesus. All I remember is Adrian Brody looking broody, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adrian Brody. Well... We're gonna get around to it at some point. Uh, we'll check. Opinions on season six, episode one of R and M. IMO. It was quite decent. Oh, Rick and Morty. Um. I oh, I disagree. Me and me and Frank were not fans. Not not happy. No, I didn't like it. The old thumbs down. I'm in the butt. Uh. Uh. Queen's dead. Is Moller affected? 
Bajorge Kupenhai. Hello. Uh, am I affected? I mean, you know, not not in a grand sense, but also uh, personally. You know, it's just uh, the reality. Figured it was going to happen at some point. Uh, try to avoid reading what Twitter has to say about it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> you should be like, la la la. Uh, Andor looks like it has hope, dare I say. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to give it a shot. Are you guys? Yeah. Hello? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> I th yeah, sounds like no. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, uh, are you going to give Andor a shot? Are you going to look into it? Oh, oh uh, man. Uh, probably not, no. I'm off the Star Wars. <laughs> Thunder says stop with the hope for Andor. Fine. We're still going to watch it, though. I wasn't a big fan of Rogue One initially, so I don't know. Honestly, it's been so long since that. I don't know that any expectations should be made of Andor from Rogue One. Like, it's... Yeah. Who knows what this thing's gonna be. Yeah, I'll just wait for people to say something, and if they like it, I might check it out. Mm-hmm. Molly, explain why Iron Man 3 is Kino to the guests. I don't... I don't like... I know plenty of people do, and that's great, but I kind of hate it. I don't remember it. <laughs> um... It has like really interesting ideas and then Shane Black does a Ryan Johnson and he's like, wouldn't it be funny if I made these ideas hollow and destroyed them? And it's like, no, you don't have to do that. Specifically the whole Mandalorian thing and Tony getting PTSD from the events of Avengers. Both of those things are made into a joke. Frustrating, but there we are. Hello, chat people and EFAP. Devil fruit of the week. Please look up the Bara Bara fruit. All right. The question that comes with this is would any of you eat this fruit? Remember, you lose the ability to swim if you do. Um. Oh, it's like a fictional thing, but you can't swim if you eat this. So probably not then. Like. Well, yeah, like what are the benefits of eating it? Is there any temporary loss? Um, I don't see the point of that. Like, if I just get nothing out of it, by the sounds of it. Yeah, if it doesn't taste, like, amazing, then no. <laughs> like, I don't see the point. Like I just can't lose. Yeah, so, I'm just gonna say no. I think that's the sweeping correct answer. Oh, frick, you found the fictional darling video. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of all of her videos, but this one is not I'm not looking forward to, but I am. She would probably appear if invited. Well, she is. She's welcome to come on if she wants to. Um... I'm sure she has better videos than the one we saw today. I'm sure of it. Anime recommendation. Goblin Slayer. A fantasy with Mando-style character done well with smart combat setups, payoffs, e.g. Gate scroll to bottom of the sea for high pressure, water its 12 episodes and a movie. Have you guys seen Goblin Slayer? Nope. Can't wait for Mando to be immune to damage again. I mean, they've done that so many times, you'd think they might try and do something else. We'll see, I suppose. Bringy, in order for Australia to win the next emu war, you must live the rest of your life surrounded by water. Do you accept? I don't know if, like, if the next emu war is happening. It seems like the peace agreement has held for now, so, you know. They follow up with saying, uh, I'm sure Nutsa can spare some wine to help. Potentially. Fill a moat with it, is that the idea? I think a wine moat could be effective against emus. Um, yeah, they probably don't swim well. Hmm. They never really have to swim, I guess. They got no arms either, so... Well, then again, I guess fish don't have arms either, so... Kind of a nonsense, yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> I think that's come up well, before. Yeah, I think right. you've said that before. I, I think that was a response either from Rags or B, I can't remember. It seems vaguely familiar. <laughs> um, I always thought the guy who plays Gandalf is the guy who plays Dumbledore, Liam Neeson. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thoughts on Tolkien new Shadow sequel draft or how you do it? I have no idea. Vulcan New Shadow sequel draft. Does that sound like anything to you guys? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. 
Uh, I recently rewatched Bly. Every rewatch seems to affect me more than the last. Any chance the Bly watch through is coming out? Uh, no expectation of that anytime soon. I'll probably let you guys know when work begins on it. So until then, it is indefinite the amount of time. I do want to make something from that eventually. More like Blandalorian. Haha, <laughs> got him. Nice. Hey. Is coffee bean poop? Mm. Oh, not. Then again, I don't drink coffee that much, so really, Fringy's the one that's suffering, if that's true. I don't think it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's evidence against the idea that it's poop, so you should be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the future where we get Z-Hulk, as well as the Trans-Delorean, the search for the gender fluid. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it'll be great. Mando Season 3 trailer looked good, but hard pass. I stand with Gina. They ruined the story, the show's story with retconning the end of Season 2 in Book of Boba Fett. Dude, you're, you're talking to people who thought Season Man, 1 and 2 was shit. It was always shit. Like, I don't... <laughs> I, I, mean, I, think... I guess I was kind of like weird when people like, oh yeah, it was bad. You know, it was good before, but then they made casting choices that I didn't like, and then like they, you know, the story went in the direct. It was always crap. Like I, don't... I feel it bad for people bad. who are like looking to sort of because like we're very negative right about season three. So probably like, yeah, I'm with you. And it's like not quite. If you if you go back uh... to our older coverage, you'll be surprised. You probably won't agree with us, but don't worry about it. <laughs> like, we're... Well, you're welcome to join us as we cover Mando Season 3 as well, but believe me, I mean, you remember it as well as I do, right, Friggy? We got huge pushback up until halfway through Season 2. That's where people started to be like, okay, yeah. fine. And then people forget. I recommend those Wait, minis, no. by the way. They took a fucking age to make, and you know what? After them, you can watch the Boba Fett ones, then the Kenobi ones again. Do it. Treat yourself. With all the Disney remakes, do you reckon we will get a weird fairy Robin Hood movie? I'm pretty sure that, like, a Robin Hood movie is a guarantee. I think that's one of the ones they're working on. So, yeah. Uh, just got my first tattoo for my 23rd birthday. Hey. I would ask what's it of, but no need to tell. Hopefully it wasn't too painful and it's super meaningful. Quick question. Daredevil is male, straight, and white, but he's blind. So are they allowed to crap on him? Disabilities for the win. I'm in a wheelchair, I can say it. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out uh, in, what, like uh, five days? Something like that? Yeah, maybe. Or should have sued Jane for copyright breach. <laughs> he should have. Like, while she's dying, he serves her these papers, and she's like, really? And he's like, well, I mean, you know, it was kind of rude what you did. So. I gotta protect my brand, sorry. <laughs> like, death waits, my brand waits for no death or whatever. Uh, Thor should have sued Jane for copy. Oh, wait, so yeah. Don saved the queen. He would do that. He probably would, yeah. Question for Fringy, but any of y'all can answer. How would you rank the likes of Ratatouille or Up compared to Incredibles or Wally? -E? Thanks. Um, I mean, I would put Up at the bottom of that list of four. Like, if there's four of them. Uh, usually Wally's at the top, then Incredibles, then it'd be Ratatouille, and then, yeah, Up. Yeah, uh, I but would... I would say that those top three are quite close, and up is not that close to those ones. I would reflect that. I would say that I just need to rewatch them all to be sure. Um, yeah. Uh, Thunder said Fringy was not too impressed with Up. Um, I can't remember if we've talked about it, but I yeah, like I, Up. I wasn't um, um, but... a fan of Up myself that much. The opening I was impressed with, I but the rest of it I was kind of like, huh? I don't like Up either. I don't I just like Up. It's just... It's definitely overrated. I'm pretty sure it's the first Pixar one that got nominated for Best Picture. Bullshit. <laughs> Should have been many other films. And then fucking Toy Story 3 got nominated for that too. Bullshit. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I guess bullshit in the sense that you didn't nominate any of the other ones, but those two got that. And they got to sit up there with Beauty and the Beast as like the only three animated films to be nominated for Best Picture. Which, by the way, tells you a lot about the biases of like the Academy. You're telling me that, like, there have only ever been three animated films that stand up there as Best Picture? Again, bullshit. Uh, hello, Nutsa. I'm glad you're back. Also, hi, Muller and Man of the Goo. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey. Hey. Uh, she missed everything. Don't know if that's talking about the video maker or She-Hulk or someone else, but... Uh, Wings quote of the day. 
No, man, I don't hate the French. That was just something I said because I was frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, Tywin never changed, yet he's the best character. He would absolutely be my favorite, and yeah, you're right, he doesn't change throughout all of the four seasons that he is in, so... Static characters are definitely a Wait, thing. What's the bonus quote? <laughs> there was no bonus quote, I'm afraid. Uh, oh well. Okay, that's alright. That's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want to shout out to Greg Fl uh, Flura, Flura, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, aka Armored Skeptic, who recently all but nuked his channel. Everyone go watch his Tell Me More and History is a Lie playlist, they are good rat. Also, hi Fringy, are you drinking enough? Well, like, am I properly hydrated? I drink a lot of water, um, I, water bottles, I go through them constantly, so I Hell think I'm yeah. fairly well hydrated. Yeah, as far as I know. You know, it's good to look after that, though. Um, maybe they just meant alcohol-wise. And... I... Yeah, no, I just... <laughs> you <laughs> fight on that regard, too. As for uh, Armored Skeptic, I didn't know he'd nuked his uh, Armored Skeptic sort of stuff. Hope he's doing alright. Marty McFly does not have a character arc in the first Back to the Future movie, yet he's still an awesome character. Yeah, there are a lot of characters that have arcs. Um, it's pretty common. This is one of the things EFAP tries to get people to unlearn because it is good standard advice that your character, your main character, and whatever you're making has an arc. People like it. That's not an untrue statement. However, it got chewed up and spat back out by a lot of people as once a, if a character does not have an arc, that's bad, which is not true. Yeah, which is not true. To the point of people being unable to recognize like the value of static characters or what is interesting about a character beyond their arcs and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but examples like that are helpful in helping people like go, oh yeah, true, right, okay, yeah. Hmm. Jack Sparrow is another yeah. one where it's like, oh shit, yeah. Well, in the Anna villains Jones, in general. A lot of uh, action heroes are pretty static. Yeah, where was Thanos's arc in Infinity War? Huh. Oh yeah, I mean, there's that too. A lot of stories will have static characters that are important to contrast with the characters who do change. And what if the point is that the character doesn't change? What if the point is that they were always right? Or what if the point is that they're tragic and that they don't change when they need to? Plenty of reasons for a character not to change. Yeah, James Bond doesn't typically arc at all. No. I think there are some films where it could be oh, argued. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, sometimes Bond has an arc, but a lot of the time he's uh, pretty fixed. Count making fun of past characters like Iron Man and Doctor Strange calling them selfish, Hulk being a prankster and petty. I wonder if they would have done these things those past characters were women. Um, well, like, ruining them in, like, posts and stuff? I mean, they did it to Black Widow, so... Then again, I, I don't that wasn't on purpose, yeah. Thing. Whereas, like, making it so that Iron Man didn't have, like, a pension fund for the Avengers, they chose to do that. For yeah, some they reason. made him an asshole, so. This show should have covered legal minutiae in a world that has things like magic mind control and shapeshifters yeah. capable of framing people, or what happens when Black Bolt accidentally commits murder. Yeah, they, dude, it's a, yeah. it is a feat to actually pretend as though for a second. Like, the amount of changes that would be made would be insane. Uh, the amount of law you'd have to go through, but they just want to play. They just want to play around. Pretty much. A Sorcerer Supreme show exploring the effects of magic being revealed on the world would be way more interesting than the schlock they've been making. Yep. All right. Dude, if the police showed up to yeah. Kamataj, uh, with whatever notices that they need and warrants and stuff, and then, you know, Wong is actually dragged into, like, an interrogation... Uh, and he entertains it, but then tries to escape, and he actually maybe does, but, you know, the, the implications... That, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, so this could be a very serious show. This wouldn't necessarily be a comedy at all. We can't do that, though, in the MCU. There's gotta be. We gotta have them yucks and laughs. And, like, oh, God, you can set it up, too, but they just don't care. Like, imagine in Multiverse of Madness... Let's pretend Multiverse of Madness happens exactly the way it does and that we thought it was a good film. I know it's difficult, but bear with me. In the middle of the Gargantos fight, when he defeats it, 
He's like, he wants to deal with America. The police show up and they're like, uh, Doctor Strange, like, we need to speak to you about it, whatever this was. And he's just like, uh, ignores them and goes through the portal. You could do stuff like that a couple of times dotted throughout the movies and then you can have someone like, cite all of them examples. Be like, you guys are fucking around too much. You know, I, I guess what I'm saying is I kind of like do Civil War, but what will be the point? <laughs> they just ignore it anyway, so whatever. Uh... Uh, She-Hulk is so bad in a meta sense that it got Sitch to rise from the grave and make a video. Nice. Also, you Dumbo should play DDLC. It'll be neat. Sitch has made a second video. Sitch hasn't made a video for like oh, yes. 10 years, <laughs> and he's made two because of She-Hulk. He's very upset with She-Hulk. A lot of people are. Uh, Harvey Birdman had more lore in it than She-Hulk. Um, I am unfamiliar, I'm afraid. I feel sorry for Wong in MCU series. To be fair, Wong hasn't been great in his recent outings in a lot of stuff, not just uh, She-Hulk. Sadly. Just thought of a new portal problem. They can make perpetual energy. One infinitely falling object could create infinite potential energy, like metal rod passing through magnets could create electricity. It is... I, I, I was going to say earlier, I didn't even yeah. want to get into how much it changes everything to have... They can open portals the size of, like you know, a crane, and, and you can move things instantly to wherever you need. Do you know how much that changes just yeah. everything? That's just insane. But, no, it's just a thing that allows Wong to get into high-security prisons and not get in trouble for that. Yeah. That Wong would just confess to a crime in front of a parole board and then just yeets himself. He's like, yeah, see you later. Well, they... And he can come back in the next episode and it's fine. They acknowledged it, and that's enough. They very weirdly treat it as though Wong is just a dumbass alien from, like, a they world do. where he, like, he just couldn't yeah. possibly know about any of this. When it's like, oh, he's human, by the way, right? I don't know if you knew that. He, he lives up... in the world. Yeah, he grew up, he, he existed in the world, he grew up there, he knows about American culture, like, the way of law. He, he knows what law America. is. He lives in New York. He lives in America. But, like... It's so odd that they, they treat him as though he's from a different dimension and he's like, you know, Book of Laws, what are you talking about? Like, what? <laughs> uh, hmm. And yeah, um, places that are flooding. Uh, imagine you open a portal and then put the, the other portal into a place that has, like, drought. And you just move the portal yeah. around, so it's just, you know... You're essentially watering a country with the water that's got too much in another country. Which, by the way, could have drastic effects that I'm unaware of because I'm not familiar enough with how water works in different blah blah blahs. But we need it addressed, surely, you know? I can't believe there wouldn't be a yeah. huge amount of humanitarians aware of, like, this power. And they're just like, you're not using it to help anyone, you selfish bastards. Uh... Watch 30 second video She Hulk deleted scene by Crackback. Perhaps I shall at some point. Uh, if you want to make a funny lawyer show, watch Boston Legal. All right. Pretty sure that yeah. they would have been directly inspired by that. Um, yeah, that's uh, I, that's why I thought ha, that's where I thought the show was going to go. It was going to be like Boston Legal with superheroes, but you know. I or maybe like a lot of things you can pull from. Like it doesn't need to be like Law and Order or something where you're trying to play it like totally straight. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is uh there is there are options within that uh that framework, but uh, it's it's barely like a legal show. It's like pretending to be one. Um, should have made a live action Harvey Birdman show. Also, hi, where's Rags? He shall return, don't you worry. We don't need to make a live-action Harvey Birdman. We got Harvey Birdman. It is the show that it was, the animated show. Yeah, guys, don't wish for things like that. You know what'll happen. It's, uh, it's just, yeah, like, it's, it's, there does seem to be that attitude. It's like, ah, see, you had, like, the little animated thing, and that's whatever. Uh, but, but we're doing our live-action one. Our live action one that is like less dynamic and interesting visually <laughs> than the than the animated one produced on a much smaller budget. Huh. No, 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 no. She's actually she's actually triggering. Oh, I hope you survived. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you made it through. Uh, I work in logistics. Portals would absolutely change the world. Imagine instant teleportation of goods, materials, personnel at little real cost. I think it's yeah, fair I mean, to call like, it no cost, honestly. 
It's basically no cost. Like, could you imagine if you just portaled, like, giant shipping containers across the world instead of having to ship them across the ocean? You know, like, weeks of travel time. Or, or even, like, a train. You don't even need that anymore. You can just portal them everywhere. Uh, you could play Hell Divers for EFAP Gaming. It's a fun twin-stick shooter. Perhaps we will. Who knows? Apparently they got the guy who directed WandaVision for the new... F Fantastic Four movies, so that's disappointing. Also, High Fringled. Hey, it was gonna be John Watts, and people complained, and then they realized, like, oh, wait a minute. What if we get somebody who, like, what if we get somebody else? And now, behind look WandaVision. What you, you get what you deserve. Hey, the direction in WandaVision was fine. Uh, well, sure, but again, directors are ultimately responsible for, like, the narrative, too, to some extent. So. Yay! Yeah. Hello everyone else, since no rags. I just got here and I already can't stand this chick, so here's some money for my two queens and kings. Keep it up. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for the Beautiful money. Lady. Hulk when fighting abomination, Chitari and villains. Confident and determined. Hulk when confronted with Jan. Backing up, doing Owen Grady pose. Who's Owen Grady? I don't know. All right then. Oh, it's the, it's the character from uh, Jurassic World. Oh, Chris right, yeah. I remember. Oh, I just call him Chris Pratt. <laughs> I was gonna say it's I never really would have fucking guessed character. that. I've I've always called him Chris Pratt as well. I think of that movie. <laughs> Anger and fear the baseline. Wait, a women's Sith? Is that why Ray bugged out? <laughs> 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 well, at least you get powers. That's pretty neat. James Bond portrays. Portrayals ranked. I guess they're asking to rank the James Bonds. Um, uh, well, for me, it would be Pierce Brosnan, Sean Connery. Uh, then it gets murky because I need to rewatch the performances to know for sure. But um, Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore are going to be tough to put one or the other because I wasn't as much of a fan of uh, a goofier James Bond, but I still like Roger Moore's. We'll probably put that next. Then Timothy Dalton, then George Lazenby, and now I'm going to figure where I put Craig and all of that. It's somewhere, <laughs> but the problem is I'm not as much of a fan of the fact that he hates playing the role and you can detect that in a lot of his scenes. Uh, he really hates playing the role. Yeah, and he, he said something like, you'd have to pay me a shit ton to come back. Uh, because it's like worse oh, than geez. fucking my eyes bleeding or something. But he did come back. Oh my god! Yeah, there's some quote wow. where he says something like that. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where I place Craig exactly. Um. I don't know. I. I. Spectre was miserable to watch. I hadn't seen Spectre like at all, and I watched it for the first time. I want to say like half a year ago. Something like that. And man, I was surprised. That film is fucking terrible. Um, and I completely missed it. Cas Casino Royale's good, and then Quantum of Solace is like, oh no. And then Skyfall, like, people really like, I think, fan service wise but still kind of eh. And then Spectre was hideous. And then No Time to Die. It's like, what a disjointed series of movies that he was a part of. Greg hated playing 007, yeah. I, I would have to think about it. I really don't know where to place it. <laughs> the something of Boris. That video is great. Um, but yeah, I don't know if if any of you three have a different or interesting take on Bond. If you want to do that, or well, I'm not really competent. I just have seen Craig's movies, but I like Casino Royale though. Yeah, that everybody does. Overrated. Yeah, that's a good one. Everyone likes Casino Royale because it was good. <laughs> It's also yeah, a break I it like down. It. Uh, it was like really meaningfully made. The other ones are like a mess. I like Vesper. Is that her name? She's yes. a great character. I liked her. Yeah, and as some people are saying, like Casino Royale is fucking great, and it was a great sort of reboot, and everyone was really excited, and then it just went to shit. I don't understand. I didn't. I really hyped myself up for Skyfall because people really like like that one, but I didn't get it. Um, I liked it. Uh, and I can't remember why. <laughs> I'd have to rewatch it. I think it might have appealed to me because uh, I was growing up with the Pierce Brosnan era, so having 
that movie like represented the end of, of saying goodbye to M for, for like the older Bond era as well and um, almost the passing over and re reestablishing of like the I remember it, isn't it supposed to try and argue like it's binding the timelines in a sense um, or something it plays oh, with the I idea of doing that either. But I just remember kind of being disappointed, but not, not like I dis disliked it. It was just not as good as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, even if Bruce is understanding and agrees with her, it's still bad writing that doesn't make sense in canon. Yeah, it's really weird to appeal to being like, a character in the writing you don't like is agreeing with the writing. Like, yeah, I know. Help anything. Um, if she gets catcalled so much, why can't she get a date on Matcha? Uh... <laughs> she can! They're just all horrible idiots. That's that's the unfortunate thing. Somehow. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what they were going didn't for with any... that. Like, yeah, uh... didn't pick anyone good-looking, except for that one guy, the, the big buff one. Yeah, and, and then he turns out to be, like, hyper-masculine or whatever, and she's like, oh no. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once she uses the She-Hulk persona, she meets like literally the most perfect person ever. He's just like, I am, he says everything perfectly, it is perfect. It's just like, what are you saying, show? <laughs> like, it's, I don't know, it's interesting. Um, Why did he need an inhibitor in the show if he's always angry but in control? I guess we can finally commit suicide after watching She-Hulk? Listen, to try and draw a fucking through line on what his deal with the Hulk is throughout the all of this, I, I don't even know. What I do know is that, um, as far as I'm aware, like, they're getting, aren't they getting the rights reverting eventually for uh, the Hulk to be able to make solo movies with him in the MCU? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Once they get that, you have to wonder what they're gonna do. They're definitely gonna exploit it. They're gonna World War Hulk, probably. Hells. I'm three episodes into Hot D, and I haven't had a conversation about that show that hasn't devolved to something along the lines of, really? Bran is king? Or, what do you mean she forgot about the Iron Fleet? It's haunting that show, and it's gonna have to work really hard to escape the shadow of Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Maybe it can do it. Jennifer Walters is such a bad lawyer, even Chris Chan jumped out of a courthouse window to get away from here. <laughs> Take cover, BS arguments in coming. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, respect to Nutsa, Ari, trauma survivors being the last to downplay someone else's troubles. Many stories of people in therapy getting validated by those who survived way worse than they did. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that was a fair point to make, and it's, it felt really odd that she was defending. She even highlighted that she felt it was a valid thing to think that Bruce's uh, experiences were being downplayed by the episode, and it's true, they were. Not something that you would ever expect someone to do in uh, Jen's position. Um, I'm sorry, veteran that has PTSD and saw all friends die. I skinned my elbow so I can control my emotions better than you. Hmm. Lady looks like she ate a wasp or two. Bloody hope not. Bruce, people build N-word towers in my chat. <laughs> well, like, that's what she complains <laughs> about in my stream. Like, <laughs> Mola, please make it stop. It's like I'm Wings of Redemption and this is See You Next Tuesday and her video are Call of Duty. Please, I beg you, make it stop. Hey, what did what was her advice? If you if you, you don't like it, you can just not watch it. You know that's the solution. Run away, be afraid and helpless, and then you'll Hulk out. So wasn't Wong Sorcerer Supreme for like five plus years before he broke Blonsky out of prison in Shang Chi? Like how was that required training to get a job he had for half a decade? I don't know. I thought he was Sorcerer Supreme the second that Strange wasn't, but apparently he's only been Sorcerer Supreme for like a week or something. I don't even know. I would have to check the timeline, one that they definitely don't care about. Um, Molly, you might want to check the color on your screen. That girl's glasses should have been rose-colored. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Very good. Ra, we need your spicy form back for this one. 
Again, punching Bruce in the face is actually hard to watch. He's calm and trying to talk rationally, and she hits him as hard as she can for speaking. It's horrible. And it was left out of her analysis, which is interesting. You'd think that would be considered one of the worst things she does in the whole episode, wouldn't you? Because, um, physical violence, not cool, right? I think we're all on board with that. Uh, physical intelligence is a fancy psychology term for athletic aptitude, e.g. great hand-eye coordination. It exists, she's still using it wrong. I was about to say, I don't think she meant that when she said that. Yeah, I, d I doubt it. Um, Uh-oh, EFAP's covering a female? Time to reset the days since last EFAP spent XX hours covering a girl. What a bunch of sexist tweet counter. To be fair, I think we found out it doesn't work for anybody but Jenny. That was the only person it worked for. And I think it's just about how many people are already subscribed to her, uh, or any given creator we cover, because, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody's ever brought up that we've covered it. Anytime that those tweets happen, they never bring up that we've covered other women. It's only just, it's her. She was the one we weren't allowed to cover. Very strange. Nice of Jay and Nutza to let the EFAP boys on the show today. Yeah, thank you. I mean, for you've enjoyed it. Everybody was harmed by the making of this video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Emil was such a good guy. He beats women. Yeah, um, Emil does punch like a lady at some point in Incredible Hulk, right? Um, is that near the beginning? I can't remember. He does a couple of things that are really dodgy in terms of just like, what? what who is this guy? But I'm assuming that uh, as the season goes on, it's, we're going to find out that he's uh, he's he's doing he some is naughty a bad stuff. Guy still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad to see that Rosemary Kennedy has her own channel now. Don't know who that is. Uh, Fiona from Shrek is the best green woman. Yeah, I agree with that. Fiona was pretty cool. A lot of, a lot of green women get um, get jealous of how much she was beloved, you know, and they're trying to steal her star power. Toxic women often make suffering into competition. See... You could even make that a part of the uh, of the show. Not toxic women, just toxic people. Yeah. You could have her have a friend, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I I maintain that her friend is a bad friend throughout this whole season. She's been a bad person. Everything that the friend <laughs> says, like, encourages her to indulge in the superficial and ignore like the meaningful things that she finds to be troublesome about her job. He's a... Yeah, like remember how she got a new job and she like Jen tells her the only reason I got this job was because I'm Hulk and she's like yeah but look at all the stuff it got us it's like wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Efab every frame a patriarchy yeah. Hello crazy cat lady Efab appreciates the view. Oh wait who's who's being called the crazy cat lady is the video in the video? Mm -hmm. You have cats. Possibly. Uh, first super chat. I've watched all of EFAB after finding you through Jay's Tross video. I'm going to be in college, so I'll stop watching for a while. I wanted to show my support before leaving. Well, thank you very much. Uh, have fun in college, I suppose. What do you hate more? Stormbreaker being jealous of Mjolnir, or Wanda's justification for killing America Chavez being what if they get sick? <laughs> uh, the latter, probably. I think, anyway. Stormbreaker being jealous of a hammer is annoying, but, like, surely Wanda saying she's gotta kill someone in case her kids get sick with multiversal AIDS is just, like, the most stupidest shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with the latter. Uh, I look forward to the severed dong necklace art. Oh. <laughs> you know that now that they've said that, someone's gonna be like, oh, I'll draw it. It's like, no. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking of a Universal Soldier and Dolph Lundgren in the ear necklace. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> Every woman online ever. Well, this one time a crazy dude scared me and people were mean to me on the internet, so I'm basically a modern Anne Frank. I, I, I think one of the first times I saw people pointing it out as being like a horrible, horrible thing that happens was like the feminist frequency stuff way back when. I remember being so surprised because I had already spent many years on Xbox Live, and I was like, oh, it gets way worse than that. And then it, like, got traction, and I was like, oh, shit, people are actually surprised that this happens. I forgot that not everybody realizes this is normal. And it's still kind of normal. It's going to be tough to erase that entirely from the internet. 
Real tough. I smell serious... Uh, I don't know what that is. It's like a little emoji of a blue... It doesn't tell me what it is. I smell serious something on this girl's story. I'm going to assume it's supposed to be bullshit or something like that. Uh, the guy who threw the TV at her friend was like the Hulk. It's he who would be more in control of Hulk's powers, not her for having seen it. Wait, what? Throwing the TV? I think I think that the... Probably a sign he's a little out of control. You wouldn't want to destroy a TV or throw a TV at a loved one. That's not going to result in good things. Moller, have you guys considered bringing Delitus onto Nerd Rotic just like Shad to cover House of the Dragon, or would that be too many people? Um, well, I, I can I can pass the idea to Nerd Rotic and obviously to Glitus. If they're interested, both of them, then perhaps we shall. Especially for um once the finale is. I imagine I'll stream as well for that, because that'll be people are gonna want to know what I thought once that show comes to an end. Bringy, look up Tarantula Hawks, worse than spiders. No, I'm not going to do that. Why did they make that? <laughs> Tarantula Hawks? God, what are you up to? <laughs> What's what that about? Happened? And he's like, what? And I'm like, I don't know, man. It just seems a little bit skit. It's, it doesn't look exact. I thought it was going to be like a tarantula with wings. It looks a little different than that, but still. I, I, don't, I don't know why you needed to make that, you know? Stop it. Mubler, I've been reminded you must fix your highlights playlist eventually. And Jenna says, remind Mubler he's a fleem. So bam, you're a fleem. Bam. All right, that's, that's that part's true. And yes, I do need to fix the highlights. I will cut out some time to do that, like a full day at some point, I swear. Uh, 2D anime girls are better than Western women. Damn. <laughs> They'll never love you like Western women will, though. Those 2D anime girls. <laughs> the show could have been hilarious. They could have done counseling with Bruce at the end of each episode, reviewing triggers for her temper, meetings, office, copier, losing a court case, something steals, someone steals a parking spot, and smash cut to Bruce. They could have done so much. You're absolutely correct. The format didn't have to be this nonsense. You didn't even have to really no. make it about law, even though she's a lawyer yet. That could have been later. At first, you could have just made it all about being a Hulk and maintaining her job. Which could have been lower level, right? She could have been like a pencil pusher or whatever they call them for the equivalent for law. Um, then yeah, you, you she gets better at dealing with lower level stresses, and then it gets harder and harder. And you know that's the progression you make for the show. Instead, we have someone burst through a fucking wall and throw a table at the jury for no reason. That was interesting. <laughs> that never got justified, <laughs> nor did we expect it to. Um, it's Jello, Birdman. The world is made of Jello. Any comment, Ringy? What uh, the world? Can you say that one again? They're trying to correct you. They're saying it's Jello. The world is made of oh, Jello. Oh, sorry. I thought we. I thought we settled this. It's jelly. Jello is a brand. There is jelly and jam. We have trapped the poor Americans on subjects like that so many times. I'm starting to feel guilty, like with the wallets or yeah. um, or with the day, month, year thing or with the coins. Yeah. Our cultures just are just like so much better, imperial. you know? Is that a metric? <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. We forgive you for being wrong because we're yeah. kind. Don't leave us with Fringy. He's scaring the hose. God. <laughs> Is there garden work being done? I don't understand. Uh, if you're so anxious you have to calculate the distance between buildings to go for a walk, you need counseling. You shouldn't normalize that. If fear and anger are your baseline, seek help. That is, I mean, that's not even, like, insensitive. That's, that's, that is important. If, if you have that level of concern and worry about, like, everything you do, everywhere you go, it's like, you probably should talk to people about it, professionals and stuff. Might just help you out. I once read about the symptoms of liver failure, and one of them is the yellowing of the eyes. Fringy, care to weigh in? Hmm. I don't know. Like it's, it's. I don't. I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, sounded a little bit defensive. No, that's if you want to read <laughs> that into it, and that's your prerogative. I love how we're called incels for not liking the show, yet simultaneously, all of us men are hypocrites for calling She-Hulk a whore because we. Because we men sleep around, laugh my ass off. 
Okay, to be fair, I don't think she mentioned either of those words in this review. I don't but, think she did, no. And uh, I have not yet been called an incel for disliking She-Hulk, but I'm sure it's, to be fair, it may have happened already without my knowledge, but hey, you know. Um, is she threatening him? I'm afraid I don't know to which part you're referring to. I think she meant the, uh, when she, uh, tracked that guy down for that comment on her channel. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a threat. When she said, like, don't, <laughs> don't post stuff like that with your real name, or this will happen. It's like, oh shit, alright. Um, lollipop, lollipop, ooh, lolly, 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 lollipop. That's Kevin Feige's brain, apparently. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm doing what this woman is suggesting and not watching She-Hulk. However, as a fan of She-Hulk, I could see how She-Hulk fans might make the mistake of thinking they were the target audience. <laughs> yeah, you could, <laughs> you could see that happening, yes. Uh, do you have wind ambience on stream, Maul, or I can hear it through my headphones on high volume and it stops when I pause the stream? Yes. There is wind ambience, that's League of Legends. I'm, a, I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too bad to hear wind. I'll get rid of it for a second. I think, I think that did it. Okay, there you go. It's not very loud for me, but it's louder for like, you guys, apparently. It's weird. Everyone in, on this stream is more dumb for hearing this. I'll give you zero points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Fair enough. Uh, why does Fringy say Nog as often as he does? Nog. <laughs> That's what it says. I don't know. Do you say nog a lot? Like, like, like eggnog. Yeah. I don't think so. It's a, a strange one, but all right. Uh, Goblin Slayer falls apart after episode one, just like Mando. Also, the One Piece fruit weakness isn't can't swim. You are incapacitated by salt water. What does that mean? Incapa like, like you go limp or you go unconscious? Because... Yeah. Again, this fruit better taste amazing, otherwise I'm never going to agree to this. Also, sorry to hear that about Goblin Slayer, but uh, perhaps there will be an argument about that in chat. Who knows? Mola, why are you a plushie? Also, why is Fringy a bird who is neither a frog nor a plague doctor? Also, why is Jay Longbone Baby Yoda but blue? It's uh, not me. <laughs> you, got, you got your vaginas mixed up. I think the good one... I, I, I am a plushie because there is a plushie available of me and Fringy right now. I think there might be a link in the description of this video, unless I didn't do it. But either way, you can find it through Makeship and Fringy or Mola in, in a little Google search. Here it is, look, on screen. Beautiful. Just five days remaining to get a part of this, this cute and cuddly little version of me. And, of course, Fringy. Yeah. But yes. Uh, I, we, we got a lot of people saying, like, what were you going to do again? I missed out. It's like, just just going to let you guys know as as time ticks lower and lower that uh, they are still available. Thunder's been linking them in chat. Thank you very much. Still still there. Ready to be grabbery noted. If so, do you wish to. Um, I think we need a Lord of the Rings trilogy in which Frodo and Sam become miserable and jaded and the phrase, somehow Sauron returned, is uttered. Yeah, let's do it. Call it the sequel trilogy. The Lord of the Rings, but everything happens again. For some reason. New pitch for Disney Plus, Booba Foot Fetish. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you can go in. Why not, I suppose. Go to chance. The Barabara fruit grants you the power to detach and reattach parts of your body at will, rendering you immune to cutting damage, but you can't swim. Okay. Immune to cutting damage, but you can't swim. Um, I... Man, I feel like swimming is going to be more useful in general. I just can't imagine how often... Like, I just don't get cut that often, you know? Yeah. And and swimming is cool. I like. I, I I think I'll just avoid the fruit. I'm all right. If I need to be able to be immune to being cut, I might eat the fruit. Uh, I often sit back and imagine what new content we could have had instead of all fandoms being destroyed by bad writing. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, we're, we're on we're, we're on that timeline in the multiverse, I'm afraid. Mm. You know there are better ones out there, but that's okay. Okay, we got some good stuff. Is it fair to tell people if you don't like it, don't watch it, play it, or consume it? Um, you have to find out what their motivation is for watching it in the first place. For example, I've got many, but one of them is that it's our job. Not really like mm. fuck with that. It's just like yeah. So, but what else have I got? It's like well, I was invested in this thing before it went to shit. Uh, I'm still vaguely invested in some of the th characters that remain. I'm invested in the discussion that happens related to these things. Uh, you know, culturally, I find it fun to talk with people about it, whether or not I enjoy it. Then there's the fact that I think it's really good as an avenue or vehicle to talk about writing in general with people, whether or not I enjoy it. So, you know, when you tackle all of them and you just go, yeah, well, if you don't enjoy it, don't watch it. But like, that doesn't deal with any of the things that I just said, so... Exactly. But if you have someone who says, uh, uh, I simply want to enjoy a story and I choose the ones that I know I won't like, then yeah, you can point out that that's probably not wise. But, but, they could have portaled an asteroid on Wanda's head. They could have done a lot of things. Portals. With <laughs> yeah. A lot of things. Any chance you guys will continue your discussion on what makes a story that you had during the anniversary? I'd love to hear that debate when you guys are at full energy. Also, Gotham High Five when? Oh, uh, Gotham High. I'm still working on that. It's almost finished, the last part. Um, I just, I have to get, oh, God. I have to get the, these last two uh, She-Hulk reactions out first, and then after that I'm just going to leave it to my editor to do the rest of the episodes, and then I'm going to get back to working on uh, Gotham High Part 5. And then I'm going to release the full version after that. Sweet. Uh, as for the discussion on what makes a story, what you'll find is you'll just we'll keep that'll keep coming up every once in a while. Uh, obviously, me, Fringy, and Rags are pretty much on the same page on exactly what makes a story and what makes a good story, but a lot of our guests will line up in terms of results, but not quite in terms of workings. So we'll... Uh, yeah. We'll eventually have discussions here and then. It'll just keep going. Because the idea that we will definitively and most convincingly crack what is a story and what is a good story, I, guess it's, I doubt it. But uh, hopefully we can enjoy the conversations along the way with all different points of view and creators. Exactly. Um, I recently rewatched the Lego movie, and it's a lot better than I remember. Phil Lord and Chris Miller as a creative duo are as creative a duo as they come. I agree. I really liked the Lego movie. I was surprised by it. Yeah, it's a it's a great movie. I think a lot of people were surprised by it actually. And it's like, oh shit, there's like good writing. Oh well, yeah, you you don't expect an, what seems like an ad for Lego to uh to to um you know be like a story with a really meaningful message that ties in really well to what Lego is about. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you ever take commissions for script doctoring work, i.e. read, breakdown, and recommend changes? Um, it's something that I thought about, but it's just that I just do not have the time or a way to sort of dole it out fairly in, in a balanced way. I would have to commit to that being a job, probably, um, as opposed to the one I run now, which is my preferred job. So, um, thought about it, but probably not. Uh, Skyfall did that stupid thing that every movie did. After Avengers, where Gasp, the villain, actually wanted to be captured. I don't know if that's fair. Just because he did it similarly a time to when the Joker did it, who similarly timed to when... There was a third example. I remember there was three that everybody... Oh, Loki and Avengers. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure those were the three. Um, it's okay. You can judge them all individually for how they did it and whether or not it was believable and stuff. I don't think we should... We should be careful shitting on something like that too hard when it's like... it Because, you know... For all we know, they wrote those things individually of each other. They had no idea the others were doing it. It just, it just feels a little bit unfair. But um, I'm pretty sure Skyfall's execution is something you can just shit on, really. Uh, obscure General of the Day, Suetonius Paulinus. Paulinus. Why are you... Why? What? <laughs> like, what, what would you want to do with the General of the Day? What, what am I... Uh... He was he was a Roman general best known as the commander who defeated the rebellion of Boudicca. 
Little is known of his family, but it came likely came from Pisarum, a town in Adriatic coast of Italy. He's not known to be related to the biographer Suetonius. Okay. I hope he's a cool dude. <laughs> Um, J. Longbone covers Fictional Darling, then EFAP covers Fictional Darling. I finally rest and watch the sunrise of a grateful universe. Thanks so much for covering her. She needed to be stopped. <laughs> Too bad Rags missed You're out. You're welcome. I <laughs> uh, hope you cover her again one day. Maybe we will, who knows? And yeah, it was, uh, I would say it's, J. Longbone's coverage is probably what primarily inspired me to think, you know what? I'd like to talk about this stuff on the old FAP. And, uh, yeah. Right, Rags did miss out on this one. I'm sure he regrets that hugely. He would have loved to have watched that video. 100%. Um, two full fems plus two half fems. This is now fem fap. Very well. I'm fine with that. I'm so traumatized by my robo husband dying. Better kill for my imaginary children. Fucking Wanda. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, there's less and less people defending that movie as time goes on, which is nice. As a colonial heathen, we apologize for the Boston Tea Party. We should have pre-boiled the ocean before adding the tea. Bad form. True, that's how you make the best tea. Mola, why are your eyes still red? Uh, bloodshot, I think. Also, why is Nutsa blue? I don't know either. Well, now so. know. <laughs> Also, if Fringy is green and Nutzer is blue, are they safe to say the N-word? I don't know. I don't know how the rules work. <laughs> I'll check the lists. Uh, thoughts on DC52 series animated movies? Love the EFAP been watching since episode 72. Cool. Uh, glad I haven't seen have. any of those movies. I don't know if I've seen any of them. I don't even know what DC52 refers to exactly. Uh, the new 52 was like the reboot continuity back in 2011 for DC. It's like the first big reboot of their continuity, and I think it's over already. Like, they changed their mind. Ah. That was what Flashpoint did. Flashpoint was like, set up New 52 as the continuity. And then I think they did Rebirth because they changed their minds on it. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be able to say. I don't know. Um, bu 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 I just saw Top Gun Maverick again, and I think it's really good. Other than bad Sam placements, I can't think of much wrong with it. Fight me, Fringy. Oh my. Oh, what? This is, well, I mean, I, I think I've said that I'm, I'm just not a fan of that third act. Well, I really liked... I, I still like the movie a lot, and I was enjoying it a lot up until that point. I just think the third act kind of lets it down. I still haven't seen it, though... I should probably. Um, I mean, it's available now on uh, on non cinema. I think it's right? available. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, I hate the feminists' argument that fear of men is justified because some men are bad. Okay, is fear of black people okay because m FBI crime statistics? Of course not. Why is this bigotry excused? I would like. I, I would have said. I, I. I've always opted to prefer to appeal to bad human nature or good human nature. Right. Make lessons about that instead of any yeah. particular grouping um unless of course it's like you know groupings that are like uh really bad organizations of course i, I don't mean like all groupings of all kinds uh, sorry if that seems like a non sequitur behind in the stream by four hours and got to the part where shulk says women live in fear of men yeah um we, as we were saying that that line and the uh, the comparison line they were, they were causing her a lot of trouble for trying to break this down in like a fairer understanding way in a weird way, I have to think, thank Rings of uh, Rings of Power made me go on a Lord of the Rings binge. Phil Dragash's audiobook is superb. I highly recommend it. Not even 100% clear on what that is, uh, but is that like an audiobook for the Lord of the Rings books, I'm guessing. Um, Maybe it's specifically who read it. Uh, yeah, because I, I was going to say, I think there's a whole bunch of different people you can get for the audiobook for Lord of the Rings, right? Probably. It, would, it would make sense, because it's... Like one of the most famous books of all time, so um, that'll be interesting to know. What is the most audiobooked book ever? Maybe the Bible. Mm, it'd probably be the Bible, right? Yeah. Well, in any case, that is it for the super chats. We are caught up. Oh boy! Obviously not in total, but uh, we're gonna wait until Rags is back before we tackle any more of the backlog. Yeah. Um, 
But before we head out, I would have to give a huge thanks to our two guests today, of which uh, the first is Jay Longbone, and would you like to tell everybody why they're horrible people if they haven't subscribed to you already? <laughs> well, uh, oh, well, I got some more, of course, uh, She-Hulk reactions coming out. I'm doing episode two and three at once, so it's taking a little longer to come out, but I think it might be out this week like or, or maybe early this week and then there's like i said the final installation of gotham high that's going to be out soon because it's basically finished uh and then i'm going to come out with like the full version after that the whole hour and 20 minutes i think you know and i got other stuff too but it's mostly that for right now wait um i was gonna say uh, we often get people being like when are they gonna make more of the you know, the, 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 the Gotham High stuff, and I'm just like, let it do it in time. Don't want to rush. Yeah, they control brilliance. nothing. <laughs> These males control nothing. I control the <laughs> Gotham High. <laughs> Unbelievable. Ridiculous. Um, also, I just saw someone in uh, chat uh, say, missed my super chat. I just checked your name. You, you're the one who asked, is it fair to tell people if you don't like it, watch it, play it, consume it? We went through that one. Um... I was going to say, I would try and repeat what we said, but I'm going to be honest with you, there was a lot of things. Just, you have to scroll back, I'm afraid. But yes, uh, you should subscribe to Jay Longbone's channel. If not for her own content, you'll find that myself, Rags, and Metal pop up there every once in a while. How are you doing on the, um, mm -hmm. the porn that we watched? <laughs> Whatever you want oh, to call yeah. that. <laughs> oh, right, right. That has been recorded and cataloged, and it's waiting for me to edit. Be, and I'll get to that after Gotham High is finished. Are you planning on forcing Mean Rags to watch the new one that came out? Shit. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Complete the series. Well, I was going to say as well, it'll be fun for you to know. I, I think I already told you this, but uh, it'll be October 1st. will be the start of we're releasing the arc that we recorded last year, if you remember. Those, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Fun little horror movies. They're finally coming out. Fun to see. Yeah. Um... Well, yeah, sweet. There's a link in the description. Subscrizzle. The other guest we had today, Nutza, returning since EFAP mm -hmm. 1, I want to say 98, 97. It was one of those ones. But, um, yeah, hey, how? How are how, how you doing? And why should people subscribe to your channel? Well, I'm doing fine. And because I'm a woman, I don't know what that was going Yay. to be. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Just check out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm tired. Lots of media analysis, breakdowns, fun editing, coverage of all kinds of topics. Yeah, I could have, yep. I could literally have not seen the, your channel page and said that and probably have been right because that's a lot a lot of people do. But that's a special because mm -hmm. we have oh. covered you. And as was pointed out, chat, a lot of fun and sprucey editing, exciting, edgy content, opinions that you don't expect to find from many places. Why not? Link also in description. Uh, yeah, of course. Thank you both for, for joining us. Bringy, was yeah. there anything you wanted to mention? Uh, not right now. I'm just still working. Hopefully right, well. I'll have something soon. Uh couple more have come in. I'll just read them real fast. Which would you rather have? Doctor Strange's Sling Ring or Mr. Fantastic's personal teleportation device? Oh, Sling Ring, easily. I don't trust devices that turn me into, like, weird stuff and then push me to another place. <laughs> right, whereas shit. a portal is, yeah, you don't have to worry about your continuity of consciousness. Yeah, portal's nice and clean. You just walk through. Done, done, done. Yeah. Uh... If you had to pick just a few, what flaws would you cite in Lord of the Rings trilogy? We used to, I used to know these better. I need to rewatch them. There's a couple of just normalish ones that I usually mention, but now I'm like, fucking failing to remember them. Um, yeah. You know what? Watch, watch the. There's an Efat movies trilogy. Of, of of us going through them, and I'm pretty sure me, Wolf, and Rags talk a little bit about some of the flaws we come across uh, here and there as we go through. We obviously consider it a flaw that Gimli wanted to kill Frodo and Sam. That was terrible. That was that was, shouldn't have been in the movie. Don't panic, anybody who doesn't understand. That's a meme. 
but yes, there's uh, there's lots of things I think that do uh, perk up here and there that we have issues with. I think I just I would have to rewatch them to get to uh, citing them better. But like I said, until then, you could probably enjoy the EFAP movies trilogy on them. And with that, I will say it is the end of the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you guys all have a good night. Thank you for the kind messages, the company, and the very kind donations. Me and Fringy shall return with rags at some point. Ex exactly when, I'm not 100% sure. Something will happen on Wednesday. Um, and we'll be trying to get caught up on Super Chats uh, offline and online, I think. So, yeah. Thank you all for joining us. And I suppose we shall see you next time. Good night and good bye. Goodbye, boy boy. Bye, boy. Bye, boy. Bye, boy. Bye, boy.